is is really really focused on finding the best like of the best and best of nine is a perfect way to do that so many games in front of us we're going to open this one up on shoals and we're going to have yo playing as the byzantines we're going to have tato playing as the spanish so tato with a home field advantage here yeah very much so in that sense but yo using one of his uh earlier picks in the draft here byzantines very strong pick at that and wonderful on hybrid maps shoals of course having that water there uh, we'll look to make great use of the Byzantine fire ships. And uh, just for a moment, we'll take a look at each of these again. Byzantine is just a great all-arounder, I'd have to say, right? Of course, The best. Yeah, exactly. Cheaper, spearmen, and skirmishers, of course, camel riders as well, once you make it to the castle age. Buildings, having more HP, that's wonderful in case you need to hold on to water control. And then the fire galleys uh, attacking faster in the feudal age means easy to win out in that sense. Well, you just run through all of the things that you need to do on this map. You need to defend, go to Castle Age, right? Get your economy rolling, and then contest the golds. Byzantines are great at that. Contest the water. Byzantines are great at that. Go up to Imperial Age. Byzantines are great at that. On the other side, we have Spanish here, and Spanish is a bit of an outlier. It's more of a sieve that... It, you consider to be centered around the Conquistador, because that's usually how people use it. But if you get to the late game, they have a, a varied tech tree. They have a lot of options available for, for them. They have those gunpowder units that we love to see with the fast Imperials uh, centering around these gold spots on the sides. And they also have uh, the most powerful cannon galleons in the game, which could really be a factor late game here. Yeah, we saw Cannon Galleons coming into great effect in that Andy versus Doubt series, I believe. Uh, and it was great to see how quickly they came out once Imperial Age was reached. But of course, we're a long way from that at the moment, still in dark and making our way to the Feudal Age ever so slowly. I just wonder, like Byzantines, we've seen the approach here. Usually on Shoals, you wall the front of your base, you try and get a secure gold, you go up to Castle Age, maybe contest water a little bit while adding some fishing ships, uh, because that sea tower will protect your initial fish if you pull them back to it. But like, Spanish, <laughs> what is Yo gonna do? Is he gonna go for that castle early on a gold and go Conquistadors? Or does he opt to boom up and just kind of use the civilization's very, very um, diverse tech tree in the Imperial Age and then try and take water control. I would assume from Yo's style that he is going to go for that castle somewhere and is going to try and get map control with the Conquistadors. Yeah, I mean, I think, well, Tato, the one with the Spanish, I think uh, he's or, sorry, going to Tato, be aided. Sorry. Yeah, of course. But I think he's going to be aided, actually, by his map. Look at this. Already going for the walls and some great wood lines that are going to make it a very, you know, safe home base to maybe support what would mm -hmm. be a fast castle mm -hmm. into immediate castle drop control on the side, or perhaps even more aggressively than that. Look at these wood lines. Really, really extensive wood lines on the side there from Tato, and it's almost fully walled in there, but he's scouted it. He's made sure that he's going to be completely safe on this base here to the right. Yo on the other side also has some great wood lines. Both players now just pushing in the deer. As we see, Byzantine's fourth most played Civ in the main event and have the best win rate out of the top four at 64%. It's such a strong civilization because it's basically a counter civ to everything else in the game, with the possible exception of maybe, like, Sicilians, which don't get played right. at all. Again, we were hoping for those Sicilians. Didn't find it here in this set. And so Byzantines, as we just mentioned, with such a high win rate, is going to be a boon to Yo in this first game of the set. Walls complete here for Tato already while just going up for Yo back at home. We got 15 seconds until the feudal age for Yo, not even clicked up yet for Tato. So once again, confirming the fast castle approach. Yeah, and he's got the stone in the back. So he's completely walled himself on the front with the help of those nice wood lines at his home base. He's got the stone at the back. He's on the gold right now. He's not on the stone yet. Yo will open with some galleys to try and control this middle area. Now that sea tower is very, very powerful against ships. It's got like nine bonus damage against ships. It files, fires multiple arrows. So if you're around that with your fish, you're going to be safe. But the way this map generates is that there's very few shore fish around the sea tower. So if you're hanging out near that and trying to protect your fishing ships, then you're not you working. Not be, yeah, exactly. You won't be working at all. So that's what Yo is attempting to do right now. Just control the middle of the map. Has to avoid running into this tower with the scout, though. Yeah. 
so far avoiding any of the air Dodging. fire. Running, Dodge. Running perpendicular, man. You love to see it. Uh, Use that hit. geometry. You, uh, oh, he did. He, he did. Hit. He got hit right at the end. Three and damage. now he loses the scout war if Tato gets to feudal age. Now, Dave, some people might be wondering, hey, galleys in the queue. Didn't you guys just spend all that time talking about how powerful the fire galleys are for the Byzantines? Mm -hmm. The reality is, in seeing that Tato stay dark age for so long, he knows he's not going to be in a yep. water battle. Galleys themselves are more effective at taking out fishing ships. So... Given that that's his main goal at the moment and does already find one with the first galley on the field, it's no surprise that he did ultimately go for that ship even though it doesn't have a bonus. It gives you a little bit more utility too. Like if you want to deny a dock, the villager building the dock can hide behind it. Fire galleys can't take out that vill. But with a galley, you can snipe it from over top of the dock foundation. Also, later in the game, if you want extra scouting or controlling unit positions in the center, galleys are going to help and they're cheaper on gold. Yeah. So Yo still has a decent an economy behind this should be able to click up soon but tato of course is about to click up to castle age and now we have to ask does tato move out to stone here so he's got the gold he's got the food he needs he still is being harassed on the dock but his fishing ships three of them have remained alive does he transfer like eight villagers to stone or is he just going to go for that three town center boom and then collects stone along the way as Yo dives in here and snipes another fishing ship. Well done. Yeah, trying to move away with the fishing ship. Still has two alive. The fact that he hasn't gone to stone yet suggests to me that maybe he's just looking for Castle Age water play. And we did ha already have him invest in two fire galleys in the queue, as well as some eco upgrades to start to match those of Mr. Yo. Oh, but Yo added in a fire galley too. Ooh. So he added that in perfectly on time. He's there right as Tato's fire pops out. And a Byzantine fire galley, feudal age, against a regular castle age fire, it actually almost wins. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's very, very close. So, I mean, from Yo's perspective, with those two galleys behind, Tato's going to have to keep investing into those. I think Tata will likely just add three town centers here, one of them being on the stone, and then try and extend outwards for those gold areas at the sides. As we see the Byzantine fire already putting in work, Tato trying to bait Yo back into his sea tower, but Yo is not falling for it, and Tato wisely just repairing. Yo knows that until he gets to Castle Age, he can't seriously contest water, so he's just going to boom up his land eco at home and actually adding a stable too. So maybe planning on a few scouts or maybe some knights early in Castle Age. Yeah, I like the stable at the very least to get a few more land military units onto the field, scout where Tato might decide to go with one of those TCs to the sides. We have that fire galley engagement in the middle, but with the numbers advantage, Tato wins out and finds a kill. Really, really uh, slow opening here. Just a little bit of pressure on the water. And there's the town center on the stone I was talking about. I wonder how long it takes Tato to go for that castle. Does he go for that third town center? Does he go for the fourth town center? Ooh. You usually only want three at your main base because you want that fourth one on the gold. You want that control as soon as possible. You never quite know when your opponent is going to stretch out there. And the worst situation is running out of gold in your main base, going out to that side, and it's already taken. And then you have to make the, the huge journey, either across the water or back towards your base to the other side. Yeah, I think then the question becomes, right, which side do you go? Which side do you want to launch an attack on eventually towards Yo as and well? And scouting, right? The wood lines on the right-hand side of the map are very odd. Yep. See how they curve all the way in towards the middle? Yep. It's like it's such a narrow pathway, almost a defensive structure in and of itself for Tato. Might actually decide to leave that there and go to the more open side here in the south. Well, I mean, and that's part of the water control that he wants. He wants to be able to control his movements along the shorelines. You mentioned it, that right side. If he doesn't have water control, extremely difficult, almost impossible to push out that way. The bottom, a little bit more attainable that that that's also further away from his base and closer to Mr. Yo. Right. So Tato keeping his scout alive is huge. He's going to get some scouting that Yo is going for that stable, has made an additional scout here, and Yo will be in Castle Age shortly. But by the time he reaches, I mean, Tato's already going to have three town centers. He's getting heavy plow right now. His economy is going to be looking fantastic. Yeah, off to the races, to say the least. Tied up in villagers now, but keep your eyes at the top of the screen. You'll start to see those numbers climbing for the blue player overall. With that third TC coming up just on the gold and the wood line, he's got great protected resources for the time being. Not needing to extend outside the walls of his base just yet. Fishing ships do get tar targeted, though, and this is a good find for Mr. Yo, right? Any, or any damage you can deal to the economy mm -hmm. of Tata when you are the player trying to catch up in the boom is good damage.
Now, an interesting little tidbit here about Tat. We all know he loves his demos, and uh, there's a, a, a thing you can do on this map where you can hide the demolition ships behind these rocks, and they don't have an outline. So there's multiple ones of those, and every time Tato and I are watching this map, as Tato tries to come in here with the demo, C Tower will be firing away, and Yo will manage to take that out while taking a little bit of extra damage. Wow, how about this? Already jumping TC to the third on the, TC on the, on the gold. Yep. Beautiful, and that's because he had the scouts there, right? That's why he added the scouts. Yep. So he knew exactly what Tato has. He knew that Tato would be playing defensive, and he knew he would be secure over in that south. But like I was saying, every time we're watching this map, me and Tato, we're looking at those rocks, and we're thinking, okay, potential demos like he's already lining it up in his brain yeah i'll go a step further every time this map loads up dave the first thing he does <laughs> is count, count he counts the number of rocks and then he turns and searches for tato in the room he goes tato five rocks five places that you could hide a demo and he, tato always does the same thing he looks and he smiles and he like nods his head yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and also it's guys it's not it's they're also not they're not just thinking about okay strictly number of rocks they're also thinking about the position of which the demo needs to face in order to be properly hit vertical like, or horizontal yeah, some like, rocks you need a horizontal <laughs> demo some rocks you need a vertical demo exactly <laughs> tato's going to be thinking about that stuff. Well, we better see it now though right now i just need to see it all right, so we got that scout still. I, I, I love the addition of the scouts. It might have delayed Yo a little bit going up to Castle Age, but look at this. He knows Tato is not there in the north. Tato isn't in the south because he's attacking that wall. The wood line extends all the way to the edge, mm -hmm. and he, he knows there's no possible way that Tato could have moved out there without him seeing. So he can go for that town center in the south in safety, and start collecting the stone outside of his base and start thinking about getting one of those Byzantine wow, castles. Wow, castle at home for Tato. Yeah, and he this needs to. He goes needs exactly to. to your point, right? He just doesn't feel like he has permission to go to the, to the wings, doesn't have the military to support the villagers, so he's going to go for the safer option. This will allow him to get conch production up and start looking for raids and that little chip damage towards his opponent. But even still, his long-term prospects being stuck in this corner are not great. Eventually, Tato is going to have to move out. Not a lot of pressure from Yo. He's still got a few fires, but he hasn't gone for that war galley upgrade just yet. He's still at his fishing ships, which have actually, over time, even on the you know very limited uh, gather rate of those shore fish, have brought in quite a bit of food. Um, he's got a decent economy himself, but Tato is still at 70 villagers. But look at this. Yo is preparing to go up to Imperial Age. Byzantines get Imperial Age cheaper. He's kind of stalling out his military production right now. He's banking gold, he's banking food, and I believe he will have the building shortly to click up and then try and take advantage of that uptime. There's the university there. I think the monastery went down. Yeah, he's got monks the on south. the field already. Yep, there's archery ranges too. And Byzantines, we were talking about the Spanish cannon galleons. They can add in dromans to range the castle potentially from Tato if Yo has water control, and he doesn't need to get chemistry for that. So as soon as he's in Imperial Age, which he's queued up behind a villager, he can go for those and start harassing Tato. Tato is going to be stuck here in a second. I was going to say, Yo's calling all of Tato's shots. Uh, well, of course, the Konks are going to find the scouts and look for some damage. Got to have the... Look at the aim and on like, those guys. How do they hit that? What? Okay, I've <laughs> seen them miss a villager from one tile. I've seen eight Conquistadors miss a villager from one tile away. Yeah. And suddenly... They're just absolute snipers over there. Promote those two. Send them to sharpshooter school, for real. Scout snipers, if you will, on horseback. Uh, either way, I think Yo has such an intelligent approach here. As you mentioned, already going to the Imperial Age. He's got monks on the field, which are a perfect answer to those Kongs. He's already invested into Elite Skirmisher and is getting Bodkin on top of that. Another great answer to the Kongs. So I'm not certain Kongs are going to find much damage. And you can even see, I think Tato will probably at some point choose to lessen his investment into that unit and maybe look to make it to the Imperial Age himself so that he can contest more in the tech tree. I like the initial skirmishers here. Maybe doesn't want, you know, 40, 50 of them late game, but mm -hmm. it's it's a great addition with ballistics to control the movements from Tato. Tato still hasn't gone out to the gold. He's playing this so passively, and this looks intentional at this point. It's not just in response to what Yo is doing. This definitely looks like an intentional strategy from Tato where he's just going to take all the gold he can at home and then go out right as he needs to, as more conquistadors make their way in here. Yo, once again, excellent vision on this south side. All the upgrades now coming in for Tato, like Cav, mm -hmm. in addition to these conquistadors, and Yo is looking for his first castle placement.
Yeah, how far forward does this come, right? He does have the skirmishers to protect, but he wants to make sure that he doesn't have a throwing moment, right? By being over aggressive. Ooh. So here on the shoreline, out in front of the gold. Ballistics is in. It's going to cut Tato off, and with Ballistics in, these Conquistadors have to retreat. Imperial Age two seconds away from completing, so Castle up or not up in time to have the uh, Treb on the way right away. Tato looking for the micro battle here, and he has solid numbers. But again, he's trading into a very efficient unit here yeah. for the Byzantines. Great job from Tato there to distract Mr. Yo, and look at what he's doing while Mr. Yo is distracted. He's going for that town center in the north, so he's picked his timing. And he's going for another castle. He knows that Yo is trying to deny him from coming to the south. He knows Yo is going to try and push him from the south. He's going to take this opportunity when Yo is distracted to go up there and gain gold access. But once again, the scouting from Mr. Yo is on point the entire game. He knows he can't get into the, the safe eco from Tato. What he can do is control the movements. And if he sees those villagers coming out there, Maybe he's going to shift some of his army over to that northern area. Yeah, won't be able to deny the building placements here, but at least becomes aware of them as soon as they'll get dropped. Well, actually, I say that. He will have to reposition that scout, but I'll trust that he'll do so in due time. We also had all the conks and light cav rotating this way. Yep. So Tato may be looking for some counter pressure, right, to, uh, to make Yo think twice about centralizing his whole push here in the south. Yo's got to be careful. I love the fact he's house walled there. It's not just Palisades from earlier. You can see whenever he needed a house, he would just make an additional one as part of that wall. The conks are very strong, but against Byzantine houses in Imperial Age, not really going to get the job done. Villager kind of exposed a little bit. It is a Spanish villager, so it does oh. build click quicker. And Tato saves it. He's going to have to bring another one over there. Yeah, the ones from the castle will come back to finish that TC, but for the time being, delayed, right? And that is amazing damage to be found off of a half-health scout. Yep. War Galley now coming in for Tato. Those trebs are quite close to the water. Yo's still trying to attack that castle. Still no Dromans out, which is interesting. Maybe Yo's uh, afraid of maybe some fires coming over, but it feels like you have a pretty good position underneath that castle to sit with one if you have the resources. The Conquistadors haven't gotten into Yo's base just yet, and the Skirmishers are there. So good movement from Yo to continue to track Ooh. those conks, and he gets a big, big fight over there. Four of them already dying. That's incredible damage. I mean, Dave, I'm starting to worry about the Imperial Age composition here for Tato. Like, what do you play into Byzantines? You Demos into Trebs. That's, that's it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Demos into Skirms. I'm like, you got cheap camels for Byzantines. You've mm -hmm. got the skirmishers. You've, you've already lost the race to the Imperial Age, so you're behind in siege overall. Like, it doesn't feel like... Spanish have that many great options in this matchup. He's just going to try and hold. He's just going to try and hold. The fires are coming over. Yo needs to back up with these trebs. The demos are coming over, of course. It's Tato. He's pushing forward with another trebuchet. But boom, one trebuchet goes down. There's still three fires here from Tato and a really lonely looking <laughs> fire galley heading over from Yo as three more demos are on the way. Will the castle survive? The castle, very low HP, but the demos are in. Boom, boom. Trebuchet's dead, and Tato will hold on to this position for another day. However, he's still in the castle age against an Imperial Age opponent. Yeah, tons of food floating, still needs gold if he wants to click up for himself. Wow, two conversions coming through here for Mr. Yo on the night, but it's still good to see Tato looking to press pressure forward. We do have a conservative castle being placed defensively here for Yo, trying to hold on to that economy, but now we'll get another look, look at, how weak at the castle. train of demos coming yep. in. Yep, if these trebs are left up for another moment, that castle goes down. And that's, that's a misplay from Yo, to put the trebs right beside the water he could have put them a little bit further away still within the general area for that castle to protect and he could have sniped down that castle and then made his way into uh tato's base but unfortunately he did position them by the water probably just right clicked or set the gather point from the castle onto tato's and tato takes advantage of that so he'll take that win still massing up knights still massing up conks and yo still rolling along the shoreline with his trebuchet. Yeah, not learning from his mistake there in the previous run against that castle, loses another treb. And once again, now Tata with room to breathe is making his way to the Imperial Age. Still a minute and 30 to go, but he's dropped his siege workshop in the north. Could just be looking for one surprising punch to the gut. Does, does he go with another treb along the shore? I, I feel like we're in Australia or something. The shoreline is not safe. <laughs>
<laughs> it's not okay. safe. Has okay. Learned? No, no, no. It's no, coming no, no. out. Of, yeah, it's on a different trajectory okay, here. Good. It's taking a different angle. Ooh, look at this. Tato pushing forward with villagers. He's 50 seconds away from Imperial Age. He's got rams. He's got conks. He's got knights. But skirmisher heavy camel should be enough to stop all of this. Uh, 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 a Droman over there would go that hard. Would be so hard. As yeah. well. Um, but yo, you know, he takes a little bit of time to get into that unit before he thinks about it. Wow, and Tato just seeing those four heavy camels, right? Decides, you know what? I'm gonna back up in terms of the castle placement once again. So he doubles his castles up over here on the northern side. We've split the map 50-50. He's there again. <laughs> He's on the shoreline again. A camel and a galley that Trebs will not protect. I'm sorry. You need to do something. He's got two. Oh, demo, Ooh. demo rafts and war galleys on the way. Okay, maybe All Yo's right. cooking. Maybe All Yo's right. got something planned. Fight fire with fire, they say, right? Explosives with explosives. Demo against demo. We'll see if Tato can find a way to remove those trebs. As once again, he's repairing a castle with just two villagers. In fact, this castle will go down. Supremacy, hoardings, chemistry, fast fire. And I don't think that Tato's going to forget about how good cannon galleons are on this map. Yeah. I think we will see those from Tato if he's in a position to make them. Good demos from Mr. Yo. He clears up the fires. The trebuchets are still wondering where to go on that side. Tato, pretty firm control over the gold in the north. Yo, pretty firm control over the gold in the south. And I believe Yo is adding in docks as he goes for the fast fire research. My question for Tato is if the Byzantines get full water access, how are you ever going to fight up against those Byzantine fast fires? Super powerful, right? Yeah, I can't imagine a good way to do so, especially when you've lost your castles that are on the shoreline, right? That would be maybe the positioning that you're trying to bait your opponent in, use that castle to your advantage. We've got a bit of a fight on the shorelines here, and the Supremacy Villagers come out to make quick work of that camel, get themselves back onto gold. But through all this time, now Mr. Yo is going to start to extend here in the north and look to push his opponent back. Elite Conquistador is kind of wild. It's not an upgrade we see very often. It will give them a lot more HP and, and two extra extra attack um, on those Kongs, but usually the Spanish will switch into something else. However, on this map, there's plenty of gold access if you can hold it. Maybe you can keep the Conquistador production up, and the Byzantines will have to make like two or three units to counter those. They don't have a singular unit that's going to be enough to uh, provide the punch for Mr. Yo against that army. Yeah, I, the big issue is no matter what Tato makes, I feel like the current army composition of Mr. Yo is what he'll a little be bit, happy yeah. to stay on, a right? Like, bit. he just, he doesn't need to make any more tech <laughs> switches. He's on the shoreline again. He is on the shoreline with his trebs again, but he is killing villagers with the camels. I think Tato tried to push across the middle water here. Byzantine fire is getting some value. No demos there from Mr. Yo just yet as the camels try and raid in the north. Yo is trying to push two castles. He's got three trebs targeting the castle over at Tato's main base. He's got another trebuchet targeting the castle in the north, but these conquistadors, if Tato keeps up the micro, are so deadly, and Tato is coming in for the trebs again. Oh my Mr. goodness. Mr. Yo, at what point well, he doesn't Do get the sights stop? just yet. Will the castle fire be enough to take these fire ships down? We've already lost one of the trebs. The second one will fall as well, but still one remains to fire away on that castle. We do have 900 stone in the bank here for Tato, so he's happy to repair to, to his end to the end of days here I, as he removes yet another trebuchet. How many resources have been lost on that shoreline? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and like eight trebs? Yeah. Times 400 resources per. Yikes. Woo! Oh my goodness. 3,200 wood and gold down the drain, lost to demos. But once again, we refocus on the northern side. It is a trebuchet on his shoreline, but this one a little bit better protected underneath the base Drummonds! of the castle. Drummonds, there we go. He's got them in the queue. He's also got Shipwright coming in. We saw him get Shipwright yesterday on Brood War, and everyone was like, surely that's not worth it. But it is definitely worth it here, as that will reduce the cost of his ships and the Dromans are on the way. The fires are on the way. Yo still holding that southern area. Tato attempting to hold the north, but you mentioned it before. Byzantines just have all of the answers. He's learning! Yes. The trebs are set up away from the water. Got the memo, the Dromans and the reposition on the trebs. Okay, Bombard Cannon's on the field. This is going to be Tato's best answer at this point to the trebuchets. But like we said, there's really only one player attempting to make forward progress. Tato is full defensive mode, mm -hmm. and Yo has entirely, you know, permission to move forward. 
Yeah, yo, it's still pressuring that main economy too. And that's where you have all your farms set up, right? It's a really valuable piece. It takes a long time to get the infrastructure, the food infrastructure working. Yo's got 44 on food, Tato's got 41, but it's gonna be a lot less if that castle falls and this army is in his base and he's gonna have to shift everything to the north. And remember, those wood lines, very, very awkward for Tato to move large numbers up there and to get his farm set up. So great push from Yo at the south here. Greek fire coming in for him wow. to help out his uh, fire ships. I believe it also helps out the, the Dromans as well, right? No, no, it does not. It does only check the fire quick. ships. Extra splash damage for Dromans. I knew there was something. I absolutely knew there was something as the castle falls and wow. Tato finally can't defend this position. Even Bombard Tower from Mr. Yo. Just going for it, full sail. Researching 100% of the tech tree, that's the new challenge. And, and just as a cannon galleon comes out onto the field here for Tato, it goes down to heavy camels of all things. With that castle position following, falling rather, that means the main eco is under threat. It's a whole bunch of elite conks up in the north still trying to defend this position here for Tato. So again, very stalemate game, but inch by inch, Yo is clawing forward. Yeah, and I mean, maybe inches at the top, but it's like miles here at the bottom, right? As he pushes mm -hmm. into that farm, he goes, Tato now down to 31 on food. Tato's cannon galleons that he made, we saw them run right into camels. There's just too much going on to micromanage every single unit. The conquistadors are incredibly powerful. They're very, very strong. If Yo takes a fight against them, that guy is is dead now. Good shot from the Drummond. But, uh, I mean, Tato can't push through these choke points. Not against Byzantine castles. The camels are just raiding. The skirmisher is dealing with that. Demos now from Tato being masked up, but for what? Yeah. You've got, you may have 155 villagers. It looks like a very healthy economy, but for what, right? Mm -hmm. Again, there's no amount of resources that can pull you out of this deficit that you're in. You don't have the unit comp available to take down the Byzantines, and that's what's going to make me question the approach. Supremacy Vils, though. Hey, there you Wait, go. I forgot he got that tech. He's he got 100. I mean, he's basically got... I, 186 army right now. If he chooses to use it, that's exactly right. Now the Kongs have rotated down to the south to try and deal with all these heavy camels, but they just keep rolling forward, and there's no shortage of resources for Yo either, right? So again, end of the day, if both players have undisturbed economies, I'm just going to favor the Byzantine player mm -hmm. as the castle position in the north falls down. Only one remains to protect that all-important gold here in the north. Yo is trying to max out the tech tree. He's literally getting everything. He's got Greek fire. He's getting, like, uh, dry dog right now, Cap Ram, He's thumb getting ring, thumb ring for tower. no ranged units. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, Dash, <laughs> just in case. Just in case, <laughs> bro. Demo's coming in from Tato. Ah, just passing? Oh, they want the Dromans. They want the they Dromans. They want the Dromans. They want the highlight play. They want the Dromans. They want the replay. Let's Yo's go. On the run. Will he find it? No? No. Nope. Ah. Oh, those, oh. Fires are doing, th those fires are doing good work. Man, we totally just baited everybody. That could have been so epic. Those fires are doing great work. But the fires are from Tato are on the way, as Yo is finding it difficult to push against the Supremacy Villager Conquistador stack on this side. However, he's got those Bomber Towers set up. Still has the Dromans working well in the castle. Demo comes in here from Tato. He's going to get at least two. That's a great find right there when it comes to the Demo shot. Small wins here for Tato in the end. But I think Yo has just approached this in such a sure way, right? Like he's not taking any, yes, methodically. He's not taking chances. That's where the Bombard Towers come into play as well. He's just taking positions inch by inch, rolling forward with those trebs and now targeting the castles. There's not very many camel numbers here though. He does target the trebuchets. Two of Tato's will go down. Now the third to be targeted as well. Conk's doing the best they can to clean up these heavy camels. We'll have to micro them back in the end. I think the problem, as we see the damage dealt by this Conquistador, is they had like 70-something kills, 64 kills now on the Conks, as a few of them went down. The problem for Tato is going to be stone here. You see he's still buying stone. He's buying stone for 158 gold. That price is only going to go up and up and up as he continues to try and repair those castles. Feels like he's been repairing most of Castle Age and Imperial Age at this point, as Yo has never let up the pressure. I'd actually love to see how many trebuchets Yo made this game. I think it might be in the 20s. Oh, yeah. Actually, it might be approaching that, right, with both the northern and southern positions. We even saw Siege Ram research there for Mr. Yo with only a couple on the field. But it just feels like that's going to be the killing blow. The map is shrinking here for Tato. Well, yeah, what was a 50-50 split is now looking more like 70-30. The final castle position's under threat. Not enough stone. 
to repair the long term. He's gonna have to keep buying. Villagers working away as best they can. The Kongs putting up a valiant defense, yep. but all for naught, it seems, in the end. Siege Rams are, are decent against Conquistadors, but they do get a little bit of bonus damage, so they should be able to shoot them down eventually. But Tato needs these Conquistadors in like two different areas of the map, and he's forced to keep them here at home. As Yo says, listen, even if you clear up my army, you're not getting rid of me here. Like, he's got six bomber towers, Five bomber towers complete, another one in construction there at the front of Tato's base. Like, Tato is not reclaiming this territory, and he's not pushing in the top. The Dromans are working away on the docks, and just an emphatic win there from Yo. Byzantines should be favored every single time. Tato tried to build up, tried to get into Conquistadors and push out, but it just wasn't enough. This is a smooth victory there for Mr. Yo, right? And exactly the kind of play you expect out of him as a player. He uh, identifies the matchup and where his winning positions are, scales up throughout the game with little investment into the feudal <laughs> age. <laughs> First time. <laughs> oh, funny. my God. And, well, like, the fact that he lost eight trebuchets that were avoidable losses and he still won like that just shows how good of a sieve Byzantines are there. Mm -hmm. And Spanish... While they have some options, it feels like Tata would have needed to maybe adjust his strategy a little bit more or maybe had a more fortunate map generation in that it would be more open on the sides to, for him to approach those golds or for him to stop the push from Mr. Yo. Because in those choke points, it was so brutal. Yeah, that's where I wonder if um, Castle first, 3TC second would have been a slightly better approach just to get the aggression out a little bit quicker, well, I mean, right? But then it's like if Yo doesn't go out to the golds early and he's just sitting there with three town centers of his own massing skirmishers, then you're kind of behind on economy, yeah. right? So it's it. there's so many different pieces that go into approaching that Civ matchup. And I think as a pro player, what you need to do with the draft, which is an incredibly important phase mm -hmm. of this series before it even begins, is never put yourself in that position where you're, you, you know, doing running the calculations and saying, okay, I have a 20% chance to win against this civilization. Just don't put yourself there. Right, yeah. Don't yeah. do it. Don't opt into that matchup or into that position. But either way, 1-0 to zero stands the series score at the moment. Mr. Yo taking an early lead. Tato, on the other hand, plenty of room to make that back as we have eight maps to choose from. And ultimately, he will be the one with the map choice here in game number two. Yeah, and it... It was a fascinating Civ draft. We talked about it a little bit earlier. We were all sitting there going like, oh my God, all of the random Civ bands are top tier civilizations. All of them have been seen multiple times on uh, NAC5 so far. And then they were left with um, what we would call the dregs, right? Yeah. Although they still got some Speaking good- Speaking of the dregs. Civilizations, here we go. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Yo, Yo with the Goss. On Desert Void here, up against Tanta with the Hindustanis. Yeah, how about this? Uh, I mean, what do we make of the Goths as a pick on uh, Desert Void? It's small, wallable maps. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think to that end, you can be rather safe. We also have the three Rhino start. Uh, so changing the food makeup of your Dark Age as compared to other maps as well. Yeah, exactly. And you can see that hunt lasts 20% longer. It's funny all the little things they've added to Goss here as Yo goes forward with a villager potentially looking to lame. The, the text is getting smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> as they try and make Goss viable, right? But 20% longer is a lot when you have three rhinos or, or elephants as they sometimes are. 400 food each, right? So that's like, what, 240 extra food? You're doing math on air, man. I never, I stay away from math as best I can, but that sounds about right. Yeah. Well, you did the math on the trip resources last game. I guess I did. You're right. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, surely Dash is gonna e eating my words. He's gonna eating cover my this words one. On Ooh, nice one. first hit. Ooh, nice first hit there from Yo. And Tato sees the villager, so Tato should be able to pull in his rhinos on time and prevent Yo from laming these. Already, yeah, he's already got all that stuff in there. Okay, so Tato, that's or rather Yo, a huge investment of villager time to come forward and perhaps to find nothing. Might use that villager to lame other resources. Again, it's important to note uh, aspects of this map, right, is that all of the gold positions are outside of those tree lines. And mm -hmm. so it uh, could be really effective just to use the villager to wall some things up. And as you see there, going for the berries even. Yeah, Goss, uh, great early game. Really, really great early game. The mid game kind of falls off because they don't really have any eco bonuses there. The late game, their tech tree, you know, if you get in infantry, it, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But it's really, really difficult to get there. So a lot of people play pretty YOLO 
with the Goss early because they want to get that advantage and snowball it later into the game. That's a wonderful gate there, Tato. I'm glad that you built it and then went through it. We'll have to see what he's cooking with that yeah, one. Yeah, I think that was just to deter Yo from walking through the center of the base, yeah. right? We kind of saw just that Palisade wall as well, making Yo think twice about diving under the TC and getting trapped in some kind of unique way. Instead, we'll make his way back outside the wood lines and start the laming of those golds. Yeah, and the gold and the stone in the front there, are kind of an annoyance for Tato. Where is his other golds? There's a question. Where are Tato's golds? He's got one over here which is very, very open. Now, this map script was changed a little bit from the qualifiers. The golds used to be at the back. People would full wall, and it would be kind of like a knight or a cav archer approach. These golds being shifted forward has changed that somewhat. And you can see Yo will be over here with the scout. Will he be able to spot this? Yes. What, it, what does he do now in response? Well, that he knows. We have the militia in the queue and on the way. Feudal Age as well coming in in about a minute 15, but Tato will beat him there. I think Tato tracking this militia as well isn't going to be surprised and even went for the pre-wall. So melee unit's not going to find too much damage right around the goal, but that into villager... The lion. <laughs> oh, no. Right into the lion. Classic, classic lion behavior Bill's coming right there. Forward. As the villagers forward. are going to join the militia and the scout, the other two militia will be on the way. And Tato, I think he suspects that there's going to be some sort of forward. He saw militia. It's unlikely there's only going to be one. He knows Yo is going to be up to Imperial Age soon. And then the question is, is it an archer follow-up or towers? It could even be a forward archer range. Yeah, Spearman out on the field just to have a little bit of military presence. Still tracking that militia coming forward. There spots the Vils. So now he understands that it's towers coming forward. Yo goes for the forward range. And, okay. ta and Tato prepping the counter tower immediately yep. on yep. the uh, on the gold as well. So he knows that he has to hold on to this gold position to have long-term chances. And he's going to invest heavily in doing so. There's enough gold in the bank for another archer there from Tato. Sometimes building that tower will take your villagers off gold and then you can't keep up the production. Skirmishers don't feel the greatest here either. So Yo applying a ton of pressure. However, Tato with the good scouting. He's got the preemptive defense set up. He should be fine for now. It's just a question of how can Yo expand around the base from Tato? Are there any wood lines he can pressure? Can he pressure the berries at the back? Can he deny the gold long term? That is the question. That's a good snipe from Tato on the scout from Mr. Yo. Unfortunate to lose that scout. Could be crucial in gathering information later. Even still rotating his villagers down around the southern side here. Still That's in tower range. Tower. Yeah, yeah, he could have he built this a, a little bit further over where the tower from Tato can't range it, and that's beautiful, right? Tato, I think, can range that once he gets Fletching, and he's getting it right now, so we're, we're, we're going to be able to answer that right away. But that's a much better tower than the initial foundation that Yo was setting up as Tato now finds those militia. The militia haven't added any value whatsoever to Yo, and now Yo has to be concerned about the archer army coming back across the field. Yeah, he's got unprotected villagers around the gold here. He recognizes that fact, so we'll pull them away. But it could be uh, an opportunity for a vil snipe here. Using that uh, spearman Beautiful. very effectively is Tato, and even pulling the scout away before it goes down. This is a dead vil if microed properly. And he's going to be focusing on this. He's going to snipe it with the archers. Yo loses a villager here. That is 1-0 Eco KD in favor of Tato as Yo goes for a couple gates. Tato roaming around the north side of Yo's base. He's not going to find anything up there, but he forces all of the army. Oh, no! Wow. Two units! What happened? Ah, stuck. That hurts so much to see. I was so wondering where the... I, I, that's probably why I didn't get the Men at Arms upgrade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Dead investment. I mean, that is that is no small thing. The amount of resources invested into those militia to find nothing in the end and that extra spearman stuck in the wood line. We do have fletching coming in here for Mr. Yo to match the fletching of Tato. That's going to help these skirmishers deal with the spear and the archer that are looking for damage. We can flip back to the other side of the map to see how the tower war is going. And uh, we might be here for a little while. It's good to see Tato utilizing the archers, though, to garrison into the tower to allow the villagers to keep working away on the gold, whereas Yo is relegated to keeping his villagers 
idle over yep. there. Yep, and he's he's going to find, I think, the villager here from Tato. He sees the stable, which is great. He does have fletching, but Tato, right on top of that, as soon as he sees the red dot. Heavy housing, though, by Tato. He pulled him off that house. Ooh, this true. could be actually pretty disastrous, just in terms of rushing some houses up. Oh, he's got one. He's got one already built okay. in the in the base, so he's going to be fine. Not much idle TC time there as Yo loops around with these archers. Tato's still looking for damage with his army. Very limited uh, areas, though, to attack as he might just default into attacking these pavilions, which do provide five population, by the way. If you're, if you're wondering what these are for, you start with them on this map. They have no armor, only four, 500 HP, so very quick to go down, even to dark or feudal age units. Yeah, I wouldn't even mind seeing the villagers targeted, but instead it looks like Yo is going to bring his vills home. He's done what he can on the front. Oh, but look at that. The reposition of the army here from Tato would cut him off, and all of a sudden, Yo has to think better of it. Yeah, Yo, yeah, there's no safety going back to the base. <laughs> you, the only safety you can find is running further away from your opponent, and Yo is in a tricky situation there. However, he keeps his tower alive. Yo is so good at this. He is always paying attention to his tower, always repairing, you know, garrisoning the villas perfectly on time. He might even think about sacrificing a villager to save the other two, but tower, or Tato pops out of the tower with the three archers, and that's two villagers dead for Mr. Yo. Great defense from Tato. Yeah, just like that, a great eco advantage found. 36 to 33 overall in the numbers. And again, this just weakens Yo's forward position. He has forward military buildings. He did get that blacksmith up forward as well. Still has those two units stuck in the wood line for eternity. Archer armor coming in as well for yeah. Yo. So big investment here in the Feudal Age. This is really tough for Yo. Now he's going to have to fight with skirmishers, some archers, and a militia against scout archer skirm from Tato. Uh, the army numbers are there for Mr. Yo. But Tata with those scouts, he's just got so much versatility, right? He can choose to pressure Yo's base. If Yo pressures Tato's base, there's not really much damage to be found without the villagers to follow it up. Tato's got a pretty solid defense here. He's got good farm numbers. And, uh, well, Mr. Yo's resources aren't looking too hot. Only 12 farms behind this. And nothing on gold still, right? I yeah, mean, that's well, that's a big thing forward. as well. Exactly. We have bloodlines and forging coming in for these scouts. So once again, thinking about finally diving in and taking this tower position out here for Mr. Yo. Then if he does that, has full permission to go forward and look for further damage at his opponent's base. Targeting the walls first, the range units will hit the villager. Makes it so she can't keep those walls up. And in the end, this tower seems like it's an inevitability that it goes down and that villager loses her life. I mean, it's Mr. Yo. They, he always finds a way to keep them alive. Even this one, it might be a little bit difficult. He's still got the army there, so Tato has to worry about that. You can see the archers are kind of staying over on that left side. But the scouts do kill the tower. Mr. Yo loses that position. Two more villagers. now he's going to lose two more villagers. It's going to be a 5-0 to zero eco KD in favor of Tato. Even Yo couldn't keep that one alive as he pressures forward now. Archers, skirms, fletching, armor upgrade. Now the infantry upgrade coming in for the spearmen wow. from Yo, and he's already got six of them. Are they trapped <laughs> is the question. Only one. Got to make sure you yeah, have that gather point uh, is set properly there out of the barracks. But Tato now diving in for the engagement. Those scouts do have forging. They don't have the armor just yet. 12 seconds till that comes in. The spearmen just got their armor bonus as we speak. But there's only two forward at the moment. And the range units can deal with them quite easily. Yeah. We had an attempted cat tower position. Like to see that from Yo because he is in an all-in situation. Looking for damage. But another villager goes down. And the lead continues to grow for Tato. Yeah. And this is just the reality of the matchup, right? Yo felt like he couldn't fight with Tato during the mid game, really. So he wanted to put pressure early. Tato saw that with the good scouting and Tato is completely destroying him. There, there's the armor on the scouts, bloodlines, forging, skirmishers are all dead. The villagers are all dead. That's another batch of villagers and Yo calls the GG. Tato responds with a win here on Desert Void. And that is just good Civ drafting from Tato as well. Yo tried something. Tato knew he was going to go a little bit all in, and he was able to stop it. The spearmen and the militia also not being brutal. on the field is really brutal for Yo. He didn't want to delete the barracks to free them. He wanted to keep that producing, and they were just stuck. 
Yeah, I mean, Yo took a risk, right? Bringing just from the very beginning, bringing that villager forward, looking to deny a Rhino somewhere. But again, Tato, great understanding of the matchup and the possibility of that. Prioritizes getting all three Rhinos underneath his TC early, making sure that he won't be denied that food. Got himself out to a gold, protected it brilliantly, because those are then be or rather then becomes the weak point or the attack point of your opponent, and so navigates that one brilliantly in order to equalize this series at one and one. If you're wondering about breaks for these players in a best of nine, I believe we have two five-minute breaks. Yes. After game four? And seven. And Yo's already thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, these have been, I mean, game one obviously went into imp, but both have been pretty aggressive mm -hmm. and fast-paced, I think, to a degree, um, particularly that second one. Uh, now Yo, though, with his first opportunity to select a map, we have seven remaining. We haven't necessarily walked through them all, so I'll read them off for you. Home maps for Mr. Yo, Copenhagen, Drive, Graveyards, Arabia, and Outcrop. On the other side for Tato, it's African Rebeds, Langanati, and Rocky Forest still remaining. A lot of land maps here, right? Tons. Like, Langanati is kind of hybrid, but there's only so many fish in the middle. So you have Rocky Forest, Langanati, African Rebeds, I consider a hybrid map now because of the fish traps. <laughs> Outcrop, Arabia, Dry Graveyards, though. Yeah. Copenhagen, really the only one where you're mixing in um, the water battles. So very, very, like, similar sieves that can be used on all of these. And they're really going to have to think about potential matchups when they're choosing their civilization heading in here. I think they both know what they're going to pick on Copenhagen. But other than that, it's kind of a question mark. Korean's first pick. I Yeah, I, I mean, maybe he knows Tato has a, a plan Somewhere. for Koreans. Yeah. Maybe he thinks Koreans are just unstoppable on Copenhagen and there was no sieves available to counter them. I, I don't know. Yeah, interesting, because he does have the other uh, somewhat popular Copenhagen pick that we've seen at times in the Berbers later down in the draft as well. Yep. Uh, Malian's, of course, a favorite on Langanati, but we'll see where we go. It's going to be Arabia as Yo's choice for game number three here. Yo in the red, playing as the Vietnamese, Tato in the blue as the Franks. The El Clasico of Age of Empires. We've got Arabia Let's go. set up in front of us, and we've got Vietnamese for Mr. Yo. We've got Franks for Tato. Both excellent Arabia civilizations, both with some really great eco bonuses. We know all about the Franks dash. We've got the farm upgrades for free, which really, really helps. The castles are cheaper. The cavalry has 20% HP, which is huge. The foragers work 15% faster. The knights have the line of sight, which is... Um, it's okay. Basically, sure. Franks, you make cavalry, cavalry. Maybe you mix in some skirms or archers early. But long term, it's going to be a scouts in tonight's play and try and utilize their mobility. Just go easy mode with it. Yeah, them. you get to that chivalry as well. Mm -hmm. Stable's working 40% faster, and you can just flood the map with knights. They're a feel-good food sieve when it comes to those uh, berries and the farm upgrades. But over on the side of Vietnamese, ooh, one of my favorite sieve bonuses, just the fact that you know your enemy's position at game start. Yep. Right, and so that's just a ton of information for free right off the bat there for Mr. Yo. Of course, economic upgrades costing no woods is always a nice bonus. Archer units have more HP, and that's going to apply to both the archers and cav archers as well. Yeah, and the cav archers have become a big part of this uh, Vietnamese play, right? You get to Castle Age, you have that mobility, and you have the range that you would have from going crossbows or something along those lines. And you don't even need to immediately like get bloodlines or invest into that. They're just really, really strong off the bat. So perfect um, composition in some ways for them. However, against the Frank economy and the Knight spam, once the Franks get plus two, it becomes a little bit difficult for those Cav Archers until you build up a large quantity of them. I would think in this game, they might both open scouts because that seems to be the play nowadays. You open scouts and then you transition into an archer range. But we'll see what uh, we'll see what Yo in particular has cooked up here. I think Franks is a pretty standard play. Vietnamese, you have a few more options in feudal. Yeah, it definitely seems like uh, avoiding archers is the is like what uh, is the pro approach right now at all at costs, NAC? right? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, unless you need to in order to either force a tech switch out of your opponents or just respond to what you're seeing in that moment, almost always favoring mobility and cavalry units in the end. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of that is uh, there's still some regrouping issues with the archers. I, I know Tristan is, <laughs> is not happy about that when he's watching games, but a lot of it is also these guys have gotten so good over the past couple of years that scouts uh, allow for a little bit more versatility. 
and you can kind of see what your opponent is doing. If you're going scouts, you can run around their units, and then you can adapt to that. Hera does it especially well. All these guys um, do well with that approach, too, especially guys like Tato, uh, one of the masterminds of AoE 2. He really loves to adapt to all of the openings from his opponent. Identical Fetal Age timings between these two players. One minute apiece to go, looking for those barracks to be dropped. That's the one that goes down for Tato. Two villagers working away. They'll get it up just in that's time for the Fetal Age. That's a pretty rough gold for yeah, Tato. Yeah, it is. Like, that's his main gold right there. He doesn't have any wood lines really close, and we zoom out a little bit here. His, also, his secondary gold is pretty rough. His stones are rough. Where is the last gold for him? It's all the way on the... In the back there, okay, that's decent, but you still have to get the wall set up to go there, and he hasn't even spotted it yet. So, man, Tato will need to have army pressure on the field to make sure that his gold supply is safe. On the other side, said, Mr. The Yo, little golds bit are kind of, of outside as well, though. Look mm -hmm. at this here for Yo. Oh, that's ugly. Yeah, that's better. That's that, better that, that's for definitely sure. Better. Definitely defensible on a hill, so Yo has options. The stable coming down for him, and I like walling already around the berries to keep that safe. We have the stable up for Tato as well. Spearman on the field to deal with the scouts of the opponent. Yeah, Vietnamese, the most played Arabia Civ of NAC5 with a record of 7-4. and four. One of the losses is to Franks, however, and I think that just speaks to the way that the Franks can kind of snowball the cavalry, the scouts into knights, and you know what's coming, but you just can't stop it some of the times as we see the scout now from Tato giving him a little bit of vision. He's pushing out with the spearman behind. Yo is trying to wall to that gold. He's identified that as a weakness in his base. He's going to have a spearman sitting there in defense. Tato will have the scouts following up, but with spear defense, it's going to be really, really rough um, for Tato to find any damage. More scouts from Mr. Yo going to the north now. He's going to try and avoid just defending with his scouts. He's going to apply pressure to Tato's base. As Tato now comes in, maybe with the micro, you might be able to snipe a weak villager, but it feels like, yo, he's got this locked down. Spearman will push away. Yeah, Dash's audio is dying, so I'll, we're, we're going to figure this one out, and uh, I'm going to carry this one through for the time being until we can get that all sorted. So we've got scouts now in the back of Yo's um, economy and then the back of Tato's economy too. But both players being super safe. Love the walls around the berries there from Tato, keeping his villagers secure and he doesn't need spearman numbers to protect at the side. He's also going for an archer range, extending outwards towards that goal. Continues the scout production because he knows there's no amount of early walling that can fully secure that gold position. He's going to need army on the field, army pressuring his opponent in order to keep himself safe. Yo now goes out to the gold. He's getting his farms up around the TC. Both players, obviously, with that farm upgrade, and they're just looking to play a little bit defensively, lock down their map, and then they'll make a decision as to whether they can push forward and look for damage. Tato trying to deny the walls. Yo up to the task. So many spearmen are ready for him. Five spearmen, a sixth one on the way. Only three spearmen for Tato, and he's adding in the archers. Yo, I believe spotted that range, though. Moment of truth. Am I back? You're back. Let's go. I'm back, baby. Taking a look at uh, Yo with the three scouts forward. Has to get chased away by the spear. Still trying to get those walls up, and I think with enough spearmen in defense, we'll be able to do so effectively. So a very safe base now at this p at this point here for Mr. Yo in the game. Tato's still struggling, I think, to figure out how he's going to keep his more well defended. Well, I think Tato just has to go for army here, right? Yo's gold is just a little bit closer. He's gone for the archer range and wheelbarrow coming in early, which with the Vietnamese is extremely viable. I think you save like 1.5 villagers against another Civ um, by researching wheelbarrow 100% faster, which is beautiful. Yo dives in, he sees the spearman, he now dives out. But Tato, keeping the pressure forward, is keeping his gold safe at home. Both players just kind of thinking, getting their farm set up, going to the castle age, and then we'll really see what unit they decide to uh Fletching invest start here for Tato though. So we talked about it for the Frank player, you know, what's gonna motivate them to get onto some ranged units. Mm -hmm. And while the archery range was scouted a while ago for Mr. Yo, the Fletching could catch him off guard. Although I say that and he clicks Fletching for himself. <laughs> yeah, he should realize he scouted that archer range pretty early, right? And Tato is just doing this because the map setup was not good for him. 
Still good eco setup for both. The KD is is an incredible one to nothing. <laughs> yeah, and I think that might have been a Spearman before. Oh geez, this is a really stalemated game, but super active game at the same time. Both players moving military in all parts of the map, but just not choosing to engage yet. I like Yo's position though, right? I mean, he's he's getting into the unit that he wants in terms of a second archery range up onto the field. Hasn't taken much damage. He'll be happy to find his way to the Castle Age and start Cav Archer production overall to match mobility for mobility, but having the ability to use that range and ultimately win out on fights. Spearman closing the gap, almost found a good set of pokes onto the scouts, but Tato responds in kind and pulls his away. Great micro. I wonder if Tato gets, uh, I wonder if he wants to eliminate the archers early from Yo or if he wants to keep his mass up. Because sometimes if you're playing the cavalry sieve, you don't want to be going into these archers early, right? You, you want to take out the archers of your opponent with your own and you don't mind losing the army so that you don't have to invest into like the crossbow upgrade. Mm -hmm. However, he doesn't really have the numbers at the moment, so he will need to keep adding in those archers. And we might see a situation where he's forced to play like crossbow to counter the units from Yo in the Castle Age. And because he already has that number, which is not extremely comfortable for the Franks, you want to get into Knights as soon as you can. Right, both players trying to navigate the hills as well in these uh, Feudal Age range battles as well, trying to whittle down the numbers of the opponent, taking a look back at the food count. And it's Tato yeah. is the one who gets to the Castle Age first. Yeah, Yo has wheelbarrow. Remember that when you're looking at the villager discrepancy here. He's one villager behind. Does have that additional co economic upgrade, though, and he's got more resources gathered overall. But Tato will have the timing. He still has eight archers, so it's definitely a situation where you want to go for that crossbow upgrade. And if he gets knights in front, crossbow knight can be a really, really solid composition. He's, even adding, in, he's even adding in a second one. So he will be playing into the crossbows to hold this middle position. And Yo will be going for that armor upgrade. He also clicks up to the castle age. Yeah, second range, but first armor upgrade for the cavalry. I mean, he's kept, he's done a great job of keeping these five scouts alive and healthy, right? A lot of damage could be found, and he can put these to it's great only three use. to four KD. Like, I know. So much movement, so much activity, a lot of military production, absolutely nothing happening. It's a beautiful dance. It's a beautiful dance. Again, just navigating these hills and what a map we have generated here on Arabia where there are these rolling hills between the two bases. Here you go. You ask for some more blood and some more blood will be spilt as two spearmen go down to the archers of Tato. Yeah, nice control there over the middle and he's just going to extend that when he gets to Castle Age a little bit sooner. I think Yo will know that Tato is up. He was probably monitoring the score and he saw that drop come in as the score was speaking about it flipping back and forth between the two of them. Archer number for Yo looking pretty solid. 14 archers, 13 archers for Tato. The Vietnamese are going to have the advantage because they have more HP on their archer units. So Tato will need to be careful. He's going to try and take advantage of Bodkin and Crossbow, which will provide him with extra attack and extra range. He's also going for University quickly. He's going to go Ballistics? Yeah, this is... Um, this is one way you can play Franks. Unconventional for sure. approach. I mean, I've, we've seen it before, but it's not common, that's for sure. Yeah, but I like it, right? Could catch Yo off guard. I mean, obviously, Yo has seen the numbers, so he has to expect that Crossbow and Bodkin is coming in. And he sees the second one to reach the Castle Age, evacuates the hill, has to concede this ground, still finds good damage back on the scouts. But at this point, Yo stuck in his base, Tata with the initiative. Ballistics 45 seconds away. That could be very dangerous for Vil Snipes. Take a look at those wood lines and track those crossbows as best you can. Yeah, and Ta Tato is in a position where he's just sitting on those hills in front of Yo's base. He can pressure the farms, right? So really, really difficult for Yo to find an angle that is, uh, is great for him to approach from. Also, Yo might be surprised that Tato commits onto ballistics. It's a standard play for Vietnamese with two ranges to go ballistics, but Franks usually want those crossbows only for the beginning part of the game, and then they're transitioning into something else. So as Yo loses these units, he's going to know for sure yeah, that Tato has ballistics, and he might be surprised. Bit of a risky move to move out here. Again, when you were second to the Castle Age, and look at this positioning here from Tato, just taking three of his crossbows and rotating them around to harass that wood line. We do have both players extending to a second TC, so it's not all in 
and military for either player. In Yo the still end. doesn't realize he has ballistics, I think. He, he's not, like, dodging. He's just running away, tanking the shots. But he does take the fight here as ballistics comes in for him. And the beautiful dance begins between the two of these guys. I, I would give the slight advantage to Tato. But Mr. Yo giving a good account of himself. There's still a raid on that wood line there that Yo has cleared up. Yeah, hill advantage, though, for Yo, right? Mm -hmm. He was and a little HP. bit higher up and HP advantage, so he wins out in the crossbow v crossbow battle, but the scouts there that Tato managed to keep alive all throughout the Feudal Age might equalize this in the end. Yo still doing his best to micro it back onto the hill, and in fact may keep a few of these alive. I mean, that's just a great engagement for Mr. Yo. Impressive. And now Tato is in a really rough spot where he's still adding archers. And now he's forced to add skirms, and Mr. Yo is like, I do this thing better than you. I'm perfectly satisfied with that. I just took map control. I'm even so satisfied, I'm going to throw away the rest of my archers <laughs> I don't into need your these. army. I'm busy with other things. <laughs> Sorry. I don't need these. But I come now I come back to Tato's base layout, and this could really bite him in the long run, right? Mm -hmm. Just doesn't have the safety, and it's and it's not a slight on Tato. It's a, it's a virtue of the map itself, and you can see him now trying to wall up around that goal just to keep it safe from these melee units that come streaming in. A couple of scouts and a knight on the field here for Mr. Yo. More crossbows coming forward. Ballistic still for both players, so the micro will be important. But having to evacuate the gold position and back to the TC, this is getting dangerous here for Tato as he tries to jump to a third TC on that secondary gold. Yeah, that town center is like the only place he can put it to. Like you said, there's a lot of hills on this map. Mm -hmm. You can't place town centers on hills, so you really, really got to find a spot. It's far away from the, the wood line there because it's the only flat area. It will prevent Yo from pushing in on that side, but Yo wants to go right through the center of Tato's base. He's got that siege workshop coming up in the center. He's got villagers now on stone, so definitely thinking about a follow-up castle, maybe on one of those forward hills. Mm -hmm. And he's also getting a third town center place, so he's going to be competitive with the economy from Tato. Look at the total res collected right now. It's still ahead for Yo, and a big part of that is the early wheelbarrow, courtesy of the Vietnamese. Yeah, he's also first to the monks. Like you said, first to the siege workshop. We've got our Frank player stuck on crossbow and skirmisher of all things in the end. Only 11 on food, light years away from getting back into cavalry if that's the switch he eventually wants to make. So just an incredibly tough position here for Tato to navigate his way out of. He's committing onto the range units though. He knows that it's gonna be a hard switch to go into cavalry from this point. Uh, maybe now that he sees that siege workshop, he'll make that switch at some point, but it's likely that he's just trying to get his farm set up. He's trying to um, get his eco rolling, and then when he's comfortable, he will add the extra stable. Sees that Manganel needs to back away. Mr. Yo is coming through the middle. Mr. Yo also has a monk on the field, so might be thinking about grabbing the relics. We see one coming back right now. Another one in that center area. Yo is extending his control. He's playing the macro game and things look pretty good for him. And Tato didn't notice this raid. One villager down. Yeah, surprised a bit at the back of his base. Responds after the first villager goes down, though. Won't lose too much in the end. Getting a siege workshop up of his own after he scouted out the one of his opponent to make sure that he has some kind of defense to mount against the mangonels that are now rolling forward. Continued investment, though, into range units with the second archer armor here for our Frank player. This is just classic Mr. Yo. Adds the siege workshop late. Just keeps a constant... Um, stream of units coming forward. He's got some units at the back. He's got some units at the side. He's got a mangonel at the front. He's going to add in a knight. He's going to add in another mangonel. And he's just going to keep the attention of Tato all around his base. I think Tato and I were talking about um, Yo's approach to the game, and we both agreed that he's so good at knowing exactly where his opponent is paying attention to. And if you know where your opponent's paying attention to, you can attack them where they're not paying attention. So it's some sort of Sun Tzu approach, but Tato doesn't fall for it at the back there. He clears up that army. There's one headache gone. Yeah, great find for him there to lessen the numbers of the military of his opponent. And just like that, he's sporting twice as many military mm -hmm. units. So this could be an opportunity for Tato to find his way back into the game, get some breathing room, and make the transition onto the unit that he eventually wants to play. That's, that's the key for me here, is when does Tato manage to get himself out of the skirms and crossbows and back onto knights? It's an uphill fight, though. Literally. 
uphill fight yep. on every single angle, right? Yo is just comfortably sitting on that hill. Tato, you need to be careful, my friend. You cannot patrol in like that yeah. against Mr. Yo when you know he's got the mangonels. From Tato's point of view, two he mangonels. can definitely see both of these mangonels. He's got a defensive one of his own, but unless he gets the greatest shots of all time, he's not going to be able to deny that castle. And Mr. Yo with that castle up can start thinking about maybe Imperial Age. Tato's resources looking pretty solid too, but he doesn't have stone. No stone. No stone. 33 on wood at the moment, floating quite a bit. But like you say, no opportunity to respond to the castle just yet. He realizes, drops the mining camp, but it'll be a while until he can match the castle for castle. Yo, though, needs to get his gold count up if he does want to hit Ooh. the Imperial Age. But either way, he's found a great forward position. Here we go with the attempted snipe on the Mangonels. Doesn't find it, does nice. Tato, and a great response from Yo to pick it off. That's always so frustrating. Your Tato, you attack round behind because you think Yo is going to move his Mangonels, and then he just doesn't touch him. <laughs> And he avoids the shots anyway. He gets another Mangonel there. The splits from Tato. The double split to avoid the shots. Tries to split away from that one. Doesn't make it work fully. But Ooh. still, Tato is trying to hold on to this position at the front of his base. And he is the first player to click up to the Imperial Age with 90 villagers. On the other side, 90 villagers from Mr. Yo as he starts adding in Rattans. What an even matchup we have here. The only difference right now... Well, for Mr. Yo, forward position on the gold from Tato. For Tato, it's going to be Imperial Age timing, and he's going to try and push this back with the chemistry upgrade and the Bombard cannons because he doesn't have that stone supply just yet. He won't have the castle up in time, maybe. I mean, potentially he could with 11 on stone, Frank Castles. Yeah. Mm, he's uh, by the time Imp comes in, he should be able to get there. Yeah, but where's it going to be? It's not going to be on that stone, probably. Uh, yeah, that's a tough call. Well, there was the hill right in front of that stone. If mm. he has the military to support it, and since Yo rotated to the northern side, that might be the permission that Tato needs to get uh, some you know, semblance of a hill position for his castle. He is finally dropping those stables, and we saw the second armor upgrade come in as well for the cavalry units. So while he is taking some more pressure here on the northern side, he'll be the first to the Imperial Age, first to that next set of techs, and might have his opportunity to strike. Yeah, the cavalry upgrades in for Tato, but none on the field. Absolutely nothing on the field. He got the second armor upgrade, no knights, no light cab, nothing. He's adding in the stables now. Still on the stone there. It is amazing to me that the Eco KD is still one to one. <laughs> And it's That's 30 actually. to 30 military. The villagers are 103 to 100. The overall KD is 39 to 39. The population discrepancy is four. This is ridiculous. That's Such disgusting. high level play out of these two players here. We do have four relics at home though for Mr. Yo as well. So through all of this, he's had great focus on that extra uh, tool to utilize in the long run in terms of gold generation. Has a great hill position for himself. So still very much the initiative and even looking to establish another forward castle to give him a launching point for an attack. Diving underneath the TC with the Knights is Yo. He will find the snipe onto the Mangonel at the cost of those Knights' lives. Eco KD doubles. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, but I think we might we might be going uh, for quite a few more here in a couple seconds as Tato comes in with a sneaky little counter raid that could distract Mr. Yo. He's got that castle up, like you said, and it's at the front of his base. He's an Imperial Age first, but he doesn't have the hills. Now, it's worth pointing out that Vietnamese have some of the worst castles in the game. They get hoardings, but they don't get masonry or architecture. Mm -hmm. So if you're involved in a trebuchet or bomber cannon war with the castles, it's, it's really not the optimal sieve for that. No, and I think that's why it's important, actually, that he doubled down with two castle mm -hmm. positions, right? He can catch up in treb numbers if needed. He has a secondary castle position to fall back to if he's unlucky enough to lose his first. Again, it's Tato with the Imperial Age Initiative. Cavalier two seconds from completing. Chemistry on the way as well Only to three. start that Bombard Cannon production. But yeah, it just doesn't have the numbers. Trebuchet now working away. Yo should probably give up that castle. I think if you even if you're pulling villagers to repair that, they're going to be way too vulnerable. You can see him trying to save the Mangonel over on this side as Tato takes it out with a Cavalier. Tiger trying to get involved in the fray, not able to really do anything. The Elite Rathen Archer upgrade is coming in in that castle. Fortunately, it's quite a quick upgrade because as soon as that's in, that castle is going to be gone. Yeah, castle will go down. Upgrade will complete, though. First trebuchet on the field here 
for Yo at his secondary castle position. Eco Ooh. KD, 2-2. Two, two. Conversion <laughs> comes through. Yeah, yeah. 2-2, two, two, Eco climbing. KD. Oh my goodness, Magano shot from Mr. Yo comes in, and he gets a good one there. Remember, his archers have more HP. Rathens actually aren't that bad against Skirmisher. Final armor upgrade coming in, so these things are tanky. And Mr. Yo will continue to sit at the back of the base as we see the Eco KD slowly start to climb here in favor of Tato. He's got that nice little counter raid, but how is he going to hold this forward position is the question. Yeah. The military numbers there for Tato not looking great. He's still trying to mass the Cavalier. Does manage to take out a trebuchet from Yo, which is great. And he finally manages to clear this archer army from behind his base. Yeah, both players able to clear up the raids that were streaming into the back of their base is going to allow them to put their focus back onto these castle positions. Bombard on the field, though, here for Tato. Tato targeting the trebs of Mr. Yo before he, he rolls shots. 40. It's both shots, but the repairs are there. He's going to hit him again. From the He's going to hit him. They come in batches. Watch. Oh. He, it, like, oh. Yo repaired enough to tank one shot. Oh my goodness. And he gets hit by two. The hit rate on those was actually insane. I, I've noticed they go in cycles. Th this is my theory. This okay. is my head cannon. That the treb shots go in cycles. Sometimes you miss 50 in a row. And then other times, you're hitting like 80% of the time. I think there's an RNG factor there, there Dash. It's the, ga it's it the gambler's mentality. Conspiracy. He was due. He was due. Either way, more trebuchets on the field here for Tato than for Yo. Weaker castles in the end for Yo, then Tato, and the Bombard Cannon as well, with the Cavalier numbers climbing. I think Tato's, he has the front yeah. line he needs to roll forward and remove this castle position. We do have Halberdiers coming forward just now as a response to this Cavalier overall, and great conversions come through in the end, but the Trebuchet, not long for this world, it goes down in the end. Yeah, and Tato's got this position. He needs to roll his Trebs forward a little bit. Halb, Rat and Archer will be difficult for Tato to deal with, but he's done a phenomenal job against the control that Yo had in the center. He played range units against range units, Franks versus Vietnamese. Five archery range. He got his eco up, he got the castle up, he got the cavalier coming out, and he's got access to that gold once again. Tato is in a position here to utilize his mobility. Maybe if he can get some good raids on Yo, he might be able to push him back, but Yo is slowly building the brutal army of elite Rathan archers, Halbadir in front. It's going to be tough for Tato. Yeah, Frank Skirms, not so great in the Imperial Age, but it might be your only answer to the growing number of Halbadirs and Rathan archers there on the side of Yo. Crop rotation. Wow, well, we're in Crop for a long Crop rotation, one. And we got two, two man, man saw. saw. <laughs> I mean. We're committing. We're, Yo is definitely committing to this game, and we'll see you in two hours when this game is complete. It's a wood game, Dash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you hydrated. If he gets, <laughs> if he gets paper money talking. right now, yeah, if he gets paper money right now, we know Yo's planning for the long term. Now, this is how I want to see Tato use the Cavalier, though. They're sitting up in the north, but it looks like he was thinking about looping them around the back and trying to look for some raids. I think you need to make it messy. Mm -hmm. Again, in the end, you're the one who has the mobility advantage since the Vietnamese player opted for the Rat and Archers as opposed to Cav Archers. He's diving underneath the castle to look for the snipes onto the Bombard Cannon. Great shots, are. though, in return, though, from Tato. In the end, I think both Bombards go down, but at the cost of, what, 15, 20 Rat and Archers? Uh, I think he lost like 11 there. I think that's worth it, honestly, because that completely stalls out the momentum from Tato. Tato now getting Siege Engineers, Conscriptions. It's worth pointing out that Yo is still controlling that neutral gold in the north, and Yo has five relics. So he's lamed this with the houses. Tato has 30 on gold right now. He's got 1,200 in the bank. But he needs gold long term, especially if he wants to go into something like Paladin or more Bombard Cannons, right? It's going to be really, really difficult for him to find the access to gold that he needs. Yo is playing that long game. We saw it from crop rotation, two-man saw. He's just going to starve out Tato. As Paladin. Paladin is on the way. This needs to be a singular push for Tato. He, he, he needs to build up a sizable force of Paladin and then just overwhelm Mr. Yo in the center. Yeah, really solid raids here on the left-hand side. It's even forcing a castle drop out of Yo on the hill. We do have Halberdiers responding to the Cavalier and we'll be able to clean that up eventually. But like you say, Paladin can pack a major punch. Mm -hmm. The thing for me is the numbers. Only eight on the field in total at the moment, three in the queue. We need to see that climb and climb rapidly to make use of the tech when it comes in. Oh, man. I, how many Paladin do you go forward with? It feels like you're going to need 25, 20. I was gonna 30. Say, yeah, 20 I mean, Siege Engineers is huge here for Tato. He, he needs like four Trebs, like 30 Paladin, 
and then you just completely overwhelm everything. The halberdiers from Vietnamese are okay. He has all the infantry armor upgrades, but he doesn't get blast furnace for those as the trep shots come in and they hit the bombard cannon. They miss the trebuchets. They're in the missing phase right now, Dash. Yeah, that's yeah. Wait till they Wait cycle. Wait till the through cycle everybody. rolls over again. Oh, hey, they've cycled. Castle they've cycled. dies. Castle dies on the hill though for the Frank player. Paladin, still got five seconds five still seconds Paladin. Away. This may be a 16. surprise here for Yo. How does he respond when they come in? The tech has just been revealed. I think Tapto needs to put it to use before too many Halberdier numbers grow. Paladin are in, but is it enough is the question. The Halberdiers need to be there for Mr. Yo. He's got six barracks producing them right now. So many resources in the bank for him. He doesn't have the numbers at this fight currently, though. Repairs on that Treb. Crucial. He does pick off the Cavalier, but not before the Trebuchet goes down to the shot of a Bombard Cannon. Still solid Paladin numbers rolling forward. Tato needs to use this initiative to put pressure on that castle, though. In the end, he's taken the hill. He's looking for the fight. Lots of damage to come through from these Paladin, and Yo is going to back up. Look to tuck these Ratten Archers into that little corner, get the best position he can, take the hill, and I think this is overall going to be good for Tato in the end. Look at these numbers. Look at the Paladins continue to stream forward, and yes, while they aren't the strongest of skirmishers, they are still a counter unit to everything that Yo is creating. He doesn't have the Siege, though. He lost the Trebs, right? You, like I said, you need four Trebs, even with Siege Engineers. You need that Siege stack to really complement the Paladin front or research that you went for that was so expensive. And now we look at the gold count. Yo is castling that gold. He's like, I know you're on a timer. I 100% know you're on a timer. I've seen your golds. I've scouted the entire map. I have five relics. You're not going anywhere, buddy. Fortunately, Tato has been using that market. and He's getting good prices, but that is a very limited supply. And right now, with only 21 Paladin and one in the queue, four on gold, it is not looking like a good long-term um, situation for Tato. Yeah, re-establishing a castle position here, though. Cheaper castles for the Frank player allows Tato to get those back down. He rolls forward once again, looking for damage. He's got two Bombard Cannons and a Trebuchet targeting that castle. Low stone count here for Yo, but tons of gold in the bank. He could utilize the market just as well to get the stone count up and continue with the repairs. Also, hoardings did come in, so while Vietnamese don't have great castles, he's at least increased its strength by just a bit. Like, look at Yo's, look at Yo's resources. He's so comfortable here. He's got, maybe it should need a few more units in the queue as he now gets guilds and realizes this is gonna go quite a bit longer. The castle's still firing away on those skirmishers. I'd love to see how many kills Zero that Zero on has. gold, oh no goodness. gold in the bank here for the Frank player. Any paladins that have been created are the final paladins that can be created unless there's heavy market use or more gold to be found here by Tato. Feels like a last ditch effort. One final push is all he has left in him to try and wrestle this game away from Mr. Yo, but the numbers are there. It's pop cap for the Vietnamese player. Tato trying to get up to that 200 number. He does have 64 military units on the field, and they are powerful units at that. A solid reposition on the Paladin behind the Ratten Archers. They're going to do big damage, but they still have to be able to roll forward Yo and take this, this castle fight. out. Even like, still, Yo looks good, and the Halberdiers stream in to remove the Paladin. No more gold units on the field, and he took the fight before Blast Furnace finished. Yeah, like that, Yo takes this fight all day. He's fine with that fight. Tato flanked him, and Yo was like, all right, sure, fine, I'll take it. And Tato is completely out of gold. He calls the GG a strategic map control victory there for Mr. Yo. Ever since the beginning, when Tato kind of got pushed off of the front of Mr. Yo's base, and they took that fight in the south with the crossbows in early Castle Age, Yo controlled everything there. And Tato was constantly responding. Even with the faster Imperial Age, he was not able to fully push it back. He didn't get enough Paladin set up. Yo was always on the neutral golds. Yo got the five relics. Just amazing gameplay from Mr. Yo. Tato's going to have to pick a map and uh, get another win. Come back from that. Yeah, it felt like such a painful game uh, for Tato to navigate as the Frank player. Again, spending the majority of it on a unit composition that Franks almost never want to find their way into, right? In crossbows and skirmishers, a very tough map to defend. And then, as you say, Yo doing all of the little things mm -hmm. right. Right? Through all of that, getting out to the relics, getting solid castle positions, controlling more gold. Uh, and in the end, he kind of cruises to victory once again. Yeah, and we have to question, like, was the archers the play? Should Tato have played more mobility? Could Did he feel like he could play mobility? Did he need to just control those hills? Maybe it's in response to that. Hello, viewing party. What's up, everybody? Look at that. I love to see a filled room. 
of beautiful people enjoying Age of Empires on a Saturday. Yeah, cheers. I'll be there later. Yeah, we Same will. with Dash. I'm sorry if I didn't say hi to you when I left the hotel this morning, but I, <laughs> I needed to get to the venue, and I knew if I stopped. <laughs> right. Then you may never get out. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, so Yo is really, really thinking there. Tato he took a little bit of a break. He'll be back in the room in a second. Yeah, onus on Tato, though, to choose where we go next with six maps remaining in the pool. Down by one point in this best of nine. Again, we got a marathon ahead of us. I, you know, I looked at the history between these two players as the raids are now coming in from our, uh, from our affiliated channels, as we could call them. I like that. Yeah, James Dash and Twitch.tv. <laughs> there you go. Nice it's, plug. Thanks, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. bro. If you want to follow Dash, <laughs> that's where you can find him. Welcome, Raiders. Um, I was looking at the matchups, and out of the last seven times they've played, Yo is 6-1. and one. Yo has an overall winning percentage against Tato. The best of 20, I must mention, though, the best of 21 they played, uh, 11 to 10. Wow. <laughs> so Well, so again, if that doesn't tell you, yeah, the margins we're playing on here in this series. But it also has to be recognized the way that Yo levels up throughout mm -hmm. tournaments. It just never ceases to amaze me that through, like, day one, day two, we can all sit there and go, oh, no, like... Is Yo going to, like, peter no, out? No, no, Is he I'm just going to, you know, and then boom. Yeah. Something, a little switch flips in his head and semifinals. I'm so done betting against Yo getting <laughs> to the semifinals. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's never, that's not, that's just not a good bet. Yo will always make top four. Viper mentioned it this morning. He's like, when's the last time Yo wasn't in a top four? That with a major event. It's, it's crazy. Fine. And yeah, we got a little bit of a reasoning, a little bit of an insight into why that is. Yo doesn't coming into the tournaments, doesn't practice a whole ton, doesn't prepare a lot of strategies. He's always playing Age of Empires, but not really the settings mm -hmm. that are involved in these tournaments. And then he gets there. And if you listen to other players, he steals all our strats. <laughs> like, he takes all of our strats. I like to think of it as he's absorbing yeah, the hey, strategies. Look, but work smarter, not harder, bro. Yeah, exactly. All right? All right. Someone else can figure it out. Yo's been around the block a time or two here in Age of Empires. So, yeah, he'll uh, happily let someone else do the work and borrow from them later. Mm -hmm. But, again, don't conflate the idea that he, quote-unquote, doesn't practice as much with the fact that he doesn't play Oh, he's that playing much. all This the man time. invests so many hours individually. Age of Empires 2. And so that's, I think, part of why he can see a strategy played out by somebody mm -hmm. else and quickly adapt to it. Yep. Quickly pick it up for himself and utilize it to great effect. So Tato's back here. We're getting ready for game four. Where does Tato go? We've played one of his home maps, Desert Void. We've played one of Yo's home maps. So far, they've gone to uh, the defending player. And we still have African Reed Beds, Langanati, and Rocky Forest here for Tato. The sieves are still kind of uh, a, a question mark here for me because so many of the good ones were banned early by the random sieve bans. It, it makes the it makes the mind game so much mm -hmm. more difficult, mm -hmm. right? There's a few there's a few sieves that you still kind of want to immediately, you know, uh, call out like Malians, Langanati, right? It's so often used there. Malay on Copenhagen potentially, right? Could be really really good or like that. Romans on Rocky Forest could be great. Yeah. But Gajara's also potential there. Gajara's on outcrop, too. We'll see. Here we are in Copenhagen. Yo, we'll be hoping for a different result. Um, and <laughs> Vodka immediately goes to the king for Mr. Yo. He's like, I'm not going to miss it again. I missed it once. And that's enough. And... Yo puts it in the tower. I love it. He's not. I love it, man. This is so great. He's not even going to tempt fate this time around. He has an advantage in the series. He's not looking to throw it away with a random king death into a castle. But away we go on to Copenhagen. It is Yo taking his first pick Koreans to this map while Tato will reach for the Malay. He doesn't need the king. And he said it yesterday, too. He said he was really nervous going into game two. Yesterday, after he lost that king, he couldn't believe it happened. And um, he he was like, I don't even, why am I scouting with the king? He's like, you know, I don't even need the king to scout. I can get no. all the information with my own scout. It's fine. The resources are generally in the same place every single time. I, I'm not going to use this thing. I'm not going to take that risk again. And that's a good le learning experience for him. Once again, playing as the Koreans. Tato playing as the Malay. The Malay having the faster uptime here. 
really, really helps them, right? You're going to be ahead in villagers because your TC spends more time creating vills, less time going up. Um, Karambits are very cheap and very fast to produce. Mobile unit. The fish traps, if you take control of this top water, getting a fish boom set up there is absolutely ridiculous. Yep. Um, and that's why Yo is going up so quickly to the feudal age here with Koreans. He wants to win that top water. Yeah, you can see the investment into a quick feudal age also bear out in the eco numbers, right? Already 20 to 16 in favor of Tato. So if Yo doesn't find damage early, that'll be a very, very nice situation for Tato overall. Can't be understated as well with Malay because of those faster uptimes. Generally do create an eco advantage regardless, just by virtue of getting to produce villagers mm -hmm. again that much quicker. You know those scenes in movies where they shut the door and then they close like 15 locks behind it? <laughs> That's the <laughs> image I got when Yo Garrison that king. Like, just, just shut it, <laughs> and then we got the bolt lock, and then we got, yeah, yeah. exactly. He nails it closed. <laughs> He's like, this thing is never leaving. Two by fours all over the place. It is so comfortable in there. All you right. have no idea. Let's see here. It's galley production immediately here for the Korean player out of two docks and two dock galley production for the Malay as well. So hyper focus onto the water here in just a moment as those two militaries start to collide. Okay, so Yo will go for the water pressure. Galleys, of course, for def uh, Tato. He's got defender's advantage, though, so by the time Yo gets there, he's already going to have his production up. And then the two extra galleys from Yo will take some time, and that's the advantage you have as the defending player trying to protect your fish from the aggressor, who might have been up a little bit earlier, but he's got all that map to sail across. The first meeting will be happening here, and the dancing shall begin. Now, if we're talking about navies, right, the Malay don't really have anything special with their navy other than the uptime and maybe, like, the dock line of sight. Obviously, harbors later is great, but right. that's out of mind right now. Koreans are saving wood on their navy, so that's a really, really beneficial bonus to have. However, they do not have access to demolition ships at all. Oh. They only have turtles, which we will not... Will we, we see a turtle I, here? No, I don't think so. Are we on turtle watch? No. Oh. I'm taking this off at turtle watch. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a stretch too far in the end. Although, I'd be happy to be surprised. Let me just say that. Four fire gal... Or not fire guys. Four galleys apiece here for either player. Two more on the way. Fletching coming in here for Mr. Yo. So the first one to go for that, if Tato recognizes, he'll want to turn tail, run, and get back into a defensive position. Here we have the first of the engagements. This could be dangerous for Tato if he doesn't respond. Now getting chased away, and more damage found here for Yo overall. And both of these guys were around in 2015, 2016, 17, where it was before fire galleys and demo rafts were a thing. All you would do on water maps is dance with galleys. A lot less lag now than there used to be. Um, feels like both of them should be able to dance around without losing too many units, unless there's a misclick involved. As we see Yo getting the initial hits, but Tato with defender's advantage. Numbers advantage. Should be too. having the numbers advantage and should be able to push this back. Yeah, it matches the fletching, and now it's six galleys to five overall. So the Malay player with proper micro should end up taking a lead. Two more galleys out onto the field, needs to group those up, and that'll give Tato the permission to roll forward. But in the end, it's actually Yo who finds the first snipe in the galley micro. One nothing, KD. Really heating up. Pack it up, boys. It's over. It's over. <laughs> uh, look at the resources collected, though. Again, just something we have to come back to. So the onus really is on Yo to find damage. Otherwise, that will continue to build in favor of Tato overall, already having a 600 resource advantage in this game. Yeah, that's massive advantage there for Tato. And he's going to go up to the next stage faster. So he's going to be able to boom up with additional TCs. We see three fishing ships versus two. Uh, as Yo continues to push forward here, once again, I don't see either player extending for that bottom pond. Maybe that's the, oh, that's the scout there from Tato. We've got a Spearman laming the wow. deer, which is a nice touch, because that's usually where you want to go for your town center. Exactly. Yeah, those uh, those corner wood lines yeah. is usually the first uh, town center position when you reach outside your walls. Of course, both players in feudal, so no opportunity to do that that just yet, but great heads up play by Tato thinking about the long term. Once again, 1-1 one, one KD. Big, huge engagements here on the water. It's gonna go from like one unit lost in 10 minutes to suddenly 10 units lost in 10 seconds. Yep. As soon as someone has a significant advantage to the next stage or a positional advantage, they will just push in 
All the Navy will be gone. Yo wants to avoid letting Tato get full access to that water at the top. Tato wants the access for the fish traps. So it feels like both players will be investing into this water battle for the foreseeable future. Yeah, Tata with a big numbers advantage, though, currently. It's 11 to 9 overall, and so as you mentioned, there's the opportunity to snowball out of control if he starts to find the proper hits onto some of those weak galleys and push through to eliminate the fish. Yo trying to mount the defense. Ends up losing one. And both players are going to click up around the same time, but Tata will be there significantly faster. So Tata goes up to Castle H here shortly. Yo should click up soon once Loom is in. Lesser numbers for Yo, but he's done better on water. Look at that. Now the KD, 3-1, to one, still keeping those fishing ships alive. Loom coming in for Mr. Yo. Castle Age clicked here for Tato, so a minute and 20 seconds till that comes in. Can invest that either into galleys to make sure that he wins the water or just immediately invest into the eco and the expansions. I think Yo lost either... Yo lost his spearman at the bottom there. I think he was trying to scout around, yeah. Straight up lost a unit, or maybe it was Tato lost his scout. Okay, Tato lost his scout, and then Yo lost the spearman. He's coming out with a villager to that pond in the in the south. However, Tato still with a great position here, pushing in towards Yo's docks. He's going to be Castle Age a lot faster than Mr. Yo, as we see the villager take a fight against the spearman, which he's going to handily win. But Tato will have the knowledge that Yo is attempting to go for the dock in the south, still dancing around with the galleys. Yo should realize, though, that it's probably not going to happen as far as controlling this water when he sees that Castle Age timing from Tato. Yeah, Castle in, Bodkin's the first click. Again, it's Yo being the only player to move out to the Southern Pond as of yet. Another Spearman rolling forward from Tato to make sure he scouts that position out. Might even take the fight, but the walls come up nice just walls. in time. Nice walls. Now Tato's going to feel a little bit of pressure to come down to that, uh, that other pond because he knows Yo is already there. You want the the dock up down there before there's Navy on the field. However, at the top, significantly better positioning here for Tato. As Yo is in the corner, there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide, and he can't even pop out any demos because he doesn't have access to them. He can't go War Galley because he's not Castle Age yet, but he's still holding on. Mr. Yo at the edge of the earth at the ice wall dash. Holding on for dear life he is, but War Galley 15 seconds away from being completed for the Malay player. Castle Age comes in, Fire Galley's in the queue here for Yo. That's going to be his response to the galley pressure that he's receiving. Receiving. Tato going for three TCs back at home while all of this happens to further extend his eco advantage. Yeah, yo, you can't dance your way out of this one. Nah, this Sorry, is Tato. A and also, Tato, there's no need to dance. It. Just click. Just click it. Yeah, that's a patrol. Get close, clear these up before the fires come out, and then you can deal with those one by one if you're still trying to snipe these galleys while there's fires on. You just get in there. <laughs> So take a look at the queues at the top. Now the Tanto will likely win, or rather guaranteed to clean this up in the northern pond. I would expect to see some more fishing ships in the queue. Now all that said, Yo has extended himself to the southern part of the map, so might look to invest into fishing economy there to catch back up. I want to see how much Tato goes for on the water in the north, right? Because I, I think there was a matchup with, I, I can't remember which player it was, maybe Leary, where he won. He invested so much to win the water and then he didn't make a single fishing ship after that, right? Mm -hmm. With the Malay, which you think, you know, why why bother adding farms if you have excess wood, if you have a safe control of that area? But Horse Caller is coming in for Tato, so maybe he feels like, you know, he won't have the wood supply to go for the fishing ships and the fish traps. He can't keep it secure long term. He's just gonna keep adding farms at his base. Yeah, and while Tato will be happy to have won the water battle in the north, still contested though. It is important to note here by Yo as he sends fire ships forward to possibly look to snipe some fish. Yo with the control of the southern pond also has access to those three relics. Something we need to consider now is the transition onto land. We have that first TC up outside of the walls mm -hmm. for Mr. Yo, a third TC overall to match in the TC numbers. Now Tato's thinking about coming out to the southern pond with two villagers to contest, but it's being tracked currently by a spearman. It's kind of interesting how both of them lamed the deer out there. Like they both made a spearman and they both lamed all that extra hunt, which is just a development of the meta on yeah. this map. And it's beautiful that they're doing that while they're mixing in the galley micro in the north. Tato actually did add in a couple extra fishing ships, but yo, taking advantage of his war galley upgrade, 
with these fire ships now and just Snipes running too. in and sniping them. So maybe the correct call from Tato, he felt like he couldn't get away with those fish safely. As Yo is already no. here with the war galley, this is what you wanted to prevent. And he's already going for the stone walls to that wood line. So really, really solid play from Yo. I would have, I mean, the turtle ship would have gone hard here, but the wagon. Is going to go crazy. Wagon and galley is enough, I think, to deny this dock. I mean, Tato's going to tap, tap, tap away. He's got to have the clicks if he wants to guarantee this to go down. I think Click harder! Still, Click! It won't go up. So a costly investment by Tato, just the timing of those two villagers, the lives of those two villagers, and ultimately that dock is denied. So Tato is now in a position where he won't have any fish in the south. He's still kind of loot at risk of losing some fish in the north, although I would assume he's going to start adding them in now, which he's doing. He has that in faster Imperial Age timing available to him as Malay, though. And he's already got a good food setup, so we might see him go on to stone soon and start thinking about that forward castle position, maybe in between the two neutral golds in the center of the map. The villagers are now coming out, maybe looking for another dock position, but yo, with some good control with the wagons, the war galleys, and yo. Yeah, there's a monk looking to escort, and that will be a threat to the war wagons. But the war wagons find the villagers once again, now looking for the snipe onto the monk. Will the conversion come through? It does in the end, but not before the monk also goes down. And these villagers, I think they're not long for this world. No, nope, they are not at all. And that's more villager snipes from Mr. Yo. Eco KD, six to two in favor of him. It sucks that he gave up that conversion on the wagon. That's a really strong unit you don't want your opponent to have. But um, still, a good situation overall for Mr. Yo. He is behind in economy right now, but he has way more map control, and he should be able to defend against any forwards from Tato. Yeah, he's walled up that right-hand side to help kind of funnel any engagements towards the middle of the map. We do finally have the cleanup complete in the northern pond, right? Tato now with full control over that. The fish boom can really take off if he chooses to invest into it. We see Wheelbarrow coming in for both players. University at home here for Tato and archery ranges being dropped, but still waiting to see which player will come forward for the first castle position. No villagers on stone yet for Tato, only one on stone for Yo. So we're a ways away from that. Yeah, Tato's just collecting the relics, but his food eco is super solid. 35, now 39 on food. For Tato, he's grabbing the relics in the center because he knows he won't be able to get the ones in the bottom. And I, I, I'm really loving the fact... I thought that king was actually coming out to the south. <laughs> I was a little <laughs> bit nervous. We know Yo's king hey, isn't going to move true, once true, this game. True leaders lead from the front, Dave. Exactly. As we know. Exactly. How do you inspire confidence? Follow me into battle, dear friends. The uh, attempted conversion here from the monk. The war wagons will slowly roll away. But I love this as well. Tato just going to make his opponent second guess everything, right? Targeting those walls, opening a small hole for raids possibly in the future. And rechecking in with the economies. You Devotion. see Imperial Age food count already here for Tato. A little bit more gold, and he can click up. For Yo, still a bit further away. Good call on the Devotion as well, though, as the monks are the main counter right now to the war wagons. He's devoted. He's I devoted, but devoted. they're starting to convert before Devotion comes in. Maybe Yo doesn't realize if he's gotten that tech. Good dodge there from Tato. And he actually gets the conversion with the other monk because Tato was uh, being aimed at on that first monk, and he yeah. ran it away in time. So two war wagons for him, a little bit of control. However, even with that faster Imperial Age, he still doesn't have any stone. So he'll need to go for the Bombard Cannon approach, which will take time. Mm -hmm. And it feels like Yo will be able to click up to Imperial Age himself and maybe get the units that he needs. Late game, we're matching these two civilizations up. Koreans are definitely favored. If you have equal economy, and if you can get in your full tech tree, Koreans are, are definitely going to be the better Civ here. Yeah, if I'm Tato, I'm happy with my eco setup. I'm happy with my Imperial Age timing. The big issue is I have no real forward position to launch an attack from. Yeah. I think that's my real fear at the moment. He's in the corner right now. Like, if he, ex if he exhausts his wood lines in his main base, where does he go? Right? Because Yo's got all the outposts set up south of him. He's got all the units in the center. And he, there's a ton of vision, there's a ton of mobility available to Yo, and he's even walled off between the wood line and the pond in the south. So Tato will really need to think about how he's going to extend his economy and his defenses in order to keep gathering those resources. There's a limited supply in the north. 
Yeah, as soon as Imperial Age comes in, Bracer and Chemistry will be the first text to be researched. So that'll give them access to the Bombard Cannons, makes the Skirmishers that much more effective against the War Wagons. This gate is beautiful. I it's love really, that. really, don't open it. I just said it was, thank you. He'll just convert it back. Sweet, easy conversion there for Mr. Yo. Plenty of War Wagons as well that can harass if Tato tries to extend his eco down to the southern part of the map. Here's that Siege Workshop to start the Bombard Cannon production. Good skirmisher numbers. And this means that Yo will have to use that Menganel well in order to navigate the middle of the map. Well, it's just it's a constant problem. Said it many, many times. Where is Tato pushing from? How How is he ever going to take advantage of this faster Imperial Age timing if Yo ha holds most of the map control? Yo is perfectly content to just sit here. He go even goes for a tower in the center, which is beautiful. If Tato wants to push forward for a castle there, he's going to have a keep pretty soon. Koreans get those upgrades automatically. Tato finally extending outwards for that town center with these skirmisher numbers. Yo is just running away for now. But again, Dave, you're using your your superior Imperial Age timing just to expand your eco, right? We go back to that whole, like, the advantage of Malay is hit Imp first. Use those tech advantages to begin your snowball and begin your push. But instead, you have to invest it just to get to the southern side of the map and a TC down. Like, honestly, I think Yo can just, yeah, he can just go for a series of towers here. And it's going to buy him so much time. They may not stay up to the later stages of the game. Yupsiong coming in now for Yo, which is beautiful, giving his towers extra range, yeah, about which will deeps. be very useful against these Bombard Cannons right here. So this is a difficult situation for Tato, but he's kind of put himself here, honestly. He's gone for skirmishers with that faster Imperial Age timing, War Wagon still being annoying. Killing the monks, trying to bring in the relics. Skirmishers are distracted, denying the villagers coming out to this stone and this TC. He does have the water control at the north, but only five fishing ships. Ooh, big big mangonel shots there from Yo onto the skirmishers. But war wagons are such a tanky unit there on the right-hand side. While they will eventually get cleared up, the fact that they've idled all of those villagers in that TC this entire time is is fine enough damage here for Yo overall yep. as he now looks for his Imperial Age technologies. Matching Elite Skirm, four Elite Skirm, 30 seconds away from Chemistry himself. And once again, just a little bit more map control for Yo. Just a slightly higher percentage of the map that he owns over Tato. He's got the golds locked down in the center. He's only got one, or sorry, two relics right now. He's managed to deny the relics coming in for Tato over the course of Castle Age and Early Imp, but there's three available to him there as soon as he gets the time. However, we've heard it multiple times on the interview. Yo, why didn't you do this thing? I was lazy. Yeah, yeah I'm lazy. I knew I should do it. But it was just bad. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so, insane to hear come out of his mouth. Exactly. But, um, if you're bad, how terrible are we, oh honestly? Lordy. Turtle, oh, turtle ship! ship! It's here! I eat, I gladly eat my words. That's a snapping turtle, too. That thing looks angry. I am so very happy about that. Do something. Yeah, now I want to see it do so. <laughs> do something. Oh, no, it's going to die right away. Stick dude. Meme. Yeah, it's going to die to like the, the Bombard Cannons. Big shots from the turtle ship. It does splash damage. It backs away because the range is kind of limited on this Skirmisher's thing. Skirmisher's denying a tower over here. Ooh. That would be a great keep to get up for Yo, but instead it goes down in the end. So not a it's great investment of stone for himself. It's just going to get converted. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God. The traitor turtle ship. Yeah, we'll check back in with that in a moment. Right now, it's the Krambits chasing away the Skirmishers and the three Mangonels, but Tato has opened up a hole in this wall. So this could become big in the long term. And there's the conversion that you were looking for onto the turtle ship. Two of the Mangonels in the middle of the map go down to the Krambits before being cleaned up. No, oh, this is just the saddest turtle ship ever. Okay, I don't oh. think it can convert it back. It, no! It one-shots the monk because no sanctity. Yep. And Actually, it would have it wouldn't one shot it even with Sanctity. I forgot. 50 attack on the turtle ships. Pretty brutal, but Yo is still pushing in. Yo's got towers over here now. He's got Trebs behind that, and he's even going into the cavalry armor. So maybe mixing in some Korean hussars, which aren't the greatest, but a good complement unit. Turtle v turtle ab action in the south, and Yo will add another dock to maybe try and grab those relics. Tato forced to defend with three trebuchets here. He's getting more monasteries up, but the towers from Yo kind of counter the entire army from Tato. Yeah, right now. he's just given up so much of the map. Once again, gold is going to become an issue long term. He did get a castle position up in the south to secure at least one gold for the time being. 
But Yo is very happy with the position that he's wrestled away from Tato in the middle of the map. That trebuchet does go down. Good find there from Tato. But all about the Bombard Cannons right now in the late game. Is the control there? Is the micro there? The Karambits come rolling forward to look for the snipes. The keeps are trying to play defense. And I think a couple of those bombard Bombards will go down in the end. There's one looking for a second and a third. He's going to get them, but he has plenty of gold in reserve. Tato starting to try and push out here. The keeps are the main thing that are stopping him from doing so. He, he needs to clear those up before he can go for follow-up buildings. Karambits are a nice unit in terms of cost, in terms of mobility, in terms of how fast you can mass them up. But long-term options against towers, maybe onagers, arbalest, skirmisher even, Karambits kind of take a ton of damage. So Tato will need a different solution than that. And Yo is not messing around. So many archer ranges coming up. The Arbalist will be on the way. He's also probably thinking about transporting those monks over to get the relics and the Bombard cannons really, really finding some value behind the safety of these towers. Yeah, solid trub numbers though here for Tato as he finally takes a stab at the middle of the map. It's mostly skirms here as an army composition for Mr. Yo. And so while over time they will deal with those Karambits, the Karambits are finding good kills. And once again, another Bombard Cannon goes down. A second one to follow. The keep positions are falling. This is starting to look good for Tato in terms of the push. Yeah, Yo hasn't gotten his tech switch in yet. He was trying to go into Arbalest. He had skirmishers in front and Tato has done a wonderful job now he started with the bomber cannons realized those weren't working went to the trebuchets and the trebuchets are outranging the towers and taking them down look at the military population now for Tato fantastic job from him he took his time but now he's pushing if this goes really late though it, it does not look good for Malay so Tato needs to do something in the next couple minutes with this 81 to 39 military advantage. And he agrees with you. Another castle position forward, securing more gold. But oh, in the meantime, so Yo is doing his best to extend his position on the right-hand side. Luckily, that castle will snipe the villagers going for the stone wall. It's Karambits and Elite Skirms here for Tato. We that's, need onager, buddy. That's everything he has to throw at Mr. Yo. For Mr. Yo, still looking for the tech switch into the Arbalest to deal with the Karambits, but the Skirmishers are the counter unit there. Trebuchet's unpacking, targeting yet another another keep. It is a slow roll here for Tato, but he has to keep moving forward. It's funny, it, like, it's weird that Yo hasn't teched into Onager yet, honestly, to deal with the skirmishers. I mean, the bomber cannons were there first, but with the towers involved, it feels Cava like the breaks. Onager could have had a lot of value against Tato's army. The trebuchets from Tato are absolutely putting in work, and he's doing a, a phenomenal job running in with those Karambits, keeping their numbers up, and sniping the bomber cannons as they come out for Yo. So we will need some adaptability here from our Koreans player. Tato, we just need more of the same. More army, more pushing, more <laughs> gold I supply. Mean, yeah. Taking control of the resources where you can and you got to finish off Yo in the next couple minutes. Double the military and climbing even at that as we see the numbers shoot up to 71 to 20 overall. Pop cap is Tato, barely scraping above 150 is Yo, just struggling to get the numbers out on the mass. The swarm is on for the Malay player. Keeps everywhere for Yo, but the trebuchets are dealing with them and it's only these three trebs. Like these three trebs are the absolute backbone of Tato's push here. And now he's got some Bombard Cannons mixed in now that the towers are gone. He'll be able to snipe the army from Yo. He'll be able to snipe the trebuchets from Yo. Yo is still trying to take into Hussar. Like, that that's, that's not where you want to go here with the Koreans, especially when the Malay player can easily counter that with some uh, pikes of their own, right? So it's really a rough position for Mr. Yo to be in, but he's kind of put himself here by not going for Onager or maybe the Arbalest earlier or maybe some forward castles instead of the amount of towers that he had. Yeah, you can see Yo grasping at straws, right? Investing into architecture, defensive techs, right? I think he realizes the same as we do, that if he can extend the game long enough, he does have a way back in. Ultimately, he is the stronger Civ in the late game at max pop and at ideal unit compositions. But 82 military now for Tato. That's crazy. He just he's squeezing out more units. Exactly. <laughs> and he sat in the corner for so long. It was like he was on timeout, right? Like he was in the corner forever. And then he just decided to push and suddenly Suddenly, he's got over 50% of the map control. Still has that water in the north, too. The transport ship from Yo has been out for a long time, but he hasn't brought in those relics. I think he just picked them up. 
He's been extremely distracted yep. at this point. And Tats are finally on the way. The question is, but what, what are the numbers that, looking like? What you have six really on the field. Yeah, yeah, six exactly. on the field. Exactly. Like, what does that add for you at this point? You've put yourself in such a brutal position. Tato is sneaky. Karambit Rambits. Karambit raids. That could be big. It could be a killing blow. I mean, Tato's done such a brilliant job of keeping these siege units alive. Three Trebs, three Bombard Cannons. He hasn't been forced to make a new one in like 10 or 15 minutes. No, these minutes. Trebs have been insane. These Trebs are the, are the MVP, the second MVP, and the third MVP of one, Tato's That's push. the whole podium right 100%, there. hundred percent, yeah. Gold, silver, and bronze, indeed, as the Karambits now come into Yo's eco. There's not too much there, and Yo does have the range upgrade, so if he notices that, he could push it back. But finally, we have the Hussar. This has been the unit that Yo has been building into the entire time. The Hussar are coming out, the towers are behind, and they manage to deal with some of the Karambits, and the Skirmishers will struggle. But Korean Hussar, missing Blast Furnace, missing that final armor upgrade, are not the long-term solution here for Mr. Yo. However, one trap goes down. Second one goes down as well. The third one is targeted, but it looks like it will live in the end. That investment of Karambits into the eco meant that the numbers dwindled on the front. We had the Hussar doing big damage, but the Karambits are finding damage of their own in the back. More keeps being dropped. Yo trying to turtle up as best he possibly can here to extend the game further. Snoo or killing those, uh, sniping those two Trebs are, is beautiful, right? Yeah. It completely slows down this entire push. Five towers now, not able to be taken out by anything that Tato has. And the Bomber Cannons are going to be working away on the castle. So Tata will suddenly have to invest stone into repairing that. Yo needs to get his eco back in check though. If he's going Hussars, he's gonna need more than 25 on food. That's for sure. And uh, he'll need to tech into some more siege. Yeah, highest military count of the game though for Yo at 50 just now. Still pop cap for Tato. Yo trying to get there himself. Does finally lose that castle position in the middle and reestablishes another one a little bit further to the left. It's important to note that through all this though, Tato is the one with the control over the gold. So in the long term, that's gonna help him as he builds that bank of resources quite high. Yo is pretty strapped for cash and food at the time being. He does bring those Hussars over to respond to the Karambits, but even still, not an awful trade for Tato in the end while he will get cleaned up. I saw the Men-at-Arms upgrade coming in for Tato. I'm wondering if he's considering Force Levy. Force he hasn't gotten it yet, I believe. He has a lot of resources in the bank, so it's not really an approach you want to go to at this stage of the game. He's just kind of getting himself ready if he wants to make that switch as the Karambits and Skirmishers still seem to be getting the job done. However, the towers for Mr. Yo sniping the Bombard Cannons, that's two down from Tato, and he's got Bombard Cannons himself behind. He's got six Bombard Cannons waiting in the wings behind these towers, the seventh one now on the field. Tato with only three of his own, but look at the line of Skirmisher bodies. Tato just cannot break this position from Mr. Yo without the trebuchets. Yeah, it's a Skirmisher massacre, and for the first time in a long time, Tato isn't pop cap. The numbers are dropping, though he is trying to reestablish the numbers in the middle of the map. Yo is housed, and I wonder if he knows he's housed. I, th I think so. I think he's building houses back there. Yeah, okay, he is. And finally, I mean, it took 20 minutes relics. for the monks to go over there. Took another 20 to decide to pick up the relics, and then he brings them back. Force Levy for Tato. Beautiful technology. He's well, going to start barracks? spamming out those infantry units soon. I think it's just like uh, it's late game prep from him, Yeah. basically. Like, the Karambits are working from now, but... Uh, Eventually, you're going to want to make that switch if this game keeps going. Tato continues to work away on some of those keep positions. We even have murder holes coming in for Yo. That's going to be great for the towers as Tato tries to dive underneath, still throwing Karambit numbers forward. He's reestablishing the skirmisher mass as well. But either way, the turtle has worked. And if anything, Yo's gained some ground back. Skirmishers still kind of holding this position for Tato. He's no longer pushing Dash. However, we don't really see any mix-up from Mr. Yo. He's making the same thing that he was before with just a couple Hussar in front. He doesn't have Onager yet. He's just got the towers and the Bombard cannons. He snipes another Treb from Tato. Keeping these Treb numbers low is great. Oh, another it just one kinda, goes down. It feels like Yo needs that one extra thing. 
I don't know. I mean, if things stay the same, I think Yo wins this. The question is how or uh, when that uh, mass of longswords come in to change the tides of Two the battle. We do have a couple bombard cannons going down, but more keeps go up, and Yo's finally trying to get himself back onto gold in the center of the map here. Trebuchets for Tato, the most important resource in terms of taking out these keep positions and getting his snowball rolling forward once again. Where is the gold supply for Mr. Yo is what I want to know because it, it shows he's got three on gold right now. Of course, he's got five relics, which is, is great. And it, the gold supply is in the middle. So Mr. Yo is definitely... But Tato just exhausted his gold as well. So they're fighting over this kind of final gold position. Yeah, but Tato has 1,100 in the bank and he got Force Levy. Right, so he's got he's got a composition where he won't need to spend that gold. Mr. Yo is going into Hussar and Skirmisher. Korean Hussar are not that great, and he needs to be able to afford the Bombard Cannons to help this push out. Tato seems to have weathered the storm. It seems like he's going to hold this position for the time being and then start pushing Yo's main base. I also love Tato's patience to not show the longswords yet, mm. right? Like Force Levy, he's, he's invested into this for so long, he's dropping the barracks behind the castle, hasn't even produced any just yet. As you mentioned, a late game insurance policy is gonna make sure that when he starts producing and reveals them, it is a Dude, killing blow. Not having siege engineers this entire time, is so brutal for Tato. I just assumed he had it. Great quick walls around the trebuchet. The Hussar wow. are coming in here to try and snipe them. They're missing that final armor upgrade. Maybe they might go down before the treb does, but the bomber cannon finishes it off anywhere. Anyway, anyway, nice touch treb from, uh, from Tato to try and save that treb. It wasn't enough at the end of the day, but Mr. Yo loses all of the Hussars because of it. Treb on the left-hand side though, working away on that castle. So if left untouched for too long, will eventually bring that one down. We see the Bombard Cannon now looking for a target fire. Repairs coming in from just one villager there for Tato. Does keep the Treb alive for now. Karambit swarming in, looking for kills of their own. Onto the all-important siege units and those skirmishers. Diving under keeps, though. They're not going to live for very long. Does look like the Bombard Cannon will go down in the end. Ew, Yo's buying Ooh. stone with gold he doesn't have. He's buying stone with gold he doesn't have to repair that castle. He needs to snipe this Treb and the Bombard Cannon. The Hussar are now coming in as Tato tries to deny that tower on the other side. The castle falls for Yo. You saw him kind of like shake his head a little bit there. That is a rough situation for him. Tato is still almost pop capped. Yo is down to 148 pop as he fails to snipe the Bombard Cannon in the north. Tato is selling wood for a decent price. Yo, you have 5,500 wood in the say. bank. And, he's, and it's still at a decent price. You gotta sell, sell. Floating 5,000 wood strapped on all other three resources. No villagers bringing in gold. No villagers bringing in stone. It looks like in the game of Survivor, Tato has outwitted, outlasted, and outplayed his opponent. Oh my goodness. Yo, selling wood now. <laughs> he's figured it out. He's figured it out. He, he, he gets rid of like 1,200 wood or something like that. And you can see the prices right there. Still 42 gold for 100 wood is actually really reasonable at this stage of the game. He's back up on 55 on food. And we know Yo does not give up easy, especially when it's five relics to two. Is there only seven relics on this? I thought there was eight. No, I guess there's seven, right? Yep. There's three in the in the bottom and then four in the main area. I mean, Tata once again pop capped. Look at this, 112 villagers, but 104 military. Oh, yes, the military looks too. solid for Koreans as well, up to 80 at this point. But once again, Tata with the better resource bank is happy to trade those numbers down and then replenish. We've got the oh, Hussar trying to block. swoop in around the back side, but the micro is there from Tato to keep the siege units alive. Skirmishers continue to trade, skirm for skirm on the front lines, but no progress to be made there. The trebuchet goes down, yep. and once again, we stall things out around the keeps. It was a, it was an amazing block there from Tato. He was using the mining camp, the skirmishers, the karambits to block the Hussar from sniping that. But there was a Bombard Cannon behind for Mr. Yo and manages to get that Treb and the towers will continue to hold this position. The towers are everything for Mr. Yo, although he's out of stone and the stone price is getting pretty high if he wants to buy some more. I think in the south he might be uh, attacking that castle there from Tato with a bomber cannon. So if he can break oh, this, it'd be really snipe. nice. But Tato notices in time. He's paying attention to everything, it feels like. And Mr. Yo. Oh, the micro, oh, though. Oh, they're it's both there. paying attention. OK, dodgeball. Well, now Tato's dodgeball. not paying attention. He's got to look at Villagers it. Oh, my goodness, these guys are too good. 
Villagers repairing. Now Tato's got a Vill repair. How are they doing this while well, they're also fighting in the north is the question. Yeah. Tato pushing in. He's shown the two-handed swordsman. Forced levy is in, so these things only cost food. Yo is now going for guilds. He wants gold long term. And he knows he's going to be selling a ton of resources. This might be a, a wood game dash as now yo notices again and micros away the bomber cannon it may Once be more. though tato does have access to the gold right behind that castle hasn't actually invested too Ooh, many he, villagers he in might not you it. know what he might not notice it he might not notice it because if you look at the mini map it's not extremely visible right he's got a couple on there yeah but it's kind of like visually blocked a little bit so maybe now that his attention is over there he fully realizes the gold is there and he can fully saturate it might become aware but even still as we talked about one of the big benefits of malay with force levy right is that in the long term they don't necessarily need gold to pack a powerful punch we've got these swordsmen coming streaming into the base looking to make a mess of yoziko though most of yoziko has been relocated down to the southern part of the map he does have arbalists over there to respond in the skirmishers man how many skirmishers have died in this game? i mean just populations right now yo yeah. is at 137 tato is at 180 Right, Yo only has one Bombard Cap Cannon. Ram. Tato, he's got uh, some of the cheapest Siege, which are Rams pushing in. He's got the infantry to support those. Oh man, what a game we have here as Korean Hussar are basically the, the major element of Yo's army at the moment. Skirmishers following them up. Hussar should do decently against these two-handed swordsmen because they're so weak. Um, but and the armor are behind are helping. Korean Hussar. Yeah. Missing they, the armor, missing Blast Furnace is horrible. Yeah, and look at this. Again, it's just food investment, right? It's food units traded for food units, but it's Tato winning out in the end. Still barely able to get to 140 pop is Yo overall. Pop capped here for Tato. And the villager numbers have fallen quite far. 87, 86 now for Yo. 7,000 wood in the bank and near nothing else. He's trying to sell. He's trying to get some gold. He's trying to reestablish himself on the map. He's gotten some control of the center, but Tato says, fine, I'll go elsewhere. Yo is buying stone again. Where on earth could he be tower pushing this time? I don't think it's for repairing the towers. I think it's probably for towers on that wood line, which it is. So he's going to try and control the wood line in the center. You might actually have an argument if you're Tato here and you think this game is going to go... Uh, a while longer to start using your wood to get fish traps, essentially. Yeah. Vodka knew exactly what I was talking about <laughs> there. Because they last forever with Malay, right? And when your farms are refreshing, if you're going into a wood game, having those is great. However, I don't think the game is going to get to that point because Mr. Yo is just constantly losing territory. Tato now shifting a little bit more attention over here to the north. He's gonna take out the TC, the tower, the farms and everything. Yo is trying to defend. 22 Hand Arbalist. Cart just came in for Tato. Are you that's, serious? That's a little brutal, but it is 22 Arbalist protected by walls here, trying to deal with the two-handed swordsman. Yes, it's still Korean Hussar that are getting absolutely melted as the TC finally goes down. Three capped rams are the the sole siege units to try and end this game at the moment. Yes, the skirmishers came over here from Yo. He's mounting a defense as best he can, but once again, the population is solid here for Tato. He's broken through the gate. Mm -hmm. He's finding his way onto some of those ranged units. Taking a look at the resources once again, it's still good food count overall here for Tato, but he's got to find a way to get through all these keeps. Welcome to Mr. Yo in the late game. <laughs> he just absolutely refuses to die. He won't do it. Like, you think that army would be enough to clear it up? Nope. Also, there's certain assumptions you make as a caster. One of them is that in an hour plus long game, a player would have handcart. Was not the case for Tato. How much has that hurt him this game? That's a I good don't know. question. Siege Engineer is late, also... right? So some upgrades coming in late that probably should have been prioritized earlier. But we look at the economy for Tato right now. Handcart's only going to help with 69 on food. Yeah, he'll be able to endlessly stream these two handed swordsmen forward. If anything, it's wood that he's struggling for, right? And we called out the towers that were being dropped on that central wood line. Eventually, Tato's going to run out of options here on the right hand side when it comes to wood. So, something that we can still track in terms of of a, a favorite element in the game here for Yo. I just want to see some transport ship shenanigans or something, some sort of creativity, because at the rate this is going, Yo's never like winning this game. Unless he feels like the relics are going to be the thing that tips it in his favor. He hasn't mixed up his composition. He's out of stone, so he can't really push forward with more castles or towers. I mean, right now, he's just in a holding pattern, and Tato is slowly taking position. 
he could feel like he has more wood access, mm -hmm. and that might be the angle which he's going for as he continues to defend with the Arbalists and the um, Skirmishers up here. But uh, Tato still holds those golds in the set. Actually, is Mr. Yo on that gold? He's on that gold. Yeah, he found his way onto the gold in the middle. Tato Tato's took pressure off of that. He's put so much focus here on the left-hand side and trying to go for a game-ending push that he's forgotten about, or rather, ignored the gold. At least for now. He I does have Yo gold do income this. of his own. He's Dude, got gold income of his own, though, too. I think Yo can do this. Look at his wood count. 8,000 wood. Tato is 37 on wood right now, 300 um, in the bank currently. Sapper's even coming in for him. And Yo has the gold in the middle because Tato took his attention off of that. I think there's a serious chance, even though Yo was down 80 population just a minute ago, for him to push back and win this game. What a phenomenal effort from Mr. Yo with just Hussar, Skirmisher, Arbalist, and a few towers. By no means is this game over. Yo refuses to let it go. More Hussars coming forward. It's it's essentially trash into trash, right? Those uh, long swordsmen costing food only while they do pack a powerful punch. He's done an amazing job of keeping these Arbalists alive. Mm -hmm. He's been sitting at about 25, 27 Arbalists this entire game. Well, it's hard for Tato to kill them, right? Exactly. Like the skirmishers are in front. You can see the damage kills. dealt. 5,400 damage or something like that. Disgusting. And the skirms are trying to snipe them, but Yo is sniping the skirmishers from Tato, and he's constantly paying attention to these. Tato has done a wonderful job this game, but he's running into the defense that is the Koreans right now, and he's running into a player that just refuses to give up as Tato has now gone for a trebuchet to take out that tower in the center. Yo is even repairing that tower. Tato's like, I, bro, I want that wood right now. He needs please. access to wood back. He does. Yo has eclipsed a 1,000 kills in this game. Crazy, Ooh. dude. Let's go. And look at the resources collected. It's actually pretty... It's actually pretty even. Resources destroyed fairly even, too. The Hussar is still pushing. The Arbalists are still behind, although limited numbers. So Tato doing a great job sniping those. And now hand cannons being mixed in from Yo now that he has that gold supply in the center and the five relics generating the gold behind. Yeah, we wanted the highest level of Age of Empires play, and these players have delivered through four games of the set so far. Tato still looking for his moment to strike with the siege units to finally convince Yo to tap out. But Yo, ever the fighter, is absorbing all this damage. He's buying himself the time. He's trying to find He's a way back space, into though. it. running out of space, though. He's running out of space here, Dash. Like, Tato, you know, he takes three fights to gain an inch of territory. Yeah. And he's perfectly content with that with Malay as long as he has the wood supply. The Q was looking fantastic for skirmishers earlier. He's got 32 on the field, which is great. But the Q is down to two right now. And now he's fully focused on producing those two-handed swordsmen, which Yo might be able to counter if he still continues to have the gold supply. Ooh, Grambit. 9,000 wood in the bank for Mr. 9,000 wood, not enough food. He's dropping more stables to get the Hussar numbers up, but I don't think he has the farm count to support that overall. That said, he cleans up the Rams once again. And we're back to a stalemate position. <laughs> and Viper and Hera are just kind of like, guys, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> excuse me. There. This is only game four of a best of nine. We have things to do later tonight as we eclipse the hour and 12 minute mark for this game. Yo willing to go on for quite a while longer. Tato, Tato on Garrison is king. Where did it go? Garrisoning his king. Don't send that forward. Imagine he sends it to a transport Where ship I, in the oh, corner. Oh, just another, okay, just another tower. Another tower. But imagine he Ooh. sends it in a transport ship in the corner. That would have been. Yo would never find that. <laughs> that actually would be kind of <laughs> Yo next would level. never find that. <laughs> okay, we focus back on the left-hand side of the map. This is where Tato feels like his winning position is. Buys a thousand wood for gold is Tato. Ooh, so he's buying wood early. This doesn't strike me as like, a, I need wood for the queue. This is a, I'm going to buy wood before the price gets ridiculous. Little does he know <laughs> that Yo has 9,000 wood in the bank. So he's actually boosting Yo's eco by buying that wood at this stage. He is. He's giving him options to buy his way back into gold positions. Again, all that said, I'm worried about the food count here for Yo. He struggled to get himself back over 50 farmers. He's barely over 100 villagers himself. Once again, we've returned to PopCat for Tattoo. He has triple the military numbers overall as Yo falls back below 140 in the total population. Yo's got a lot of wood in that corner, and he's got the center wood control. He's missing out on the wood that was in his base, and 
it um, has to be slightly demoralizing for Viper and Tato to realize that we are fully talking about a wood game at, at this point. They might be starting late. This is great Age of Empires here, folks. Welcome <laughs> to NAC5. I mean, look at Yo this. Yo is now sold, selling 1,000 wood for 315 gold. That's pretty good at this stage. I mean, it, it is very good, but it's taken Tato 15 in-game minutes to move like a total of four tiles oh, this in terms is, of control. Yeah, this is like World War One. <laughs> this is Western <laughs> Front warfare. territory. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is the 15th Battle of Copenhagen <laughs> going on right now as the generals continue to send units in. Human wave tactics for sure. Yeah, we need that Christmas Day armistice. Uh, <laughs> take one, take a breather, everybody. We might have a breather soon because Yo just got a big clear up on units. Tato still streaming in units. We look at his queue, 82 to in at Swordsman in the queue. Yo still a pretty solid food count, but the Huss are absolutely being just chewed up as they head into battle. Yeah, the gold is almost exhausted across the entire map. Just a couple piles remain for each player. And once again, Tato, he's trying to get those siege numbers up. He does have seven rams at this point, one treb, another one on the way, and a bombard cannon at his disposal. He has 58 longswords in the queue, or two-handed swordsmen, I should say, with 38 on the field. Mm -hmm. Inch by inch, slow progress. It's working for Tato. It is working. I, I don't know if Yo is going to survive long enough to take advantage of the, the wood that he has because Tato is just spamming in units one after the other, and the Hussar count is never high enough for Mr. Yo. He's at 150 population again, slightly higher than he was a couple minutes ago. I think his king is all alone in that corner there. Buys if, more stone, drops more keys. If Tato were to come through, but of course he doesn't know that. It's still keep defense, but once again, I'm taking a look at the farms. He's slowly losing space, slowly losing the opportunity to bring food in and keep those Hussars up. We were kind of looking down on the Korean Hussars, but they've been an important part of this uh, I'll defense never, here. Listen, I'll never look at Korean Hussars the same ever again. Right? And Yo made that decision so early. He could have maybe got himself a better position with something like Onager or whatever, but he made the tech switch. It's helped him out at this stage of the game. The gold is now completely exhausted on the map, I believe. Tato should be out of gold behind that castle. He Thank is. you, Vodka. No gold there. No gold whatsoever remaining on the map. I, I actually want to... Maybe zoom out here for a second as this battle just continues and see how much wood is available. And it's Yo with central, con this map. central con control of that wood line. About probably 30, 40K. Oh, about. we got another hour left in us, yeah. for yeah. sure. Because <laughs> there's, there's some additional random wood lines left, I think, in, in Yo's base, too. Capped Rams pushing in once again. 106 villagers. Solid count for Mr. Yo. Still 45 on food, but if he loses this position, he's going to lose so much space for farms. Dave, 10k wood in the bank. Look at the resources over there for Tato. Still 74 villagers working away on food. That means that the two-handed swordsman spam can keep up, but eventually he's going to struggle to get wood units onto the field. He's still selling wood, and Tato has to be looking at these price is like how much wood does this guy have right. <laughs> and it just keeps streaming in i think tato is now contesting that center wood line yo is going to be able to deal with this stuff and yeah he's got another trebuchet it's been an ongoing battle well this huge front has opened up on the left side they've been constantly fighting kind of bickering back and forth for that wood line in the center as Yo can now afford another Bomber Cannon, and I bet you that will go right towards that Treb. He now sells a ton. He sells a ton of wood so he can buy some stone Oof. and maybe get a tower up in the center, which he's going for right now. Yeah, Keep goes down. Another one's being rushed up. Karambit's diving in to look for some raids, but they get quickly eliminated by all of those towers placed around the Tato. eco of Mr. Yo. Tato now has over 1,000 kills. Both players now in this game with over 1,000 kills. The king is on the run. Yo is like, no, 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 no. No, this thing is not dying. I will have one population left. That's and not it how I'm losing king. it. Yeah, that's not how I'm losing this game. He should just transport it to the little island that the Relics oh, that's are on risk, at this point. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that is a risk. There's like sharks and stuff out there. I don't know. 37 on food now for Mr. Yo, it's looking problematic. Great quick Ooh, wall there from walls. Tato. Tato also has a bomber cannon there. The Karambits are dealing with the bomber cannon from Mr. Yo, beautiful snipe there from Tato. Mr. Yo still trying to hold onto that tower, but he's out That's of his stone lifeline. Here. That's his lifeline, right? It controls the wood. If he lets Tato back onto wood, it could get dangerous once again, but I'm looking at the resources here for Tato, and it feels like maybe for the first time in this game, he's starting to run out of steam. Still good food count overall, 
But once again, he stalled out in his push on the left-hand side, and he's not making too much progress in the middle of the map. That tower is still alive. It's still alive, but there's no Vils there. And you have nothing to take out the trebuchet. So maybe you shouldn't be focusing on repairing that tower for the time being. Tato's push completely cleared on this side. The Battle of Copenhagen has ended over there, and the Battle of the Middle of the Field and Forest <laughs> changing, will begin. Changing fronts here. Man, what? how many shifts, how many turns in this game as Yo continues to sell wood. It's the only resource he has a surplus of. Tato trying to get access to that wood in the middle has fully shifted his attention over to this side. The Hussars will come in. I don't think they're going to be in a position to snipe that trebuchet, but the capped rams will be focused down. So that's some more gold units that Tato has kind of thrown away against that siege workshop. Yeah, Tato has found him his way onto some gold on the right side of the map and in Yo's old base. So still not in danger of running out of wood just yet. And we're starting to see that wood count for Yo doing oh, selling a lot. 16 right? on wood and selling plenty. Yeah. That means he's on a bit of a timer. Yeah, he's still got wood in the back of his base. Also, we should mention the 49 like units in the queue there for Tato, the 12 mm -hmm. skirmishers, right? The villagers as well. He's back up to 134 villagers at this point, still pop capped. Mr. Yo has really struggled to get over about 150, 160 population for the last uh, section of the game. He's going for another bomber cannon to try and defend this area. I do like the fact that Yo has prioritized chopping this middle wood rather than chopping the wood at the back there. He's trying to take as much away from Tato as possible, and he's got that in reserve if he needs it. Pushes in here with the Hussar, trying to take out the Trebs. He's going to get one. Yes, but he doesn't get the second. Okay, that's a lot of Hussar lives lost, but of course he does remove an important gold unit from the field. Still one trebuchet, though, for Tato to work with and defend. In the end, we take a look back at the populations, and yo, up to a healthy 175, better than he's been most of the game and at this point. He's finally got room to breathe, right? Like, yeah. Well, I mean, Tato's still pressuring with a couple trebuchets from each side as he goes for another quick oh, gate. Great Beautiful gate. Beautiful job there from Tato. But Yo finally has time to kind of mass an army and think about where he really wants to push. He's going to try and get in here, completely blocked off by Tato, Yo cannot snipe the siege, and a Bombard Cannon goes down to a trebuchet shot right there. Yo saved up everything for that Bombard Cannon. That probably cost him like 1k wood sold. Yeah, one trebuchet did go down on the other side, so at least a little something to be gained there for Mr. Yo. But you can feel it. You can feel like Tato has control over this game as he finally moves villagers back to the central wood line. Yes, the hill advantage, though, is there for Yo when it comes to the ranged units, and he's making it messy. The tenacity here from both of these guys. Tato's like, can you die Just yet? give up, bro. And, and yeah. Yo's like, make me. It's game four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I was in there, I'd just be leaning over like, game four, dude. Yeah. You're like, already up. Like, it, come on. Up. Oh, trebuchet. Will it be saved? It's going to be saved. It will. Beautiful save from Tato. Why are we still here, Dash? I was going to say, I mean, like, we're running out of things to say, largely because... I ran out an hour ago, <laughs> bro. I've just been on repeat. I've been on loop. Yeah. But again, these players refuse to die, and it, uh, it speaks again to, one, their ability, two, the pressure of the moment and the importance of this series, a semi-final. And every game could be the difference If that maker. trap goes down, that's really good for Yo. It does. Oh, my God. That's so good for Yo. Now look at the swing. Look at this swing. Yo finally advancing past this wood line for the first time in a very long time. Tattoo's He's pop capped. Yep. Yo is pop capped again. How Yo did that happen? Pop capped again. Tato making up to 130, 35 villagers. He doesn't have the space for the army. And for the first time in forever, Yo has the military lead here over Tato. I can't believe it. I will lose my mind if Yo somehow finds his way back into this game. I mean, what a defense, what resilience he has shown for us so far, even if it does end in a loss, but he's back onto the wood in the middle. He understands his win condition. He's going to drag this game as late as he possibly can. It's to the point where Tata was sniping wood villagers there manually. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, you have wood in your arms? Let me have that. <laughs> Get rid of that. Drop it. We have almost oh, 3,000 no kills line, across this I game. Don't, I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> almost 3,000 <laughs> kills in this game. 
Holy, what a game four of a best of nine. Thank Oh. Everyone's going to need the break that follows exactly. this game. And yo, will he be able to snipe this bomber? Cannon Tato saves it! Oh my. He saved it! Goodness! Tato holding on. It's not just yo. There's no bell for the Spaniard either as he continues to push forward. Bomber Cannon's now ranging the castle. We've got two handed swordsmen behind the skirmishers. Hussar is coming in, getting eaten up by the castle there without Yo, the final armor stone. upgrade. And Tata will manage to save this bomber cannon again. He's out of gold. He saves it again. Oh my Unbelievable. Goodness. He saves it, but it keeps going up on the wood line. Once again, Yo with the five relics. He's able to very, very occasionally invest back into stone and reestablish a tower position on that wood line. It's getting difficult here for Tato. And Holy, for the and now we have to question oh Tato. <laughs> Why didn't you set up the fish traps earlier? He just, sold, he just sold 1,300 food for 200 gold. I mean, he's got 74 oh. on food. Imagine if he had like 30 fish traps set up right now. That's true. Like, obviously, he would have hit the timing with the farms. Uh, and, and he did. And he was managing to pressure Mr. Yo as he takes out another trap there, Yo. But uh, if he had set those fish traps up earlier, feels like he'd have a lot more wood in the bank. And he'd have a, a situation where he didn't need to quite pressure as hard. I just cannot area. believe that we are now in a position where Tato is on the defense. And he is the one where's getting the wood? pressured. Where's the wood? It's only in the middle. It's completely like, out. I, I, I think th there's nothing but those few scraps and the ones that are in the back of Yo's base. Tato has 1,600 wood right now. He's still chopping somewhere. Yo is pushing him for this bomb art cannon. I think Yo's done enough. This is some of the most. This game, Dash. The most incredible defensive play I have seen in some time. Will he get it? Will he get it? Will he get it? To die. He snipes the Bombard Cannon in the back. The castle is soon to go down. There's no opportunity for repairs. Tato, it's slipping away from him as he can't get control back over the wood. The Arbalest numbers have continued to remain here for Yo. I think the unit control has been phenomenal. The resilience has been phenomenal. The castle crumbles to the ground, and it's starting to look dangerous here for Tato. It's starting to look awfully dark. There, wait, 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 wait. There was a wood there. I don't think he realizes wood. <laughs> that that's there, but still, you know, it's good. I mean, it's, it's a, a little, little something. Uh, it's a savings account, at yeah. least. Selling food again. One, I mean, Tato's just looking for an answer, but at this point, doesn't look like he has it. Mm -hmm. The weaker units in the late game. We are still tied up 71 military to 71 military across both of these players. We're at 2,900 unit kills in this game, about to hit 3,000. An incredible display from both of our players here in the semi-finals. Game number yep. four. Yo looking to put himself up to a third point in the set, though. Tato looking to equalize. I, th I have never seen crop rotation get more value <laughs> than it got for Tato here. Like, the amount he's had on food, 83 on food, right? He's got 160 two-handed swordsmen in the bank. He's just pushing in with these two-handed swordsmen. They do melt. Especially if some good bombard cannon shots come in here from Mr. Yo. He could find a lot of value on the skirmishers. Attack rounds coming in. He misses. Tato's still pushing. Tower is still putting in work. Two handed swordsman looking for those bombard cannons. Yo is now repairing, and Yo is going to be able to save them. Yeah, try as they yes. might. Maybe one goes down. No, he keeps both of them alive. The skirmishers will now melt. The military numbers dropping Tato's rapidly here for Tato. His overall population down to 150 for the first time in a long time. He does have 155 two-handed swordsmen in the queue. Yes, he does. Are they effective? Not so much. Not so much, especially once Yo takes this hill. Yo might actually opt to buy stone yep. and go for more towers here because he still has those five to two relics. And look at the relic gold generated. It's double. All this farming Mr. economy. Yo. All this farming economy is about to disappear. Yep. He establishes a tower on that hill position. Like you just said, he's got the range units up there. The Korean Hussar now starts streaming in. It's 110 villagers, but watch that number fall as Tato has to turn tail and run with all of these villagers. The TC's now under fire. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be disastrous. This could be it. But the problem for Tato, even if he wants to go for like a YOLO King snipe here, he doesn't know where the king is. And if you were to get um, the tech, uh, is it, uh, what is that tech called? It Treason? Yeah. To find the king, Yo is going to know and he's going to just garrison it in like a, a tower or something. King's on the move. Hang on a second. Uh, lead from the front. What did I say? Lead from the front. Not the time, Dash. <laughs> it is not 
the time. Where is Dash, he going? It garrisoned oh, he garrisoned. the keep. Okay. He garrisoned. Okay. Woo! Actually, that's about right. It. He, he thought about it. Because he knows at this point, I'm in the winning position. So Tato, likely his only way to win is to find a King Snipe as he continues to get cornered now, falling below 100 villagers for the first time, up to 100 military Seven on wood. because the pop space has begun. But yes, no wood income there at is, this point. There is a very slight wood discrepancy between the two of them with how much they have in the bank. <laughs> I mean, 9,500 <laughs> versus 76. We finally reached that point, right, where Tato's just out. And he's taking the, the wood line that he had in reserve in the back of his base, but the skirmishers are dying. The two-handed swordsmen, they can't do it alone. Dave, They I need something to help. There's 89 of them, and it feels like there's nothing here for Tato. I got to admit, I wasn't a believer. I wasn't a believer. For so much of this game, I felt like it was an inevitability that Tato would eventually push through, and he does actually manage to clear up a lot of the keys the in the center are, of the He's got map. sappers. Hang on a second, Dash. He's got he's sappers. He's going for it. He's making a dash He's for it. He's going for it. Okay, okay, everyone get ready, uh, including Yo, especially Yo. You have to keep your eyes on this. The two-handed swordsmen are coming in. The villagers are coming in as well. He has sappers to do extra damage he's to the He's got to buildings. locate it, though. And look, every keep has garrison yeah, units. Every keep, Yo is trying. Yo is, so is smart. absolutely trying to bait Tato into attacking the wrong towers. Tato doesn't know where the heck this king is. And the arbalists are coming back. And now the population is going to drop once more for Tato. And that two-handed swordsman queue is down from 160 now to 73. And it's only dropping. 57 on food, up to 11k wood is Yo. So he's got the resource bank to continue the fight for quite some time. Tato, once again, the population is dropping. The last ditch effort is being thrown forward. Two he's giving it everything kills he's for got. Mr. Yo! Oh Two thousand kills for him! Oh my goodness. Can we get a double click on the towers and see how many kills they have? Holy 54 just from those. Unbelievable defense from Mr. Yo. 105. He's looking for it. He's looking for the King Snipe. He's going to target one tower at a time, and he's going to try and work his way through. He's playing Where's Waddle? Waldo, rather. Waddle. With Waddle with the heck. I mean, the King, I mean, the king Waddles. A Waddle. He's yeah. back out of a tower. Where is Waddle? That's the question Tato needs to ask. He's not giving up. He's not giving up. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, okay. whoa, whoa, whoa. He doesn't see flags. There's no flags on the towers, no flags on the TC. So if he's looking there, he knows not to get distracted with those two. He's hunting, he's searching, and he's Yo, on the scent, he's on the trail. Yo's gotta respond to it as well. You can't leave those two-handed swordsmen Transport. Unchecked. It's time for a transport ship. Siege towers now coming from Tato. Is he gonna try and just run in with skirms and snipe this king in siege towers? Tato is not giving up. He doesn't want to lose this game. Imagine being in his, in his position no. and losing this one. Like, you don't invest two hours and go to out die without like trying this. every yeah. single thing you can, right? And so, boom, he dives to the back of the eco. He checks the corner. No king to be found. So where could he possibly be? He's trying to eliminate it's options. In the tower there. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of two-handed swordsmen, and he pulled a lot of military uh -oh. to the back. Yo, yo doesn't have much here in defense. Make a transport right now, please, Yo. Make a transport. That's the safest place he can be. I will is lose on the water. my There's 13,000 wood for Yo, and there's zero wood for Tato with zero villagers chopping wood. You cannot lose this game. It this looks it. like no more in the queue. There's no more in the queue there's for nothing. Tato. There's it's only all villagers. or nothing. He's targeting each of the towers one by one. One goes down on the front. There's two more towers to target, but the Hussars arrive back just in time. The and there's Arbalest in defense. Siege I think Yo's tower. got enough. The Siege Tower is trying to make its way in. But Yo, with 78 military to 69, may have done enough to finally hold on. The tower is under attack. You can see Capture Raid's freaking out. <laughs> it's losing its mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna happen, Dash. It's I not can't gonna happen. believe I'm it, sorry. Dave. How did he do this? How did he do this? Look at the military count here for Yo. He's finally got a position. And Yo, I think Tato realizes. He tries to relocate to the remaining wood, though. He doesn't want to give it up. It, uh, you don't. You don't give this up. You give it every ounce of energy you have. And Tato realizes he's finally done. What a win for Mr. Yo. He held. He held. He held some more. Tato tried to push. Mr. Yo is victorious. Drink all that water, my friend. It's a much-deserved smoke break for him. Oh my god, what an incredible game. The most insane Copenhagen game I have ever seen. Mr. Yo.
showing us the fight, showing us the resilience. And Tato left to wonder where he went wrong. In a two-hour game, nearly every single resource exhausted on the map. Over 3,500 kills between the two players. What a battle. Yo gets a, a round of applause when he, when he runs through. And that's just, that's just crazy. That's, that's an incredible hold from him. He did it in an unorthodox fashion. Towers, skirmishers, Korean Hussar carrying the brunt of the load there for Mr. Yo. Tato has got to be Rubbing really, the really frustrated after that one, right? I think Tato played an incredible opening too. Like in the situation he was in in the corner, to push forward like that and take that much map control, maybe against any other player, he wins that game. Not against Mr. Yo, just refuses to give that one up. I just, ah. Uh. First pick, too, for both players, right? Like, yep. so much riding on that game, both in terms of momentum, in terms of confidence, in terms of fatigue, right? For Yo, he's now two games away from taking the set with five more maps to go. Tato, yep. his margin for error is dwindling. It's small. Yeah. It's small. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, that was Hey, crazy. guys. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, we started out sitting woo! about an hour into that game, and then uh, we slowly started leaning forward. And then at the end, we were like, we were like this, both losing, of us. Just yeah. losing it. it Lose, crazy. Um, I mean. Oh, man. Do we get the game four break, too? <laughs> uh, yeah. I might need a bathroom Ooh, break. Yeah, true. Okay, um, maybe Nilly will swap in for me for a quick moment. Dash needs a bathroom break. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What a game. I just got lucky. Oh, my It It God. was pop 110. Yeah. And we had pop 200. Yeah. Tato and ACM on the couch. <laughs> ACM like this with his mm -hmm. phone. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like a TV right there. Full, and full, he's full body <laughs> moving. And he said, you'll win. Yeah. And I said, like, mm, mm. Do, uh, do you want to double your uh, price pool money? Yeah. And he's like, mm, and everyone was laughing. No one was taking me seriously. And luckily, he didn't want to go for it. Damn, he should have taken the bet. <sighs> it was, was crazy. Cool. I think it took me until Tata was pushing in outside of Yo's main base. And I looked at the wood count. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, what is happening here? Mm -hmm. And Tato never went for those fish traps either. Imagine if he had built that up earlier. Yeah, yeah. But that's like that's such a hindsight kind of thing to examine because he was trying to get the timing yeah. rather than the long-term investment. Yeah, we, we discussed a lot how do you want to approach Malay there because if we go super late game, obviously you save so much wood there for Koreans. Yep. We um, get into tricky scenarios and we felt like five against two relics will be tricky. But Malay kind of wants to play the timing so it will be tough for him to contest the bottom mm -hmm. and still get the aggression out. Yeah. <laughs> we're in game. We're going into game five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the three-one lead. Yep. Uh, this set is scheduled to last four hours. We are two and a half hours in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Not even halfway th through the end. Mm -hmm. If we go for the full uh, distance, maybe uh, we have two scheduled breaks for five minutes each after game four, after game seven. Mm -hmm. If we go to game seven, I will give you some rest, and we'll have some couch entertainment or something there okay. so that's a bit less stressful for you uh, it's crazy how how intense all those sets are maybe a small moment when dash takes um when dash is away that i will talk about our sponsor right surf jerk indeed surf shark we Sur surf we, we can open this a bit right yeah we're uh, we're surfing right now uh, nice we're surfing cool so obviously um big big event we have rough cost of like $190,000, $200,000, and it wouldn't be an option if we wouldn't be surfing this much. And a VPN, basically something that gives you a new IP address, and you are safer in the internet. God, I'm so aware in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> And Surfshark. <laughs> What's the, what, wh <laughs> what is this VPN called? <laughs> Nilly? Surfshark. 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 Ah, surf shock. Right, and they're great. A sponsor great for show. NAC. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you want to, if surf you shark. know you need a VPN, Surfshark does it just as great as anyone else, if not better. And they support NAC. So if you're choosing VPN to support, Surfshark is your. They're way better. Yeah. And 83% off all the links down below there as well. Hashtag NAC five. Yep. Or the, the NAC five. 80, 80 percent off, right? 83% off. 83. And <laughs> 83 yeah, they wanted to give off. me 80% off, and I said, not enough. Uh, not enough. Not enough. And they said, 
85? Yeah. He said like 83. Okay. And then we came to terms. And if you go for two years, I think it's six months off in addition to that. Mm -hmm. And if you're not satisfied, 30 day uh, money 30 back guarantee. Look at that. Bop. Absolutely beautiful. Surfshark. Oh, look at that. Oh, so many countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. Great set. I will hand it over to Dash again. Thank you so much. Thank Dash. you, Nilly. You know it was an insane game when there's a massive queue for the bathroom. Yeah, I saw, you, I saw you run back, and I'm like, how does it, what is he doing? Nobody He's nobody wanted to miss the potential end of that game. Yeah, yeah. And so as yeah. soon as it ends, everyone was like, <laughs> to the bathrooms! Uh, but all right, we're refreshed and ready to go. I wonder how the players are feeling after all of that. I as think well. Yo is feeling great. I uh, honestly, Tato. I don't know how you kind of recover from that, but he's been Ooh. through this before. Uh, he's gonna have to figure it out either way, and I just hope for the best for his mental state going in the, into into the say, next game. Adding to that is he lost another really really tough long game earlier in the yep. tournament to yeah, Hera, yeah. right? And and two of those now, right? You gotta wonder, is there a little voice in the back of the head that's eating away at him? That was my opportunity, well, that also, was my way in. It's like, it's not only um, kicking yourself, man, I should have won that game. It's like, what the hell do I have to do to kill this guy? Right? Yeah, how do I get rid of him? Like, if I can't kill him from there, how am I going to finish him off? The refusal. Yeah. The, ref the utter, just like, uh, indignation. You know, <laughs> I was just like, uh-uh, it ain't happening, bro. It's too good. The stretches come through. The players are back in right. their chairs. Need to mental refresh. You have to forget completely about that game. If you're Tato, if you're Yo, you have to have that game on repeat in your mind. Just be like, yeah, yeah. I did that one. Oh, but they threw everything they had at it, too. They did. And I just love to see that fight, even for Tato, when he realizes it's slipping. It goes for the king snipe. He's searching, searching for that king in the end. And that was such a great play to look for that, too, because it was exposed back there, and I think he knew it was exposed. And he got close, man. Mm -hmm. There were only a couple towers remaining at the end of that game when he ran out of gas. I think if he had gone before sending, like, three or four waves, obviously, forward looking for the king. If yeah. he had gone for that siege tower play with the skirms early, he might have been able to get it. But uh, he didn't know where the king was. Great map. Known for great map understanding. I think we just need to add, like, immortality, immortality. to that. <laughs> just known yep. for refusal to die. <clears throat> and again, Tato, off meta strategies. I think also just creativity is yep. another way to say that. And again, speaks to him searching for every possible win condition, even though it did ultimately escape him in that fourth game. It's three to one now of the series score. Let's check back in with the sieves and the maps here for a moment before they dive in, if possible. Get a refresher on what's still available in terms of tools for each of these players. And there you have it. Tato will have the selection opportunity here between Dry Graveyards, Outcrop, African Reed Beds, Langanati, and Rocky Forest. If it was still any remaining. consolation, that was Yo's home map. That's true. <clears throat> so if it's any consolation for Tato, he didn't lose on his own home map. He was in a winning position, but what, we go on to the next. I think he'll probably want to go to one of his own here, get a win, something he feels comfortable with, probably something like Rocky Forest. Could be a good option, right? I don't. I think you change the pace, right? You go towards like I like Rocky Forest because of how aggressive it can be. Yeah, and it's just a different, completely different style of map. But he goes to Outcrop. Okay, so here we are. Yo playing as Tataras, Tanto playing as Gujaras here on Outcrop, and um, these are two sieves that we've seen here before on this main event. Outcrop is a very open map. You don't have stone up at the top, but you can wall yourself in quite easily around these little wood lines. Yeah, typically easy to wall. Uh, talking about some of the advantages of Tatars, obviously make great use of the hills that can extend through the center of the map there, uh, as well as the hurtables containing an extra 50%. And there's food. a lot of extras on this. Lots map. of extra hurtables around uh, on the sides, and we'll see scouts dive out there as quickly as possible because as the Tatars can make great use of them, so can the Gurjaras, right? Mm -hmm. Looking to bring those hurtables back, garrison them into the mills. Look at that, a little bit of a scout engagement. Yeah, the Camel Scout is not as effective against a regular scout in the Dark Age. Once it hits Feudal, it's kind of ridiculous. In the Dark Age, though, if you get that first hit, you're pretty confident with your regular scout, as we see uh, Tato just kind of perusing the map, looking for those cows to be brought in. More to deny them from the Tataris player than to garrison them in the mill, because that once you get past the threshold of like six hurtables, 
that food income does not really stack up. I remember once I had like 57 sheep garrison in a hyper random game. Yeah. <laughs> it was like equivalent to three farms or something. <laughs> like it was not, it couldn't even keep my town yeah. center running. Now, bro. release Grajara is a different story. Yeah. But obviously, they did have to uh, check them a little bit in that mm -hmm. regard. Um, but as we see there, again, starting with forage bushes as well means you're never having a shortage of food. Your mounted units dealing more bonus damage across all ages is a lovely bonus in the end here. So the key units here for Gajaras, probably going to be Shravamshas, probably going to be Camels, right? Mm -hmm. um, the key units for Chakram Tatars. Mass, maybe, maybe. Chakrams are, are later, right? We, yeah. We've seen some pretty famous games on here where people have had a mass of, uh, on this map in particular, maybe not these qualifiers or this event, but I have a mass of like 60 Chakrams running around. They're fairly mobile. They look okay. Um, but... In the Castle Age, it's going to probably be Camels, Shravamshas, and then we're looking at the units for Yo. Cav Archer is a super solid bet because you get Thumbering instantly upon getting the Castle Age. Archers and the Crossbows can be an option. Lancers can be an option, not so much against Gajaras here, but he also has Camels of his own. So like a Camel, Siege, Cav Archer type of... Uh, composition can be really, really strong. Yeah, now typically a very wallable <coughs> map, and we do see both players beginning the wall construction. But with that, a couple of militia already on the field here for Mr. Yo, and I'm not sure Tato's aware of that. Gajars and Tatars are the second and fourth most, let's fill the rest of that in, th thank you, are the <laughs> second most played civs on outcrop overall, but in the main event, we've not seen Gajars at all, and Tatars only once. Okay. Really? We haven't seen Gajars here? Not on this map, actually, yeah. Must have been Hindustanis that yeah, I'm thinking Yeah, we've seen them a couple other places. I mean, we've seen some crazy matchups on this map, right? We had Britons played here as well by Mr. Yo himself. Uh, Batato, ooh, he saw that deer move, perhaps. Just getting the, the goat lamed, and now we'll run away with these two villagers, so. Villagers kind of preventing that Ibex from running away, and now Yo with these this two militia drush is trying to find values, trying to snipe this villager here from Tato. I don't think this is an expected strategy here Ooh. from Mr. Yo, but Tato <sighs> gets a lot of damage on the scout, on the militia, and he manages to save the villager. Completely unexpected start from Mr. Yo, very unorthodox on this map, going for two militia, and it doesn't pay off at all. And Tato continues to bring in the hurtables. Yeah. He's safe at home, and he goes for stable archery range right away. Not one building into the other, both at the same time. Very, very unique opening from both players. I mean, kind of forced, right? I mean, like, Tato obviously surprised by that movement there for Mr. Yo. Mr. Yo trying to uh, kick the game off on the right foot with an early snipe, but instead it gets turned on its head and he loses a lot of health. Trying to rotate these militia around, but now with a weak scout and a, le a weak militia, probably not much damage to be found. Villagers would be happy to take this fight on their own. Oh, thank you for the dino, or <laughs> dino, the so dino tired from last <laughs> game, dude. I yeah. need time to recover. <laughs> Ivic with the support. He's been around for many of these NACs. Uh, love to see it yeah, again. And it's thank important you, to everyone. note that all donations add to the ever-growing prize, prize pool for these players. <laughs> so if you're appreciative of the display of skill that these players have put up for us so far, the entertainment that they've provided, every donation is greatly appreciated. Tato goes range stable right away. That's crazy. Usually it's like you start with one, you build up a few, you add in the range later. But Tato, with a little bit of a later uptime, with those extra hurtables, um, generating food for him, and the extra berries, which can't be overlooked as right. an additional food source for the Gajaras at the beginning, is able to go to multiple production buildings. And he's got three scouts, two archers on the field. We see only three archers, three spearmen on the field for Yo. And he can finally afford that wood upgrade which I think was, uh, he was a little bit strapped for cash earlier going for those militia. So the militia didn't pay off, basically, at all. No, absolutely not. And now we have the counterattack rolling forward here for Tato. It's about uh, three scouts and one camel scout. If they get forward before the walls come up there, Frio could find some counter damage. And while the walls were initially made to be very messy back at home for Tato, he's now had permission to extend. I say that we've got three archers looping around the left-hand side before that villager has completed the walls. And I think Yo is aware of it. Scouts it with the spear here. Tato sees the spear, tries to fight it away with the villager, but now he probably knows, I don't have permission to go for these walls just yet. I'm going to need some pr protection. 
You always such good fundamentals. Every single time Tato's hanging around his base with scouts, there's always at least one Spearman waiting there. Or if there's not a Spearman, it's pre-walled, right? And he knows that he can punish Tato because Tato's going to go for the greedy walls because he cleared out the militia early. Yeah. So he just loops around that very small army, finds value against that one villager. Eco KD is 1-0 to zero currently. Yo is still ahead in terms of resources gathered. And Fletching comes in at what seems to be the almost the perfect timing. He's still sitting on that wood line. Tato doesn't feel like it's that threatening. But with Fletching now, Yo can just turn around, clear up the Skirmisher and the Archer, and then maybe think about sniping these Vils. Yeah, at least there is Fletching on either side, and more Skirmishers coming back to help in the defense. On the other side, the Scouts are still probing for damage, but the walls come up in a brilliant fashion here for Yo to keep them out, at least for the time being. The Five chase archers. Yeah, Chase is on. Yo is not going to be able to hold on to this army for very much longer unless he manages to, to juke Tato and dodge back the other way, which I think Tato won't allow him to do as he's found him again. Six archers for Yo, four archers for Tato. That number is about to be evened up here as Tato will get the kills on these guys and the walls will go up and we'll likely make our way yeah. To the Castle H. Good little cleanup. But, uh, Dave, what an interesting dynamic, right? Normally this game does get relegated very quickly to walls and, you castle know, H, essentially yeah. fast castle. But uh, the cheeky militia move by Yo has made it at least a little bit messy, while in the end we will eventually stabilize into a mid-game. Well, I think it's definitely a prepared build from Tatra there to go archer range stable, right? Just right away. And go out to the gold and, and start getting that archer production and the scouts controlling the middle. I think he really, really wants to prevent Yo from controlling the game. Another great cleanup here for nice. Tato. I mean, this is a big military advantage. 13 to five now in total numbers and more powerful units on the field at that. These berries, I think Yo's gonna lose access to them once again <coughs> if the archers stick around. Long term, Gajaras probably have a good Civ matchup against Tatars. If you just think about the camels alone. Right. Camels have, are, are the answer to a lot of the units that the Tatars will make. And if Tato holds the map control, if he holds the middle area, controls where Yo can go out to the extra stones and the golds, it's a really solid position for him to push forward from. The resources for Tato are Amazing. beautiful. The resources for Yo, simply not there. So Tato will be up to Castle Age first. Way faster at the moment, it seems like, than Mr. Yo. Oh yeah, even utilizing the market, right? To make it that much quicker finding that last 100 food that he needs to click up and on the way to the Castle Age. 55 food in the bank in total here for Mr. Yo. So stuck in the Feudal Age for quite some time. He's up to two archery ranges and is beginning to pump out some archers. More scouts also being produced. Maybe feels like he has to get some counter damage. He wants, like, Yo wants to control the game. Yeah. He wants to be the guy that is constantly on the um, aggressive front and Tato is defending against him and he can control the movements or get sneaky attacks. But Tato with that military production, with this army still in the field, is forcing Yo to invest a little bit in defense, keep up the military production to keep his economy safe. And because of that, Tato gets a much nicer castle age time. And Tato, even if Yo is on one side with the army, feels like he can, can extend safely to that outer area, to the gold and the stone. On, on the other side of the map. Yeah, forcing more walls up at home here for Yo to try and keep himself safe. Yo gonna look for the same thing, find some exposed Palisade walls to look to batter through. Either way, still nowhere close to hitting the Castle Age for Yo. Yeah, I mean, even with those extra uh, food on the cows, right? Like, right. and that goes really, really hard on this map. If you have the extra food, it means you get into farms later. It means you don't have you have to have less villagers on wood. You can put those on the cows, and you should be up first. But Tato is reaching Castle Age at around the exact same time that Yo is going to click up to Castle Age. So Yo realizes he's in a really rough position. Crossbow upgrade coming in, Bodkin coming in. Yo needs to pull all of these units back and help defend his base and, and try not to lose them to the early Shravamsha potential or maybe Camel potential from Tato. I was say, and as soon as he pulls those units back, Tato reaches out for a second TC. Mm -hmm. Fully in the driver's seat here is Tato when he needs an all-important win in this series to keep things close. I just wonder, like, what's the response here from Yo? Because Yo isn't really the guy most of the time that will make three ranges and just go YOLO Cav Archers. Mm -hmm. um, but we could we could see it if he feels like he needs some sort of pushback pushback maybe he just extends outward for TCs and tries to defend this with some siege 
and some and some towers along the way. Tato still will have a big eco lead. Um, once Yo gets to Castle Age, I think he's going to have evened up the villager count already, and he's adding a third TC as well. Tato will have the map control lead, and Tato will likely still have the military advantage too. Yes. Although Yo is going for the flank. Okay, look at this. Yeah. Will the archers be enough against Crossbow? Well, I think the scouts might be enough nice. against the crossbows. That's probably the key element there. Yes, some of his feudal age archers do go down, but he will get the cleanup in the end. Of course, while that's happening, Tato intelligently rotating around mm -hmm. the other side with crossbows to once again look for damage and throw up a third TC back at home, extending that eco lead. Great map control from Tato over there, though. He's got the, the crossbows roaming around that left side. Yo is able to take out one army. Still has to be worried about the other one. Tato bringing the scouts back. Still just kind of adding in crossbows one at a time. Until Yo gets to Castle Age, there's really no threat to Tato at all. So once he sees that Castle Age timing from Yo, that's probably the moment where he needs to start thinking about adding extra production or adding a siege workshop or something along those lines. The eco balance feels a little strange here for Yo. He's got 800 food in the bank. I mean, obviously he's going to invest a bunch of it into That's upgrades cows, right dude. now. Yeah, it's the cows. <laughs> it's the doing cows. Work man. with the tars and the fact he had to stay in feudal age for so long producing archers. He still had the farms. He still had the cows, but he was making a, a, a wood gold unit. As he now goes for the university, crossbow upgrade comes in. Bod can up great comes in still no cav archers so he's just gonna play crossbow forward siege workshop would not surprise me from yo but he's gonna have a tough time affording ballistics and that siege and the crossbow right going for ballistics first very clearly because of the the university being rushed up here with a forward army as well though just making tato think right you definitely don't want to let up or give your opponent too much room to breathe is that a university or siege workshop from tato there's one in his base there. Okay, Siege, it's Siege Workshop. Workshop. So he's not going to fo focus on the aggro. He's not going to go for ballistics of his own. He's just going to try and defend. He knows the economic state of Mr. Yo. He's been around that base multiple times. He knows that he has the, the third town center and second town center, for that matter, up way faster. And he should have at least a 10 villager lead at this point. Yeah. I think with the Civ matchup the way it is, Tato can just play defense keep expanding his eco, and eventually he's going to find himself in a position where he can really outproduce Mr. Yo. I was going to say, I mean, yeah, Tato feels like he's in a I can do nothing position, right, and still win this game. Yeah. Right? Just keep kind of cruise don't make mistakes. your yeah. way to victory and don't make major mistakes. So some units traded here on the front lines. Tato's going to buy himself some time by running these crossbows to the corner of the map. Yo, seeing this on the left-hand side, decides to reach out for a TC on the right to expand just a little bit, get himself some access to some long-term stone and gold. For Tato, it's just three TCs back at home, hasn't made a trip out to the wings as of yet. Look at the look at the farm uh, eco expanding here from Tato. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful, right? He's macroing like a god. He's He's got the army now being produced. I think he had some uh, camels in the queue? No, that was Mr. Yo that had camels. It, Tato actually going for a Shivamsha and pushing forward with some more crossbows as Mr. Yo just extends for two additional town centers, one on each side. So that might be just in case Tato decides to push. He knows he won't have enough to defend. He can always run back to the other area. Yo's just giving himself options for mm -hmm. another two-hour game. You want to push me on the right? Great. I'll expand to the left insurance policies at the very least. We've got a couple Scorpions rolling forward. Elite Skirmisher coming in mm -hmm. here for Tato. So once again, just, just defense. It's a safe unit, yeah. exactly. And he's ahead by 20 vils now. So he's feeling very comfortable. Good splits there for the crossbows. It's going to be so important for Yo to keep his numbers alive, right? Way less margin for error in this game than Tato does overall because of the advantage that Tato's already garnered for himself. 20 villager advantage and climbing. Food for Tato is looking ridiculous. 35 on food right now for him, and that's basically all farming. There is the university being placed from Tato. In contrast to that, we have Mr. Yo just getting his second wood upgrade with 19 on food. It's not looking fantastic. Yo is going to have to really do something, and this is all in the back of just like some failed feudal aggression Yeah. with the two militia, or I guess Dark Age he was at at that point, and... You know, not getting the full walls up before Tato showed up at his base. Over investment. Tato gets a tiny lead and he just he snowballs it into this eco advantage, which is huge. Over 20 villager eco lead. 
Yeah, he really wanted that one villager pick, right, at the beginning and sacked half the scout's health and one of his militia in order to look for it. Didn't even find it in the end. Hill position here, controlled by Tato. It's the position that the Tatar player would want to have. Solid hits from the Scorpions, but they're getting targeted by the Camels and eventually go down. So now it's Crossbow Camel v. Crossbow. And Does Yo end, come forward off the back of this fight? Because th Thumb Ring is big here. Like, Thumb Ring is really, really big here for Mr. Yo. Remember, he got that automatically. He's not going to be able to clear that up. They've, He's got to, right? He has to. He's, wow. he's got the siege now, and he just goes for another TC. Yo's like, I've played two-hour games against you. I think we know who's going to come out on top. Are they, are they going to do it to us, Dave? Yeah. Are they going to do it to us? I mean, I like to believe that with the eco lead that Tato has built, that he should be able to shut this down or at least punish Yo for extending out to a fourth TC and investing in that. Tato's so comfortable. It's actually disgusting how comfortable he is in yeah. this game right now. Ballistics on the way for him. That'll make the skirmishers that much more effective at sniping the crossbow numbers. This mangonel is slowly rolling forward. Tato finally makes his way out to one of the wings to establish a TC position. Needs to get more on gold overall. Only six on gold at home currently. But if he makes that adjustment, boom, jumps up to 10, right as I say that. And that's going to help him increase the numbers of military. And we can see... Still a 25 villager advantage overall. At some point in this game, we're going to look over at Tato's military. It's going to be hanging around the mid-20s, 30s or something like that, and suddenly it's just going to be up 50. Yeah. Right, because the eco is going to kick in. All the upgrades are going to kick in. Once he clicks up to Imperial Age, he'll start that production. Once he gets Shatrias from the first castle for less uh, food investment, it's really, really going to kick here for the Gajaras, and Yo is just going to be playing catch-up that entire time. However, saying that... Tato still has not gone out to any stone. Mr. Yo has been on stone this whole time. So if Yo continues to hold this position and continues to just stay 20 villagers behind the entire time, maybe he can get a castle position on one of these, these outer edges and start really, really pushing the gold supply and the stone supply from Tato. Yeah, Tato just playing this so safe, though, right? Investing in the upgrades ever so slowly. Chain barding coming in now for those camels and the Shavampshire riders. <laughs> we had Gaia POV. That was pretty great. Everything seemed peaceful. Yeah. From the sheep's perspective. Ooh, hill advantage, though, once again for Tato. Great to find that against the Tatar player. Looking to snipe that Manganel as well. That was trying to pressure nice. the TC and does ultimately find it. It has a Manganel of his own. So Yo turning tail to run. It would be so Yo, right? So, so, yo. so Yo. It would be so like Mr. Yo right now to just go for a castle on that right side, like on Tato's face while Tato is busy over here. I don't think it's going to happen, but he does have an outpost and there is a gold over there and he almost has enough stone. It doesn't feel like you can get away with a castle aggressively over here. And if I know Mr. Yo, he wants to be aggressive in this situation. Yeah, Manganel finds contact and does ultimately get the kill. It's sniped in return though for either player. So no more siege to work with for the time being. Yo continues to retreat. Villagers going forward on the yeah, left hand side. Yeah, he goes for the castle because he knows Tato's paying attention over here. Tato has no vision on that side. He's gonna get aggressive with that castle over on the gold and the stone. Tato has extended a little bit over to the right though. So even if Yo kicks him off this area, Tato still has some presence on the gold it, to the right side as Tato can see that castle foundation. Obviously it's not marked like that on his mini map. So I don't know if he fully realizes that that is a castle. He does, he's pulling away. Okay, he just evacuates the position and he'll Still no stone though. The right hand side, yeah. Still no stone for Tato. But the army count, what did I say? We're, we're up to 48 now. It's finally kicked. He's, He's still almost 20 villagers ahead. He's almost pop-capped in the castle age. As Tato now buys food, goes for handcart. He should be able to click up to Imperial Age soon. He's looping around to the stone on the right side. And now he will try and take control of that right area of the map and cede control of the left to Mr. Yo. But... Mr. Yo has to be extremely worried about this counterattack that is incoming. Yeah, again, like we said, Yo's, or, uh, Tato's just not taking any risks, right? As soon as he sees that castle position comes up, he says, fine, you can have this, you know, this, uh, you know, map control for now. I'll come and take it back a little bit later. Just going to make sure I don't lose an excessive number of vills. Finally gets himself onto some solid stone income. But here we have some pressure coming forward. Yeah, we've got some Keshiks involved, and Keshiks are quite a good unit. Unfortunately, a little bit countered by the Camels. 
uh, from Tato, especially with the extra bonus damage afforded by the Gajaras as these camels try and make their way through the houses. Yo will need to notice that and get some defenses set up, but in the front of Tato's base, he is pushing in with the crossbows. I don't see a Manganol queued here for Tato, but he's got more than enough skirmishers, and that's a really, really difficult position for Yo to push in from. Tato also has the town center set up on the right. He's on stone with 11 villagers. He's on the way to Imp, and he should be thinking about a castle soon. Yeah, Yo feeling like he needs to get some damage Ooh, done. Ooh, this is the castle that I was talking about earlier. That's one way to deliver damage there. Your opponent's on the way to the Imperial Age. You're definitely working from a deficit, but a forward castle position to try and control more important resources <laughs> could be big. <laughs> <laughs> I am Yo, King of the, the wood. wood. That's insane. I will chop. Castle's going up, Dave. Castle is going up. The skirmishers, no siege to back it up. No cavalry anymore. So it's just skirms at this rate. Yo can kind of ignore that for the time being. Castle goes up on the town center from Tato and... Yo just goes for another castle. Tato needed stone way earlier, Dash. Like, it was a it was a minor problem in Castle Age. It's going to be a massive problem in Imperial. The fact he hasn't had enough stone to place a castle. He does have a market, though. Sell all the wood. Buy the stone that you need. There get you a go. castle up yourself. He's trying. He does have the stone count for the castle now. He's going to pull the villagers back to safety and drop that castle position finally. With Imperial Age coming in, he'll be able to start trebbing things back. But Yo has bought himself some time in this game. And while we talked about it, you know, Tato doesn't want to take too much risk. He wants to ensure himself a victory in this game. You give Yo too much room to breathe, like we saw in the last game, he will fight his way back into it. Yeah, and suddenly there's a corridor of castles in between your town centers over there on the right. After you lost the position on the left, like... That's not the situation Tato wants to be in. He still has an advantage in this game, but Yo has made it messy enough to get himself comfortably up to 120 villagers. He's going up to the Imperial Age. He's got a Mangonel get on the hill with Tatars. Mangonel shots on the skirms. Boom! Oh! Ew, Mr. Yo! 20 units fold like paper in that moment. And just like that, the military numbers equalize. Yo has clicked his way up to the Imperial Age. A minute and 45 seconds till he gets there. He's got a lot of castle positions which he can sit behind and try and buy himself the time. He was so far behind. And the population is almost even. Heavy camel will continue to be an issue for Yo. That's what we were concerned about in this Civ matchup, right? What do Tutars have? Well, they have like the worst halberdiers in the game. Uh, from the civs that actually get halves. Oh, so we see the replay here. Let's watch it again. Let's see. Is Yo even paying attention? Wait, does he not even see? Oh, he's like, okay. oh, this is nice. He's like, Ooh. And that was an attack round from him. Look that was not a right click. That was a nice attack round. He knew exactly where Tato was going to be moving through. Look at this, though. Two castles removing two TC positions. Keshix, they stream in. They're going to pick up some villager kills. They're also going to pick up some gold yep. because that's one of the benefits of that unit. Oh, boy. Tato... Oh is still quite low on gold currently. He's got 29 on it right now, but he needs to afford more trebs, needs to afford his upgrades. Yo will get to Imperial Age, floating a comfortable amount of food and gold, has enough stone to repair this castle for a little while longer. Tato still has the advantage, but Mr. Yo has done everything he can to pull himself into this game. Yeah. I mean, three trebs on Tatar the field, out. don't get us wrong. Tato is still in a winning position. But at this point, now he's the one who needs to push the pace. We've got the Camels looking to dive in on top of the Keshiks and the Crossbows. A solid numbers here for Mr. Yo, but the first castle position goes down. Might need to look to retreat. Don't want to fight into those heavy Camels as they'll make quick work of the Keshiks, and he sacks the Crossbows and the Mangonel just to get out of dodge. I think the problem for the problem for Yo is going to be the tech tree. Yeah. Right, what do you do against heavy Camel, and then they mix in Chakram? It, you're, you're out of luck, basically. I mean, I guess you can go into Flaming Camel, but that is a unit that you can only use once. And you can only use against masked up groups of camels from Tato. It's going to be really, really difficult for Mr. Yo to get anything going. He's going for crop rotation again. Oh, no. It's like, I know how I can be. Oh, my goodness. I wear you into Yeah, it. he's already he's already marked all the wood lines, right? He's always like, oh, my goodness. Halberdier is in. 
But those are going to get cleaned up by the camels in large mass. We have another castle position being established here for Tato, and Yo is getting shoved off of the right-hand side. He's thinking about a counter raid with those Keshiks, but runs into the open arms of a castle at home for Tato as well. Tato doing a good job of keeping himself safe. Mm -hmm. And if Tato takes full control over this southern area, he can start pushing into the middle. And I don't know if Tato keeps the camels near the Trebs, I don't know if there's really any way that Yo can clear that stuff. Boston meetup. Hello, oh. Boston. We got a we got a viewing party here. We Boston. got viewing parties in Boston. Boston. What up? Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Europeans are like, what <laughs> are they right. doing? These guys are <laughs> clowns. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but see, look at this. I mean, yo, again, ever the fighter. He says, yes, I'm going to lose ground on the southern part of the map, but I'm going to look to take some ground on the northern section of the map. Tatar's utilizing those hills so incredibly well. He's got a good mass of Keshiks and Halberdiers along with Monks to protect those Trebs. Tato's going to keep creeping forward here on the southern side. Still feels advantage Tato, but by the same token, both players are pop -capped. How do we like, get here? It feels like Tato doesn't know where to go. Like, Yo has... Yo just has a clear idea in his mind where he wants to push Tato, right? And then he's got priority number two loaded up in case Tato defends there. Tato is like, should I defend on the bottom? Should I defend here? Do I need to push the the, the bottom side of Yo's base? Do I need to push the middle? And Flaming Camel Tech is on the oh way. Oh my goodness, so he's going for it. So Yo has identified his counter to these camels, which is going to be Flaming Camels. Also, it affects the traps, so he might, just, he might just get it for the traps. That's a good point. But Dave, that castle being removed at home, you see one being rushed up in the back of the eco there for Tato. These Keshiks are about to wreak havoc on the farm. He's got 10 in the queue, Dash. Oh he, my goodness. He's into the eco from There's Tato. No way. What is happening? There's no way, How is dude. this possible, man? How is this possible? I mean, again, don't get us wrong. It's still 135 villagers here for Tanto, 44 military on the field, but it's 67 on the other side. He is absolutely oh, consuming those Keshiks with the camels. A power unit, to say the least. Now a castle trying to be rushed up as well for Yo on the left-hand side. We found ourselves in a split position on the map here, Dave. Yo's population. Oh, he saw that flaming camel, kind of I dropping. think. Tato might have seen the flaming camel. He'll also see the range on the trebuchets. And that's kind of something you lock into when they attack something at max range. You're like, hey, wait a second. This, right. this is this is not natural. This is not normally. This is not normally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. check, check him PC. Check him PC. As the camels come in at the backside here, Mr. Yo continues to be at 186 population. Tato is at 193. He can't get in. There's no room. The flaming oh, no. camels are here. And you can see how well they do against the camels. He's running, but there's nowhere to run. <laughs> <laughs> the camels don't even need they just, let me out! They're just cornering him in there to let the halberdiers do their work. And look at this, another castle position back at home for Tato. Soon to go down, no military there to respond. It looks like we're going for a base trade of sorts. A little bit of a base trade, that's true. Castle set up in the, in the northern area there for Mr. Yo. Castle set up over to the right side for Tato. And Yo is now pressuring the farming eco from Tato. And Tato, will he be able to repair this castle? Look at how far those Trebs are firing at that castle from. They are in Narnia right now as the camels oh. come in. Solid hits. Some solid-ish hits. And, and the Halberdiers are there. Yep, they're targeting the Trebs, not the camels. He wants to take the siege off the map, and he finds one. I don't... He's going to get the No, if he'll get all three, but he does get two yep. in the end. So that's a good little win. Oh, <laughs> Keshiks against camels still. Uh, he does have halberdiers, though, too. You want to see those move in. He's got in. One, one flaming camel. We have camels versus flaming camels. And Dave, he's got more in the queue. At a certain point, I just have to sit here in utter awe of Yo's ability to extend games. Yep. From what feels or felt like a near doom position, yep. fuel age onward when it didn't go right for him early. And yet, look at this. Tato's on the run with 27 villagers. on food. I was like, I was thinking, wow, Yo's Fudiko got hit hard 25. I look over at Tato, 25 on food for him now too, because he cut off the farms. And he's going to be getting gold from all of dead these bills. engagements with the Keshiks. A lot of dead bills over here. Flaming Camels coming in again. They get some decent hits against the Camels. It's not, I, it's not as good as I thought it would be. I'm going to yeah. be honest. But um, it's a little bit of value here and there.
Occasionally, and it's just gonna make, it's gonna force Tanto to have to pay attention, right? If ever you have a lapse in, yeah. uh, you know, it's intimidating span around big units. If nothing else, yeah, big unit mass. Look at that, 80 military units on the field here for Yo. He is working with a kind of scrappy economy, only up to 112 villagers himself. Both players are scraping that 200 population mark as well, though. Once again, we're locked to an Imperial Age battle. But I think that's where, as time goes on, we talk yep. about the composition for Grajaras, oh, and we see the hand cannons coming dude, out onto the field. I think with the extra range, those Trebs can attack that castle from the hill there. I think they'd be right on the edge of that hill. It's actually ridiculous what Tataris can do, but hand cannons are big here. Flaming Camels don't do a ton of damage against them, even if they're grouped up. Uh, the monks are going to try and convert. I don't know why Yo has so many monks, but once again, he has the relic lead with 3-2 to two mm -hmm. over Tato. Keshik still haven't been used for anything but really killing villagers. Ooh, no conversions. Loses all three monks. Is looking for a castle position, so rotating his trebs around. He's been so patient with these Keshiks, hasn't he? It's very like, impressive. Like, so patient. He's not throwing them in, taking bad fights. He's trying to bait Tato into patrolling into these Keshiks, and then maybe he can get a good hit with the Flaming Camels. However, the Flaming Camels have been found. Keshiks pulled back, Halberdiers come forward to be the front line. The Flaming Camels didn't find too much. And the Camels can't do anything. How can Camels not do anything against Tatars? It's, it's, it's ridiculous, Yo's control has been insane. How can he range that castle? He's on another hill, he's on another he's hill. He's on another continent. <laughs> And Siege Engineers isn't even in! And then look at this, a raiding group of Keshiks flooding into the back of Tato's base. He's gonna have to track that as well. Military numbers continue to look good for Yo overall. A battle on the hill. It's Halberdiers and Keshiks versus Hand Cannons and Camels. I think in the end, with the numbers, as long as the Halberdiers get out in front and protect those Keshiks, the Keshiks can start to clean up the Hand Cannons. He needs to pull him back though. He's trying to bait the Camels into a big engagement. And they flaming come camels, in with flaming the Flaming camels. camels. They get bonus against Siege. Maybe Yo can go after those Bomber Cannons. Doesn't look like he sees it. Doesn't now even need him. Now he's like, I don't want to waste these things. Let's see how well they do against the hand cannons. Here come the camels. Yeah. They're not even. Uh, do it. Uh, hey! hey! <laughs> <laughs> there, there's an element of it that's just so <laughs> underwhelming, but I love that it's happening regardless. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tato is at 130 population. I, I, Yo I, is at 160. I cannot believe the recovery. He was ahead by 20 villagers for 10 minutes of the game. Find he me had a double the player. army. He had double the army. Find me a he better comeback player. He just didn't go player. on the stone on time, and Yo punished that. And Yo found every stone that Tato was taking. Mr. Yo's too good at He's crazy. He's too good at this game. He's wild. I mean, again, it's still not over. He is fighting Keshik's into a lot of camels here, and over time, the camels are going to win out. The queue is still there at the moment here for Tato, though I say that, 40 on food and no food in the bank, only six on wood 61 well. on food for Yo. Wow. 61 on food for Yo. And the Trebs continue pushing forward, and now they have one plus one additional range from what they had before, so, you know, if you're in game here and you don't play at the higher resolutions, you're not even going to see where those things are coming from. Bombard Tower? When's the last time we saw Bombard Tower with Tatars? I, I couldn't tell you. I didn't even know they got that. <laughs> what does the architecture like, look like on that thing? I mean, Yo is just, he's falling into the rhythm that he had in the previous game on Copenhagen. Yeah. Right? He's setting himself up for the long game. The bank is looking good. He's got 2,500 wood in the bank. And now we're going to take a replay of these underwhelming flaming camels closing the gap on the hand cannons. They do ultimately eliminate them. Let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him. I'm glad we slow mode that. Yeah, that, that was, was definitely worth the uh, yeah. slow-mo. Back to real time. And the push is on. Look at this. I mean, again, 75% of the map here controlled Bombard by Tower. Yo. Bombard Tower. And Town so Patrol is coming in. Not. Because Yo wants all the vision he can get. Look at that army of flaming camels. They're coming in, folks. Oh, now these could the be some can get value against them. Yo needs to just click them in. They can't be standing there with the Chakrams behind. Bombard cannons are going to go down. They get the good engagements against the camels. And then suddenly, the Keshiks are going to be there to try and clear up the Chakrams. Are there Trebs still alive in this area from Mr. Yo? I believe they're under the castle. They're, they're working south. another a castle down. That's absolutely 
insane from Yo. He's getting the Keshik number up again. He's up at 160 population, but Tato on the other side has somewhat managed to stabilize. Those are the weirdest looking bomber towers I've ever seen in my entire life. And Tato is at 175 population. What is that? It is strange ar architecture. I don't think I've ever seen that. But it's great map control here for Mr. Yo, right? It's going to make it very hard for Tato to ever push out of his base. He's even forced to drop another castle back at home while he loses one in the south here, once again getting cornered on this map and strangled out of the game. Ooh. 120 villagers apiece, 50 military apiece. It is still a very even game, but the Keshiks are now targeting yet another TC. Camel's coming over to give them some reprieve and keep those villagers alive. Keshik's running. Tato needs this win. He needs this. Oh yeah, and he's and he's trying to recover his position. Chakram that numbers he had. are big, though. Chakram numbers are great for Tato. The unfortunate reality with Chakrams is that they're slower than a lot of the other units you've been making, right? They have limited range, and if you fall below that like number of 15 Chakrams, they suddenly become generally useless against cavalry. You need the big numbers. You need them all in one place, and Yo's going to take advantage of that and raid in different areas of the map. The Chakrams can't reach. He's disconnecting Look at Tato's, this line of Bombard right? Towers. That's the thing. He's disconnecting Tato's base, right? But like, can, we, can we see Yo's line of sight? Honestly, because I, I don't think there's much he missed. He's the GG! GG! No way, dude! No way! What is going on, Dave? I mean, just Yo has found another level. He's ascended. He's hit his god tier. What on earth did he eat and or drink? Or what <laughs> is going on with Mr. Yo? He, he, he looks calm. He looks collected. He's got a game plan. I'm going to take this to the late game. And I'm just gonna beat you with experience. And it's and it's like you're playing this way against Tato. I one of the greatest players the game has ever seen. I am beside myself. Yeah. I am literally having an out of body experience right now it's watching crazy. this level of play out of Mr. Yo. We talked about how we favor the Gurjaras in that Civ matchup. We talk about the awful start in the Dark Age mm -hmm. and Feudal Age there for Mr. Yo. And even still see I mean I mean, Seemingly just, with ease. Yeah. He, he, he just strolled right back into that game and took it. He stole it away from Tato. He didn't make that much more military than Tato. Even in early stages of Castle Age, he was never able to push. But Tato made one mistake. He did not go out to stone early enough, did not lock it down, and Mr. Yo did everything he could to punish that. That is absolute insanity from Yo, and I think that game, in many ways, is even more impressive than the previous game yeah. that he just won. I, I like the control that he had once he clicked up to Imperial Age from that point onwards he had control over every single area of the map and Tata was just constantly responding to him. Yeah. The player who was behind was the one dictating the fights, mm -hmm. right? He was the one deciding where and when the fights would occur, taking those all important hills, utilizing here here? the utilizing the treb range to great oh. effect. D90, Nilly. Ooh. We got some solid Jordan. football players, by the way, in this group of people. Yeah, it's like, it's hard to it's hard to really know when you have a bouncy watermelon beach ball thing. Mm -hmm. Solid, solid, yeah, solid, C9. solid. Okay, control. let's go, boys. Ooh, oh, control. Well done. Right oh. back up to the juggle over over to Nilly. Nilly. Ooh, with back the to header. D90. Back to the double touch. Little interlude. Ooh, nice little. Look at us go, baby. Outside. Off the wall. Play the wall. Yeah. What, I'm, I, th can we just take a break from casting for a second? We don't have to cast this too. <sighs> oh man! I mean, okay. How does that four to one? From this? How do you recover? Is How the big question. Do you recover because now this you one. can you, no more mistakes to give. No more mistakes to give. That's if what it felt like after last game. If yeah, that's true. But if Tata wants a bid into the finals, he has to win four games straight. For Mr. Yo. It only takes one. And the funny thing is, like, even if Yo wins this next game, <clears throat> we're going to be right on time with a 5-1 victory. <laughs> <laughs> Eustace. Ooh. Eustace. Hello. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, puppy. Sorry, guys. I just had to pet the dog. All right. Let's take a look. Let's take a look here. I mean, Tato still has three of his own home maps remaining. I think at this point, just go, you got to go for one of your own home maps. I still like the idea of like a rocky forest. Let's go. Let's go fast, 
right? These extended games. I'm really surprised he went to outcrop there. Yeah. I'm like, because outcrop's always going to be a longer game. It felt like something. I mean, maybe Tato didn't want a super short uh, loss, right? He wanted to get back his feel. Maybe he uh, was struggling after the loss on Copenhagen, but still, it, Rocky Forest was just such a mix up from what you just went through in the previous two hours. Exactly. It felt like an option. Might go to that now. That, of course, was one of uh, was one of Yo's home maps. Tato will need to win everything going coming forward. He will need to win the remaining home map for Mr. Yo Drive Graveyards, and then all three of his own: African Rebeds, Langanati, Rocky Forest. And we've got the confirmation: Rocky Forest will be the pick. Soon we'll be entering the game as we see the players with the fingers firing. Again, Yo has set himself up in such brilliant position to only need to take one game to only find essentially one more moment of brilliance to wrap it up and earn himself a bid into the best of nine finals, awaiting an opponent of either Hera or the Viper. All that said, you still got to get it done. And Tato, ever the fighter as well, if he can string four together, it would be similarly one of the most impressive series comebacks we've ever seen. Lock it in, folks. Lock it in. Game six Do you right believe? here. Do you believe in Tato? Romans for him. Berbers. For Mr. Yo, okay. which is uh, a, a little bit of, of a Civ mix-up, right? You would expect Berbers on Copenhagen or Outcrop or something like that, but right. gives them some flexibility. Romans for Tato, very dangerous Civ in his hands. Do you remember the game that he played against Hera on this map? It, it, it is hard to forget but also easy at the same time because the game on either side of that were absolutely unreal with the Copenhagen and Arena. It's true. The one that Tato played against Hera here, he went forward with, I believe, the Armenians. He went full feudal scouts, pikemen, towers, everything. I would not be surprised with a similar approach here from the Romans. Well, we wait on beta breath then to see if that will become a reality. Camel party. Again, by the same token, Berbers, as you mentioned, while uh, would have been expected on some of the other previous maps, is a somewhat natural pick here in terms of their useful uh, use of mobility, right? Cheaper knights once we get to the castle age, and given these rocky terrains, makes it near impossible to get fully walled, and therefore knights can be an incredibly effective unit. Yep. Camel archers, also super solid in mass. The problem here... How are you going to use that mobility, right? Because you're usually fighting over this middle area. This rocky terrain, and the reason it's called Rocky Forest, rocks all around the forest. You can't wall on it. Everybody knows you can't build on rock. Yeah, you can't build on rock. It's just it's just not salt. Grass is great. An impossibility. Yeah, cracked earth terrain is fantastic. Rock, not so much. Bog terrain, also <laughs> applicable. As Loom comes in now for Tato, he might be thinking about going up here, 19 population. Yo going to disrupt this uh, deer push? Yep. And that's a solid strategy on this one. Yo got the first hit, too. So Tato's got to be careful. Tato is trying to fight this while wow, still this pushing is the deer. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, he's got to pull a build up. <laughs> You've got to pull a build. Oh, Tato. You're going to lose. Okay. No, oh, he's fine, goodness. man. It's just, you know, it's just another day. It's just another day in the rock, and then he shoots it five tiles away, but whatever. Yeah, but, like, if you were questioning Tato's resilience, I think that is a perfect display yeah. of a player who's still not that shaken, right? I'm sure very unhappy to have lost yeah. the previous two games, but not so shaken that he's still willing to go he might be for a stirred, gutsy though. play like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's shaken, but he might be stirred. He might this be guy. Stirred. Huh. Sir, that's actually pretty brutal. That is brutal. What is going on there? Oh, when you only have 18 villagers and efficiency on one of them down to essentially zero. My dude. Hasn't realized yet Get either. it together. That is not what your overlord needs right now. Still. I guess, sorry, y'all. This is what we're going to focus on because it's it, it matters. I, I don't think I've ever seen that on Hunt before. Oh. There we go. She moves. And he finally gets it together. But that so tells you how long it was. She hit 35 <coughs> food. 35 food, so that's minus 35 food for Tato. That's brutal. That's, that's absolutely brutal. I, I haven't seen that on Hunt before. Not like that Ooh. in open field. Nice little snipe there from Mr. Yo on the scout. The opening, maybe not what Tato wanted, but still not devastating. As he goes for the wood upgrade, he goes for the farm upgrade. He starts to add spearmen. Now, Romans can get the second infantry armor, or basically double, upgrades from their infantry armor yes. in the feudal age and the castle age so plus two in feudal 
plus four in Castle if they get them all. Also, Scorpions are cheaper, right? Scorpion, Lime, minimum range reduced, so just overall a better unit, and they can get Ballistics. But the big thing for Romans, everything is 5% fast. Yeah, just the overall economy boost of yeah. that 5% is something that we cannot overstate over the course of a game, continuing to tick, tick, tick up. But finally coming forward with a new fresh scout to look for some information. Yo on the other side, establishing somewhat of a frontline wall here with a number of his buildings, has a stable up of his own. No more scouts in the queue though, just some spearmen. First one though over to the wood line to protect. And uh, Town Watch as well. I love Town Watch uh, generally as an investment, yo, especially on this map. Yo gets it a lot yeah. in Feudal Age, like as, especially maps where you're kind of wondering where your opponent's going to approach from. Yo has no problem sacrificing the time it takes to make a villager or the food to get Town Watch. He wants that vision. We saw it last game. He takes advantage of having a, his great map understanding, which was on the player write-up. Yeah. And already going for second barrier location too, right? With safe walls, pre-walling in both cases to make sure that these melee units aren't going to find any damage. That's going to require Tato to either move into some form of range or just concede that his opponent is going to have a great food eco. So Yo making a few scouts. The eco for Tato should be better here. 5% bonus on everything. He's got the farm set up and he got horse collar really quickly, right? So most of those farms, if not all, are taking advantage of horse collar. Yo with the same thing, but very, very passive opening to Rocky Forest. Very passive opening. Who do you favor there? I think I, I would favor the Romans currently just because of the eco bonus. Yeah. You have 5% on everything, right? It, it, it seems like a, a solid bet. I just wonder what Tato's strategy is gonna be pushing into the castle age. And also, conversely, what what is Yo gonna go for? Because if he's just spamming stable units in, might not be the greatest play ever against Romans. Yeah, I, I imagine it, it is, though, still Night Spam trying to play mobility and buy himself the time to get to the Imperial Age. If I'm Yo in this series, I'm just confident yeah. in my Imperial Age play. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got that Camel Archer insurance. If you can get a couple castles up, we know how important middle control is on this map because of all of the Golden Stone there. So that's my thinking in terms of the Berber player. But like you say, you are working at an eco deficit for every second that ticks on. Yep. Tato's resources collected are extending just that much further. 28 vills here for Mr. Yo, 30 villagers for Tato, and that difference is due to Town Watch and 21 seconds of idle TC there for Yo, so that's a little bit more than Tato, and that just adds to Tato's eco lead. We see the food counts for both players looking really, really solid. Also, we have to point out, Berbers do get extra speed on their villagers, which especially helps out with the farmers or long distance resource gathering. Even that wood line, right? Because your yeah. lumber camps are yeah. placed so far back. So. It's not that big of a deal, but it adds up over yeah. time for sure. It's helpful. It's probably like one wood every trip. Okay, Tato investing into forging. This could be big if we have an engagement between units in the middle of the map. It's spearmen and scouts on either side. Tato at the moment lo er, looking for the engagement there. Yo avoids it. <laughs> All right, hey, you go get counter damage while I get counter damage. I like it. The handshake. Yeah, I go this way, you go that way. <laughs> Forging will really help against the Vils and the Spearmen, though. Right. From Tato. Really, really help against them. Yo is going to show up here. Tato is going to have that Spearman. Remember, if Tato invests uh, a little bit of food into the infantry upgrade, it will count twice for him. So his Spearman will be really difficult no, for Yo to villages, take out. though, is very dangerous. He only has one spear, a second one arriving judgment, to the though. fight. Great yeah. job by Tato as well here to use his Spearman ultimately around the wood line while wreaking havoc with the scouts as well. Manages to pick two of the scouts off from Yo in the process while not losing a single one of his own. Yeah, that went so much lines. better for Tato. Yeah. That goes so much better. And there's the infantry armor upgrade right there. Eight spearmen, now plus two armor. That's the equivalent of having the Castle Age uh, armor upgrade for any other civilization. Here is Yo deletes the, the lumber camp behind. Very interesting. And um, I guess he's got another one there. It's fine. It's just weird to see it deleted so early. Right. Maybe yeah. he didn't like it. I, I appreciate it, though, keeping the eco pretty, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and does get through that rocky terrain so he, he can have a more efficient lumber camp at that. We also saw the market go down for Mr. Yo. So looking for eco balance and, again, looking towards the Castle Age. Way more food in the bank for him while he does have less villagers overall working on food. Nice villager snipe there from Tato. He finds one on the gold, but the scouts 
trying to weasel their way in there. The Spearman says not today. And the Villagers are really, really struggling to take out these Spearmen. Tato manages to take out a Spear from Mr. Yo. Be and big. now, because it's taken so long for the Villagers to batter these Spearmen down with plus two armor, the Scouts have arrived and Villagers will die on the wood line. That's another two deaths. 3-0 Eco KD Scouts for have Tato. Forging. Scouts have forging as well, right? That's going to pack a really serious punch. He's got to focus the Spearman down still, and he's using this his armor own is coming to in do so that. clutch. The Those bills are taking forever to kill the Spearman. And forging is huge against not only the villagers, but also the Spearman from Mr. Yo. It also affects Tato's spears too. Yo is buying resources. Yo is getting up to Castle Age. But where are the villagers? They're all dead. Yeah, we asked for the pace switch up, mm -hmm. and Tato has delivered what here he on Rocky Forest. 100%. Yeah. Castle Age click here for Mr. Yo, but by the time he gets there, he's, he's going to get another one. He's going to have no bills to work with. Dead, 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 dead. Seven villagers gone in a flash for Mr. Yo. Tato is in a great position. Yo is on the way to Castle Age, but for what? He doesn't even have any vills on wood right now, and that's his last straggler tree right there. He uses his wood to make a stable. All in and night. he's going to have to buy more even to make a lumber camp. Yeah, it's going to be all in night last day. He won't be able to quick wall here pretty soon. He's going to be running out of wood. Okay, he's got w two villagers over there on the lumber camp that Tato is trying to break into. One of them's going to have to repair and or they're Not both happening. going to Sorry. die. Joe's got bigger end. fish to fry, apparently, which is this army. So it's probably good that he focused on quick walling over there instead of saving these two. Yeah, he's uh, 50 seconds away from the castle age. Basically, I'm looking at the amount of food and gold he has currently. All of that going to get dumped into some knights. But once again, like we said, that means you're running knights into spearmen that already yeah. have double the armor upgrade and forging. They're not going to hate to take that fight. Where is, Ta where is Yo even taking wood? I think he went for another lumber camp over. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't have even camp. have a lumber camp. Ooh, oh, he's got to so have to brutal. buy wood. He was hoping those villagers had dropped off enough. They didn't. And he's going to have to either wait for them to come back or buy wood for another lumber camp. Brutal position, and he's spending some of that gold that he needs to buy wood with on more knights here. But Tato has a lot of spearmen, so I don't even think Yo can clear that up. Now, Tato is loving where he's at. If anything, it might be sending those knights forward and trying to equalize with, in terms of damage. But as we say that, look at the line of spearmen waiting yeah. for any counterattacks. Yeah. Yeah, this is this it should be a win for Tato. If Yo manages to come back from this one, I know we've seen a couple games there with incredible comebacks, but if he manages this one, then well, he deserves the five one because this is a, a really bad position for him to be in. Down ten villagers right now. The spearmen are still in his base. The knights don't have the upgrades. There's no potential to really go for a counterattack here because you can't leave this army alone. You yeah. you just have to respect the potential damage that this army has from Tato in the back of your economy. 16 spears, soon to be 16 pikemen. And as I say, the upgrade comes in. Those four knights cannot take this fight. Oh boy. This Just, is a rough position for Yo, but he keeps playing because it's Mr. Yo. Because, yeah, exactly. And he's got some food in the bank. He's got some gold in the bank. He can maybe go for some more knights. There's the monastery right there. What is Tato's game plan as far as a follow-up goes? Just more knights, 16 pikemen, squires. The plus two armor on the infantry could be huge I here, think too. In eventual Siege Workshop, too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, for now, he's happy to just keep producing the same units and even going to go town center. for a uh, town center. Very it's calm town center, too. I think only one villager building that. So that's how you can tell he's in a comfortable position. Exactly. Yo has found his way back onto wood, but I think Tato's aware of that. So wouldn't be surprised if exactly you this. You wouldn't be surprised? I wouldn't. Mm. No, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> the scouts come rolling back over. Pikemen as well. This is going to be a good, efficient trade for them, even if the numbers do get cleaned up in the end to the knights. But, oh, my God, look how effective that armor is. And more villagers going down over by the wood line. It's just too much for Yo to try and keep up with. Yeah, and Tato still has 10 pikemen. Even after losing a lot of those units, he still has 10 pikemen. Yo's like, I can't do anything about this. Yo taps out. Tato takes a win for the first time in a while here. And uh, it is four to two. So yeah. suddenly we have ourselves a little bit of a series going Hold on. Hold up. How many hours has it been since Tato won a game? Uh, what time did we start again? 
We started at four. It's seven thirty-two. Yeah, it's been three and a half hours, and he won the. Did he win the first game? What was the? No, yo won the first game. <laughs> yo won the first game. What was the first game? Uh oh my goodness! Pull, pull, pull the screen. <laughs> pull up. It Help up. us out, production. Help pull us it out. Up. We're losing our minds. Here. What was the first game? We're losing oh, our no. minds, and I can only imagine if we're this fatigued, how fatigued the players Scholes. are. It was Scholes. It was the Spanish uh, into Byzantine game, which was a long game too. It was also a long game. <clears throat> Desert yeah. Void. That's the one. Was the last won. time Tat. So it's probably been two hours at least. Yep, at least two hours ago. Damn. Um. So hey. A great recovery from him to keep himself in it. We talked about how he's got no more margin for error. Yeah. And he still needs to win the next three in a row. Yo with three opportunities to win one and take the set. Yo, though, also now gets map choice for the first time in a while. Yep. And I, I think he'll probably go to one of Tato's home maps. I agree. I think he'll probably go I think go he'll there. go Langanati, man. Because you've got Malians or Incas. We've seen both played kind of to great effect on that map yeah. in the past. I would lean still more Malians because Incas, if get star if getting starved of gold, well, which we've you, seen you, become a problem. You have before. to think about what you're using on African reed beds, right? So do you want to go for Mayans or do you want to go for Malians there? That's the question, right? Mm. And then you think about Incas, like where are you going to use that? And and where are you using Turks, I, if I, at all? I don't think Turks get used. So it's yeah. like it's 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 Mayans, Incas, one of the two on dry graveyards, mm -hmm. right? Um, I would probably. Ooh, it's a good point. Malians can be super effective on African rebeds as well, but they just feel so guaranteed on yep. Linganati. And I, again, maybe I'm just indexing too much into what we've seen already in the tournament. Yeah. Um, but because of the wood bonus, right, in terms of cheaper buildings. Um, well, we'll have our answer, and it is going to be the Malians here on Langanati for Mr. Yo in the red, up against the Poles for Tato in the blue. We'll have to see what the Poles can do here, because I would definitely favor Malians on this map. You've got the water opening in the center, right? Poles obviously will take advantage of the fact that there's those stone piles around, and they can get some extra gold, as we see right here. The unique bonuses of the poles, villagers regenerate. Full work replaces the mill, and everyone knows about the full work. If you drop a farm there, you'll get a certain percentage of the food back, and then the stone miners generating gold is is a huge bonus here. Oh, really, really big bonus for that sieve because you only have four tiles of gold, and then you have to chop through. Exactly. So gold an all-important resource in general, but even more so on this map. Of course, if we flip to the other side and talk about the Malians for a moment, like mentioned earlier, buildings costing 15% less wood means easily going out for an early dock here to take advantage of whatever fish exists out there. First Villager already on the way here for Mr. Yo. That's going to help accelerate the food eco overall. Villagers dropping off 10% more it's gold huge. is the same exactly. Yeah. As we talk about importance of gold on this map, that's obviously massive. And then universities, 80% faster text is just nuts for anybody. And so we'll become um, a very impactful. Did Tato send out one or two villagers to that dock? He sent out two. Okay. Yes. It okay. was, yeah, it was like a one after the other kind of a situation, but this is pretty typical, right? Two villagers for each, then they start working on the shore fish, and the fishing ships are on the way. There's always a question about whether or not players are going to invest in feudal to ultimately win control over water, because usually by the time they do, there's about 200 food remaining in the mm -hmm. center of the map. Mm -hmm. Tata will go for a demo, though, 100%, right? He's got to. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have demos loaded up. If he not, wants to hold that water yeah. just in case. If not for himself, we'll do it for you, Dave. For the fans. Yeah, yeah 100%. Wow. wow, that is long a long-distance deer push. Long, long-distance deer push there for Mr. Yo. And both players still queuing villagers here, so it's not some absolutely ridiculous uptime um, from both of them. But we still Look should see quite a bit of feudal aggression. The gold positions are interesting. Tato got one back gold, one very forward gold. Yeah. For Yo, it's split to the wings. Yeah, that's that's really, really interesting. I mean, that's super safe for Tato. And then the other one is so exposed. Mr. Yo. That hill is. I honestly think that gold is even more exposed than Tato's at the front of his base. Yeah, that's, that hill that's, sucks. That's quite bad. And Yo will have difficulties for sure securing both of those. Loom on the way for both players. That means Feudal Age will follow. And we'll see what the strategies are. Does he know that that llama is still sitting there? Or what is that? I mean, he should because I hear that thing just <laughs> screaming. <laughs> like, I mean, that's that. I mean, it's 100 food. Could become relevant eventually. Those oh. things are obnoxious. How about that? 
Tato early on Stone. Again, as we mentioned earlier, Stone Miners bring in gold for the poles, but committing five villagers to Stone that early on and long distance mining at that. Well, you can switch them to the lumber camp there. and Oh, on the complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the drop off. The beautiful thing about going to that stone there is that now you're going to have enough gold for the ship and then enough gold to potentially make a second ship if you send more villagers there or uh, repair yours mm -hmm. for that for that early engagement against what's potentially on, only going to be one ship from Mr. Yo. But Mr. Yo is going to go for a barracks, and he's got two militia. Hopefully these work out better than the last militia we saw from him. He still ended up winning that game, but certainly those wasted militia kind of put him a little further behind than he would have liked. Without a doubt. I like the placement of the barracks and the houses, though, to protect the one gold that he has opted to go to early on. Tato doing a great job to scout those militia out, though, as they start to roll forward. Now, those militia aren't going to find much damage on the dock already because of the pre-walls mm -hmm. that Tato went for quite intelligently. And we see uh, Yo actually being the first player to look for production on water with a fire galley and still yet to see one in the queue here for Tato, as I say it. Is Tato making a tower behind that dock? So he went, oh my god, he went to the stone for five villagers so he can afford two towers. Exactly. I, I, I won. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. And then he can make another tower on the wood line if he needs it. So he's going to tower the fish, which is something that I have not seen in the many times that I've watched this map. Usually players will just go for one ship. So the stone miners were not for the gold. It was for the actual stone itself. I'm I'm trying to decide if I like it. Like it's it's creative, but I don't know. I don't if think I it like costs it. you that much. Right? He's going to pull this stuff back to the tower, and it protects your vills, so you can just keep fishing there. That's a good point. That's a good you point. You don't have to leave. Yeah, hoping he can turn the tides of the water battle there, keep the fishing ships alive, and establish a small eco lead. We have three men-at-arms forward there for Mr. Yo, mm -hmm. working away on the gate, so eventually we'll force some repairs out, the, but the, shouldn't find any villager picks. The problem here for Tato is that he's no longer on gold, so he is going to run out of gold to repair, and he won't be able to add a demo, but with Yo going archers, he can just go demo here, and he can go and repair that fire galley at will, essentially. So he doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff. That said, Tato, ooh, almost gets that fishing. Repair ship. it. No, but Yo's like, there's so little fish there. Give it to me. Come on. <laughs> How much fish is left in that center area? There's like nothing. The men at arms still working away on the gate. We've got uh, Spearman behind this, and oh, Tato blocks. The blocks. The fire galley, but Yo manages to demo two of those fishing ships. There's basically nothing left there in the center. I think the fish is fully expired. And the first full work of the game Wait. will now come up from Tatum. Oh, okay. It looked like that was another blacksmith symbol. Yeah, yeah. The full work and the blacksmith. So at the I same was like, foundation. oh, no, double blacksmith. That's no good. But it will be a full, full work, as you mentioned, on the berries. So Food Eco continues to look good for Tatum. Where are the archers from Yo? That's my question. Like, where's the follow-up for these men-at-arms? They're there still it is. looping around. And they've got a spearman really, really smart there. Yeah. Escorted yep. by a spear. Now, there are some skirmishers already here back at home for Tato. And he'll have to sit on skirmishers as he still has yet to get himself to gold. Just now looking for a mining camp. But through all of this, Yo has managed to get the walls up. He is mm -hmm. ultra safe back at home. Where did that second tower go for Tato? Was it on the wood line or was it on the gold there? Because he did make a it's on the wood line. Yeah, and well, now, both, I guess. now he's perfectly balanced in terms of stone for both towers. Okay. Really beautiful approach there from him. He's going to just go on to gold. He can send a couple villagers onto stone if he needs to. And uh, he set up one fish trap there. But Yo is heading in here, and he managed to save the men-at-arms early. And they're going to provide a lot of value against those skirmishers as, like, a buffer zone between the skirms and the archers. He snipes a villager first. Tato's resources looking pretty solid, but Yo actually has more on food right now. I want to take a look at the eco and see if that's mostly berries. Yeah, mostly berries and sheep. So Yo will need to get himself balanced out with some farms. Yeah, both players just starting to drop some farms. Obviously, for the pole player, we're going to see some of that food start to shoot up as they make or rather take advantage of the sieve bonus for the farms around the full work. These men-at-arms, though, the fact that he kept them alive, mm -hmm. it's going to do so much work for him against these skirmishers just in terms of creating a just front buying line. Time. Yeah, buying yeah. time for the archers to get away safely. Yeah, and that's exactly what Yo wants. The value of these men-at-arms, once 
you have you know more than four or five skirms on the field or once you have some walls up with towers really really decreases you wanted to hit with them early but still getting value in the later stages of feudal age is really really nice for mr yo look at that the malians 12 and four on Linganati. Most popular sieve behind that is Byzantines, which sports a one and five record. I'd have to imagine most of those losses come at the hands of Malians as well. Mm -hmm. However, it's the poles here for Tato. So a different dynamic this time around here on Linganati as he is still working to get these Palisade walls up back at home and dropping another full work. I wonder where you play into here if you're Tato. I, I think for Mr. Yo, you just try and keep a little bit of control, keep massing up your archers, and then maybe you can go for a forward of some kind, like Monastery, Siege Workshop, or something like that. And then it'll make it difficult for... Ooh, double stone mining camps. Yeah. Is he just going to go... Or castle Gebetto. dropping, baby. I mean, we've seen a lot of Gabetto yep. in this tournament re relative to other tournaments previously. And Gabetto was recently kind of buffed. I think they got a little bit more HP, mm -hmm. which is, like has been big. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but even still, right, we talked about how gold is the determining factor on this map. And castles are great at controlling those four crucial gold, you know, uh, p pits, whatever you want to call them, uh, that are located around the map. I Eventually. believe they call them mines, James. <sighs> po point taken. <laughs> That's the first time I've called you James. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was in school for a I moment know. there. I was like, J okay. <laughs> That's the very first James. time I've called you James. James. <laughs> Who is James? <laughs> Who's that guy? All right. Ooh, the stone walls even here for Tato, right? Just trying to expand. Give himself room to continue building up that farming economy. Drop another full work or two and really get off to the races. Still waiting to see which of our players will make their first move out to the wood lines that do protect those gold mines mm -hmm. currently. Oh boy. Castle Age on the way for both, but way faster for Mr. Yo. Only eight on food though, and 15 on food for Tato. He's got the walls up, and, it, and you get nervous about letting the poles just kind of cook behind the walls. It's 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 really really dangerous if you let that eco get away from you. Another tower wow. there from Tato, so he's really focused on the defense. I wonder what he expects from Mr. Yo. He's playing this so safe. 590 stone in the bank here for Yo. Right as he reaches the castle age, crossbow coming in, town watch as well. He's, he's controlling the, the game again though. Yeah. He is. Like Tato's doing everything he can in defense, but Mr. Yo is controlling the movements of Tato's army. He's got all the vision forward. Town Watch comes in again. He's got a knight on the way and he just goes for a town center out on that gold. Now you can't place the TC in between the the wood line and the rock terrain. There's not enough room there. That's a change that they made from the initial versions. I'm almost surprised that TC and castle aren't coming all the way forward when you're the first one to the castle age. I, I mean, if if you think a better or a good unit in this matchup, which they probably are, then you want the castle just for the unique unit. And your castle also does double duty in kind of protecting your base. Yeah, that's a good point. So you can always follow up later with another castle, especially when Tato tries to extend outwards for those gold mines. James. Yeah. <laughs> I keep expecting, like, well, David. Is it, is it, is it weird that hearing my own name oh, in it's your super, voice, it's, it's, like, weird. It, it's like grossing me out. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm of, like, it's I, kind of uncomfortable. I've never shuddered at hearing my own name. I feel spoke. violated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Knight coming forward runs into the archers, and so... Uh, yo, we'll have to micro that one back. Tato, as he hits the Castle Age, is also going to come out for a TC. Now, I think quite randomly has chosen the same side as Yo, as he just now scouts out this TC and Castle position from Yo. So Tato is on the defense. Again, men at arms are still alive and still providing value. Just kind of exploring, making it's sure Tato's wild. not over there. And that's just another example of Yo's excellent use of map vision to determine exactly where he needs to pressure. So he knows that Tato is likely on the other side. He's going to see this army here. That's a lot of value that that dead knight bought him, essentially, so he can track that. Um, Gabetto still haven't, haven't been produced. He's putting the resources into the economy first, and only now is he starting with that Gabetto production. Crossbows attempting to hide from the skirmishers, but Tato says, I know where you are. 
and he's going to trap him in the corner. Yeah, so that's a good find by Tato, doing a great job to track the military units. Also being the first player to move to three TCs. Ooh, he's really got him trapped in there, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Morning. You're not going anywhere. Let's see how Yoke and Micro is way out of this one. Over, under number of Tato units that die here in the train. I say, like, Tato doesn't lose more than, like, two units. One, four, two. Okay, well, that was anticlimactic, but I was right. Four! <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Push for it, yo! <laughs> Let's go. And then we no! are yes! Dude. Exactly two. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Come on. What was that? Why'd Whoa. you run? What a great cleanup there from. Yeah, Tato. he's still he's still pushing on the other side with the Maganels. Yep. There's a siege workshop now coming up in defense from Tato, but like, Ooh. what does siege do against Gabetto? I was gonna say it dies. No better unit, almost. Yeah, it's just you have the mobility to dodge the shots. Tato's going to see this get battle and be like, no. Oh. Why? Oof. Why are these here? Right? And I've, he's only got five. He, what is he dropping? He's dropping another TC. Okay, I was going to say. On the stone. Yep. All right. So he's just going to try and boom his way out of this, extend around the map, probably yeah. understanding that this position is going to be hard for him to hold on to, though try he will with a mangonel on the way. Oh, man. This is a tough situation. Crossbows are decent against Gabetto if you have the upgrades. Like, if you have ballistics, you know, the range upgrades, everything like that, thumb ring, they feel decent, but in small numbers, without upgrades, Gabetto are just going to fry them, right? Tato picking up that relic. The Gabetto aren't going to let that happen. Uh, the Monk is going to drop that relic over there. The relics always sp spawn in the corners, so Tato knew exactly where that was. And despite the fact that Yo is hiding behind that rock, Tato is going to snipe the Mangonel as Yo comes forward with another outpost and finding his way in here, potentially Tato with a great university wall to stop him. Yeah, and just enough crossbows here to force those Gabetto back. A bit of a stalemate point in the game. Take a look at those villager numbers. Through all of this, Tato up yeah. onto four TCs yeah. has really established himself in a solid position. It's just like, how are you gaining access to that? Luckily, he's poles, so he can still get that gold income from mining the stone. Mm -hmm. Maybe he could go for a castle with that stone he's mining on the left side, but the right side will be under pressure for quite a while longer with the mobility of the Gabetto. Now, total res collected, Tato is ahead. We're just thinking about tech tree options here for uh for poles it looks better on paper for the malians however ballistics is on the way and we're up to nine crossbows now yeah and i think uh overall yo i mean investing a lot just to get that castle up right and delaying his own tcs mm -hmm. means he accepted that he'd go behind his eco redemption of all things You've got uh, how many monks on the field? Two on the field here for Tato. Still yep. looking to pick up those relics, but also looking for the defense against the Mangonels. And he only has six on stone. So unless he wants to buy himself a castle, it's going to be a while longer before he can push forward with the castle. So he would probably try and push forward with Siege. And here he comes again with the Mangonels. Tato might be able to counter that um, with his redemption monks. Yo has not seen any monks. Tato hasn't been showing them to him. And Tato is going to surprise Yo by trying to convert this Mangonel. He backs up a little bit. The Gabetto is still really utilizing the mobility. Ooh, nice the splits. splits there from Yo. Tato getting some good damage with that town center fire. Still unable to convert the Mangonels. A second Mangonel coming in here from Mr. Yo. But Tato almost has enough stone for a defensive castle. Does he put it over here? It's a big risk, right? It feels like a castle over on the other gold might be the better option. Yeah, he was thinking about it. With those Ville positions, he was definitely considering dropping a castle there. But in the face of two Mangonels, that could also be a massive throw in the end. Also, look at that monk actually stealing the relic away from behind Tato's base. Yep. Also finds a snipe onto the Mangonel. But now, redemption has been revealed officially. We need to be devoted here, yo. Ooh, great the oh, crossbows. Castle comes up, but the Mangano was retreating. I think there's enough crossbows here, although he does take a big hit to the face. Redemption attempt. The delete comes through for Yo. That was necessary, but ultimately this castle is going up. Yeah, and, it, and now it's tough for Yo to push from this side, but he can also loop around from the back side of that gold with another castle once he gets the stone. You don't have to fight for this specific position, you can fight for the other side of that gold and still control the income there from Tato. But look at the resources right now. Tato has a ton of gold in the bank. 
Look. Yell's going to him. As Yo gets oh! the big shot! That could change the game. That could change the game. Tato still has a decent amount of crossbows, but he can't push forward anymore. He can't apply any pressure to Yo. Did not expect that. And while Imp is on the way, Dave, if you needed any more permission to come forward to drop that second castle, killing half those crossbows was all it's the really permission nice. you needed. Really, really nice. Yeah, we see a replay right here. I think Tato didn't expect the Manganos to still be here. He thought Yo was retreating and gets hit with a massive shot there. Still has some crossbows. Still has ballistics, has the defensive castle, going up to Imperial Age, but Yo has already clicked, and Yo has enough stone for a castle. Where does this castle go? Also, can we appreciate the fact Yo has units once again on that left gold? He's just, yeah, he's yep. just... He's, he's back here again. Scouting, looking for raids, He's going to find damage. the stone. He'll find the stone unprotected. Yes, there's a TC there, but I'm sure plenty of... What a response what from Tato. What a great oh, come response on. from Tato. He's locked in, dude. These guys are just so ridiculously good at this game. He's locked in. I would have lost every villager. Yeah, all right. So three. Honestly, small price to pay, right? Uh in the end there for Tato. Tato also, I think, very aware of another possible forward castle position. He had his crossbows kind of patrolling around that gold as well to protect against a forward Yo castle. Run. Yo it can just run got in. dropped. Like, Yo can run right into Tato's base, and that could be disastrous. Like, Tato, House if walls. he sits under that castle, could be a problem, but the, he's brought the crossbows back. Unfortunately, the crossbows are not on the other side. So the castle will go up uncontested for Mr. Yo. And he will be up to Imperial Age first, and I believe there's some hills he might be able to sit on as he brings the knight over. Wow, he's even getting away with the mobility of these Gabettos. Mm -hmm. I thought with Ballistics, maybe they'd all get cleaned up there ah, from the crossbows. But the chase is on, and the Gabettos will live in the end. If we flip back to the other side of the map, we'll see this castle go up just in time for Imperial Age to come in. That means two Castle Treb production here to threaten the only available gold yep. position long term for Tato right now. But Tato still has a sick eco. He's still got a sick eco. He's 114 villagers. He's on the defensive right now. It's only 91 for Mr. Yo as Tato tries to extend outwards and chop more of that wood line on the left side. He's also coming forward with more villagers to really, really saturate that because he knows that it might be a limited amount of time that he has this gold in the north available to him. Saving grace for Tato might be the stone mining, bringing mm -hmm. in gold as yeah, well. Yeah, it's huge. Here. He's got 800 in the bank currently. You see that slow trickle continue. Crossbows clean up. The Scorpion on the front. They might look for a little bit of raiding damage over the wall, but the first Treb is on the field, and that castle is soon to take fire. Look at this. Yo just continuing to fortify his position. He wants the game to be decided here. Yeah, he wants to finish the series on Langanati here. He's got himself a good position, but Tato isn't that far behind him to Imperial Age. Tato now getting chemistry. Yo's chemistry comes in super quick with the Malians, so he should be the first player to Bomber Cannons. He's definitely the first player here to the Trebuchets, and he's still kind of controlling those crossbows pushing in on the other side, but you can't count out the poles. Look at the farming eco yep. that's being set up here from Tato. He's getting crop rotation. He's going to try and take this late. However, Yo has been winning every single late game that we've gotten into. And I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, there was 76 on wood just a moment ago for Tato. That's ridiculous. Well, the reason there is is because he's trying to free up more gold for himself. Yeah. It's less about the wood generation, and it's about getting access back into that gold. For now, dropping a ton of stables and a ton of farms. It could just be Light Cav, Hussar as the play. I mean, we've had six games. Tato has not won a game in Imperial Age this entire set. It was, it was Feudal Age for one and Castle Age for another, right? Yo has had two incredible comebacks here, and now he, suddenly he has the positional advantage in this game. He's got the access to gold, which what? Tatu has been struggling for, and he's even got a scout over there denying the stable as the castle goes down in the north. Can Tato manage to utilize the better eco, get his techs in, and push Yo back right now? It's looking fairly difficult. Yeah, it is a healthy 165 pop that here for Tato. Down to but it wasn't unpacked. Oof. That's so brutal. Yeah, he has a little bit of gold income here. He's gonna try and hold on to this position as long as possible, at least until he can free up the gold on the other side of the map. We see more TCs being dropped in the south by both players, and so eventually we might see the focus start to shift. But for now, Yo feels like this is it. I can centralize my push here in the north, yep. maybe hit the main eco, and win it before Tato ever gets and access back to gold. The, the, I mean, the beauty of this is, if Yo ever runs out of gold on that side, Tato's just chopped himself access on the one he just took That's over. That's true. Right, so he, he can he can shift his way up there, and then it's gonna be three golds kind of 
under his control if he pushes this way versus just one from Tato that he hasn't even chopped through to. Oh, and having scouted out all those stables being dropped, look at the tech switch here for Mr. Yo. He's going to go into the heavy camel riders. He's mm -hmm. dropping the stables for himself. And so, well, yes, the food eco of the poles is nothing to be trifled with. Ultimately, you're now indexing into playing like I, Cav into camel. I, I think this is like a little, this might be a little bit too early from uh, Mr. Yo's perspective because we still have all those crossbows there for Tato. Guard Tower research is one that he loves, and that's coming in. Unfortunately for him, these might just go down right as soon as he builds them, even with those Bombard Cannons there. Yeah. Good pressure from Yo. One um, of the towers goes down. Bombard Cannons now coming forward. Yo trying to pack the Trebs up. One of them, if not two of them, will fall. Oof. How much? That's like one health on that Treb. And he gets away. Impressive. He gets away. Two health. I stand corrected. Gebedor coming in. Heavy Camel research is in. Cavalier research is in. That's much better solution to the Arbalest. Heavy Camel will do really, really good against the Light Cav and potentially the Winged Hussar. But Tato now starts a push on the other side. The Gabetto are pushing in. They take out one Bombard Cannon. They're going to take out a second. They might take out the third, but they leave an absolute trail of death behind them as Tato manages to save that one Bombard Cannon, snipes the Treb that was weak from before. And Yo still hasn't fully taken control of this gold area while Tato is knocking at the door at his main base. Is this the game that Tato can actually win in Imperial Age? Tato's trying to make it messy. He's trying to make it messy. He knows that that's his only recipe for success, having mostly sacked the right-hand side position. He's got tons of Arbalists coming forward. He's got Light Cav there to help support and one Trebuchet. Not enough Cavalier just yet here for uh, Yo to feel like he can take the fight. Yeah. And already another tech switch now for Tato going into Pikeman and the armor upgrades. I think the Cavalier needed to come in before the Camels, honestly, because Tato still had the Arbalest. I think Yo needed to focus on that a little bit more, but uh, he's still got a decent economy, 122 vils, and we look at Tato's eco, 129, 52 on food. Maybe Tato has enough to pull this back. Military numbers just aren't there right now for Mr. Yo. Look at that 61 to 28 in total. It's yeah. pop cap overall here for Tato to the 150 of Mr. Yo. And for all of the attention he's paid to this side of the map, Tato's still mining gold. Yep. Yeah, Yo. Going to be able Wait, to the arbs? this Treb. The arbs are out of position somewhere. They're shifting. Oh. They're all shifting. So Tato wants to push back those two castles, but he's kind of opened up the door if Yo wants to push on the other side, and there's a lot of exposed eco over there. Tato is now coming back with the Arbalist, and maybe couldn't make up his mind on this side. Very, very strange positioning from him, but he's... Little indecision. He's going to push again. Okay. Well, yeah, rotates back just as Yo thinks about moving to another TC and getting himself gold access once again. Now we've got the Cavalier taking a fight on the right-hand side. This is going to shove Tato off of gold. So we have a split map, split focus. It's about who can make more forward progress before the other. Lots of Cavalier in, uh, at Yo's disposal here, chasing a ton of villagers. That's going to be a good cleanup. But while all of that's happening, there's nothing protecting this eco back at home. Worth pointing out, the Winged Hussar are absolutely insane in the late game, especially once you get Lichitic Legacy for the the extra splash damage. You have to avoid losing these Arbalists, though. These are a very valuable part of your army. If you're just spamming Winged Hussar into Cavalier, even with that unique tech, you're going to lose, especially against Cavalier with Farimba. With the Arbalist behind, though, gives your army a nice little punch, and those Winged Hussar can act as kind of a meat shield in front. I was gonna say, the meat shield is there, and it looks like it might just be enough. While a lot of units are going down, the pikes are arriving, and that moment, the micro for Tato is there to try and pull back and find wow. as many kills as possible, but Farimba packing a very serious punch. The chase is on. Didn't even have iron casting, right? Didn't have Blast Furnace, so the Winged Hussar kind of struggling in that engagement, not really doing the damage that they wanted to, and pikemen are now pushing forward in the Arbalist. I don't know if they're going to be saved, even with the pikemen production. Yo seems to be on the case. He's got more units moving forward after this. He was still raiding in the north there. Tato is down to 105 villagers. Yeah, Yo is at 136, and Tato's been cut off that gold. He's only got the gold income, it looks like, from the stone miners, and maybe a few villagers that have chopped through there. What a great couple minutes there for Mr. Yo. Yeah, barely back on gold on the left-hand side. Every Arbalist that dies becomes that much harder to replace in the end. Tato now trying to make it messy, send some Wing Tassar into the back of Yo Zico, force him to chase, force him to split his attention. But by the same token, Yo is keeping the pressure on the front. It's Cav into Cav and a couple pikes here and there. 
Yeah, Castle's protecting a little bit. Yo trying to protect his home eco. I would really love to see him get a wall set up all the way across the map. This is a because good find. This is, this is how Tato comes back, right? He sends in the wing to Sar. He gets all the value he can. And uh, he tries to raid Mr. Yo to death. And Yo is trying to do the same thing to Tato. As Yo, I believe, drops two Siege Workshops in the north there. Ooh. So he's going to try for a push from this side. He's, you got to be careful if you're Mr. Yo to not spread yourself a little bit too thin. Yeah, without a doubt. Also, we've got Gabetos now trying to take a fight against Arbalist. That's Herb. ill-advised. Yeah. Cavalier numbers starting to build back up, looking for another engagement. The Pikes are there, though, to play the front line. Finally gets the clear up in the back of his own eco to get back onto the farms and bring that food count back up. There's no way we're in this for another, like, extended game. Oh, a thousand percent we are. A thousand percent. I think the only way we get out of this game quick is a Tato victory. Because maybe, maybe Yo, with room to breathe in the series, decides to give it up at a certain I mean, point. But I mean, Tato's maybe. not going to not gonna give this one up anytime soon. I like the combination of the Cavalier and the Gabetto going back into the base. Mm -hmm. So it feels like Tato's going to need Arbalist to deal with that. But all of his Arbalists are forward. He doesn't really have that many in production. He's queuing up a few more here. The Winged Hussar and the Pikeman aren't going to be able to clear that combination. And there's a lot of exposed eco around those full works and on the gold. So that's a good raid from Mr. Yo. He goes for the defensive castle at home, and I'm not sure that Tato has any, he doesn't have any siege on the field actually. So he can't push that. That's, yeah. That one castle is gonna defend against what? Like 50 military there? All Yo needs to do is send those Gabetto over to the gold, and he'd find so much value. But he's leaving. Well, and we talk. Well, we talk about that's. I mean, we have the slow-moving army coming back to defend yeah. here from Tato, right? But we talk about the biggest strength of Yo as a player is how he plays the map, and mobility serves him so well in that. We see those two uh, siege workshops coming up in the north as well, supported by a few cab. That could be a deadly push if left unchecked. It's the Arbalists come back to deal with the Cavalier, but the Cavalier have done a good job of making a mess of Tato's eco. Now pulling these uh, pikes off to the side. To great effect. If like if Yo just sends the Cavalier in there, then Tato keeps pushing with his army. But instead, Yo pulls all his army away. Gabetto Cavalier forces the entire mass of Arbalist back, and then goes for a castle at home. So even if Tato wanted to dive his eco, he's going to lose everything. And he's just defending himself with forward positioning of units as Fortified Wall now comes in from Tato. Tato is still holding on. Tato has a population lead, but it, without the siege. He really hasn't been able to push here, and it still feels like the emphasis is on the attacks from Mr. Yo, and Tato is just kind of reacting to yeah. all of that. Fortified wall as a response to the ram that's trying to push through here in the northern side. These are capped rams in the end, but only two on the field. We'll need some military to support that, though, or they'll go down quickly to any response of Tato. There's a bombard cannon, Elite so we Gabetto. talk about the need for siege in terms of Tato making any forward progress. But like you say, another big tech coming in here for Mr. Yo in the Elite Gabetto. Wing Tassar is fantastic against Siege. They'll make quick work of that ram. But just in time, some more cab arrived to the fight here. The Chittick Legacy. Mr. Yo. <clears throat> there it is. So we get uh, trample damage from the Wing Tassar. Really, really solid stuff, especially for a unit that only costs food, right? It's an extremely powerful option in the late game if he can get into the eco, which he's doing right now. Finally, Tato has incorporated some siege into this push. Mr. Yo still trying to get something done over here. The Rams aren't as threatening as those two bomber cannons would be. Oh man, who can outlast Ooh. the other? Yo has been a god in Imperial Age this set. And here he comes with the Leak Gabetto. He's gonna try and get in close. He's gonna try and snipe the Bombard Cannons. Yo, dodging around the Bombard Cannon shots from Tato. He's splitting up the Light Cab. He's still got the Camels in front of the Gabetto. Tato trying to go for attack rounds. Yo is successfully maneuvering around every single cannonball that he sees. F fantastic micro by both oh, players. Oh, but he attacks though, the right? house. Ooh, runs into the house with a patrol in the end. Most Brutal. of the Gabetto numbers remain alive. One Bombard Cannon went down in total, but still two remain to put pressure on that great castle. Great job from Tato. 30 military for Yo, 80 for Tato. Yeah, great job from Tato to get the Siege Workshop forward here, to get the Bombard Cannons out, and to keep the Arbalest alive. He's constantly pressuring, so Yo can't get away with the counter raids and everything. Tato is now starting to use his position 
to his advantage and force Mr. Yo to respond to him, which is something that Yo wants to be doing at all stages of the game. And also, excellent rating up there on the gold. Tato really starting to take advantage of his eco lead. Yeah, he's doing wonderfully with that. 86 military to 48. We've equalized the bill counts on either side. Architecture coming in here for Mr. Yo to try and hold on to the castle for as long as possible. The Elite Gabetto are going to do fantastically against the Pikes, but not so great against the Arbalest. We need more Cav to deal with the Arbalest as we see some light Cav looping in from around the back side. And Tato needs to hold this position, right? If he gets kicked off of this, it's going to be so bad for him. This is allowing him to go for those raids on the sides. He has limited numbers here. He's done a great job so far, but he needs to get reinforcements in front of these Arbalists, and it looks like they're on the way. Yeah, 19 uh, villagers on gold, only 300 in the bank. So again, Arbalist numbers need to stay strong in response to the Elite Gabetto. He's done a, an amazing job of keeping these Bombard Cannons alive. Bombard Falling Cannons back here from Yo now. Any moment that he sees them come through. Great target fires onto the Arbalest there for Mr. Yo. The Wing Tussar won't find purchase onto those siege units. And more Light Cav come rolling over looking for the snipes. Oh boy, the Light Cav are coming in. They have Farimba. Remember, the Wing Tussar also have a bonus against Gunpowder. But Tato is going to be losing the Bomber Cannons and all of the Arbalists. And he has to back it up again. The Wing Tussar have been raiding this entire time in Yo's economy. But the Villager count still 107 to 104. Incredibly even. Game number seven here as Yo tries to close it out and Tato tries to claw his way back into the series. Just so impressive by both of these players. And you can see Tato now falling back to a more defensible position. He needs to get those Arbalist numbers back up. And we do see 12, 17 rather, in the queue with 24 on the field. Does he snipe him? Does Wing Tassar come flying in, looking for the snipes onto the Bombards. One is found so far. A second one will follow. Does he retarget onto the third? No, they will get cleaned up. So one remains here for Yo. I mean, but if you think about it from Tata's perspective, these wing to are free, essentially, right? He's got full works, he's got crop rotation 57 on food. He's just producing wing hussar like a madman up to this point and sniping those bomber cannons this is an incredible amount of value. And the Arbalist number is here again. Great job from Tato to keep up the production. The question is, can he deal with the Gabetto? If Yo has enough gold, if Yo has enough food eco to keep producing these things, can he deal with these units that seem incredibly powerful at the moment? Also worth noting, Tigui is in, so the raids are gonna have a little bit more trouble from Tato finding value. Yeah, absolutely. Love to see that tech come in there for Yo to keep his eco just a little bit safer. But as it stands, it seems like the Arbalists are a solid answer to the Elite Gabetto. We haven't gotten enough of a mass, and once again, Tato is going to push his way forward. Gotta keep making bills for both. I think Tato is doing a great job of that, keeping the queue alive. Mr. Yo is losing villagers here, and you need to make sure when you're getting counter raided, when there's Winged Hussar or Light Cav in your base, you're just constantly making villagers. You only stop once you realize you're at like 150, and then you can always delete. Yeah, down to 97, three more in the queue. Again, 140 pop in total here for Yo, while Tato keeps encro uh, encroaching towards that pop cap level. Beautiful rating job from Tato. He's been on the wood lines, he's been on the farms, he's been on everything. He's kept his Arbalist number constant, and he is constantly pushing over on this side. Mr. Yo has been forced to hold, and I don't think I've seen a counter raid from him in a he's, very, very long time. He's gonna try and push in the north again. I think I see a couple trebs on the way. Looks like he wants to pull the attention to the other side of the map. He realizes he's losing in the straight up battle when it comes to military and military numbers. So once again, looking to play the map as best as possible. Tata doesn't have any siege here, so while he's gained ground, he can't make much more progress. I wonder if there's an argument to be made for like Onager or something for Mr. Yo. I, I mean, it's really tough when Winged Hussar are on the field. On 98 gonna, Vils, I don't think Are you going to so. protect that? Yeah, I mean, he's still got a considerable amount of gold. He's getting his food eco sorted again. He's continuing to add villagers here. Uh, the <laughs> 50-50 on the map control, right? One player has the right, one player has the left. Some neutral territory in the middle, and now the Trebs finally pushing over here. So Yo has opened up a new front. Tato might need to focus on this with his wing to start production, and that gives Yo an opportunity to go back and clear the army in the south. This has been a long set. It's been a great set. These players are once again in an hour plus long game, I think for the third, fourth time in this series so far, 
crazy best of nine. The stamina required, the endurance, the mental fortitude required to keep pushing forward in this series by both players. To never say die, to look for every opportunity that to win. That Colts almost gone with Malians. That's just nuts. No. That's just nuts. I mean, luckily, there's still plenty of gold left on the map for both of the players to find. But like we said, Yo decided to take the fight elsewhere. I'm losing on one side, fine. I'm going to disengage and bring my focus to the northern part of the map. And this is what map. happens. This is what happens, right? And if Tato doesn't have Siege here, the push is done. Like, if Yo manages to clear up this Siege with the light cap, which he's not because Tato is doing a great job. One more hit. That up. No. If, if Yo ever manages to clear the Siege there, that army is really ineffective. And then you're wasting 40 or 50 population from Tato. Kind of the same thing over here for Mr. Yo, though. And yeah. Tato is pushing in, and he gets both of those trebs. Big loss for Yo in the north there. Tato setting up. Look at the way he's setting up the Arvalis around that. And the and the pikeman, he's like, you shall not kill. Yeah, the semi -circle circle formation. Cannons. The target fire coming in from Yo to look for the snipes. Can't find it. So Yo's push has been stopped for the time being, at least from a siege perspective. Tato still has a little bit to work with. End of the day, though, for the first time, we were like perfectly equal. Both players approaching pop cap. It was Tato who had military advantage for the majority of the game in terms of the overall numbers. And now it looks like Yo has finally made his way up to a stable position. Oh, it's going to be a well, well deserved finals appearance for whoever finishes this one off. Oh my goodness, Tato's pop cap. Yo, 182. He's getting hoardings now. I think both players have hoardings in this game. Yo is still trying to push in the north, but Tato constantly has winged hussars making their way into his base. Gabetos are really solid against buildings too. So as long as the Treb is the one working away at the castle, these Gabetos can work away at these buildings. And that monastery is going to go down really quick. And maybe Yo can even snag those relics from Tato. 2,300 gold in the bank for Tato though. Yeah, the dance continues on the southern side of the map, or rather back at home there for Yo. We did have the monastery go down, so taking two relics away from your opponent is a small win. Even still, repairs for both players on either side of the map to keep their castles alive. Ooh, did the wing Tassar get bad. in? It looks like they yeah, do. Yeah, they do, and the bomber cannons are there, and Yo is just too late to react to that. He's gonna lose both of these bomber cannons, but that means that the bomber cannons from Tato are exposed. So Yo is looping in with Lycav in the bottom there. They have Farimba, the Arbalists are still here. Will he be able to clear up these bomber cannons? He gets one. He's not going to be able to get a second one. Tato saves it again, but there's still more light cap there. If the siege disappears from this side, Tato won't be able to push, and he saves it again. And like you said, those Gabetto are slowly working their way through each of these production buildings. It's slow moving, but it is still effective. And he's got good numbers. Light cap as well, playing a meat shield to that. The Arbalist, again. Oh, I think Tato just, I think he did it again, Dash. He, I saw him like lean back in the camera like, God. <laughs> and I, I just saw the hand card tech coming in. Oh, oh no. no, I see him again, man. Remember that Copenhagen oh. game? That can be brutal. Yeah. And yeah, you're kicking yourself because it, it brings back memories, as yeah. you said, of a game that maybe could have been yours. Another one over an hour long. And you let slip away. And even still, inch by inch now, Yo is starting to push forward. Tato has completely conceded this push on the bottom side of the map. He didn't have the siege, and he felt like he wasn't going anywhere, right? And th that's actually so good for Yo, because we see Yo with zero on stone. So I don't know how long he that's can continue point. repairing that castle. Tato has identified the fact that if he doesn't do something about this push in the north, he's going to be dead soon. The Gabetto and the Trebs are just so brutal here. He now has zero on stone. He's got the Arbalists up in this area. We have a massive fight brewing in the north. We've got tons of Arbalists here from Tato, but he simply cannot take this fight. He's going to have to spend his gold to buy more stone to keep repairing this castle. And the Bombard Cannons are here from Tato. From Yo, will they be able to kill the Arbalist? No, not yet. He buys 500 stone. That's how important this castle position is to him. And it it's going to disappear difference. so fast. It's the difference between a one or a lost game, extending the series, or it ending right here, right now, in favor of Yo. He gets one fantastic Treb snipe. That's going to give him a little bit more room to breathe, but still has another one to deal with. Villagers are repairing away. Camels are diving under, trying to look for a surround on these Arbalists. But I don't think that's a fight you want to take. No, he can't quite find an angle to shoot at that second treb safely. 
without getting sniped. He finally gets one, but Yo has two more Trebs in the queue as the Gabettos are coming in. Nice snipe there from Tato on the Treb, and he's managed Treadmill to defend crane. at this point. Treadmill Crane even on the way from Yo. Full tech tree attempted from him. Lightcap's still coming in, and all the focus is here. I don't see any counter raids really happening, just two... Winged Hussar in there, couple working away on the mining camp, a lot less than earlier in the game. We've got 82 military here from Mr. Yo, and I'm pretty sure 99% of it is sitting right here. Yeah, most most of the military for both players on this screen. So now it's just about which one packs a more powerful punch, which player has the better micro in the moment. Yo's Thanks, diving Dave. in, looking for the Bombard Cannons. Now the Alika Beto push in. They're going to do great work if left untouched, but the Arbalest is the micro there from Tato. Once he gets rid of these light cav, he can push back once again. And he manages to snipe both of the Bombard Cannons from Yo, but two more Trebuchets. Trebs here, and both his Bombard Cannons went down. How is he sniping the Trebs? From Yo, how is he getting point. rid of them? Especially if the Gabetto are just kind of hanging out there. Look at the Gabetto, 88 kills on those units. They are absolutely insane once they get their full upgrades in. Light Cav are going to push the Arbalest back once again. They're going to threaten that Bombard Cannon, which Yo is going for, and Yo just dives. Yo says, enough with this. I'm going to kill the Bombard Cannon. I'm going to snipe your Arbalest if I can, and I know you're out of stone, so I'm going to keep working away on this castle with the Siege. Tata now buying 300 stone here yeah, to they, keep repairing this. Thank God for those gold reserves, because it's the only thing that's keeping that castle alive as he buys another 300 stone to invest into repairs, but two more He's, trebuchets keep firing away. The Bombard Cannon numbers are better for Yo at the moment, and he's finding good target fires onto the Arbalist. The oh, shoot! He doesn't get it, dude! He doesn't get it! Ooh! Bombard Cannon from Tato gets sniped. He's got one more on the field, but the Gabetto are going to come over and wipe that one up. The Siege numbers are looking good here for Yo, so now it's about keeping the Meat Shield in front of them. For the first time in a long time, he's got the greater pop on the map. This could be the final push, the final castle position that Tato needs to hold on to. And for Yo, this is what he feels will break the Spaniard in the end. And it's a, it's almost pop capped here for Yo. 181 population back for Tato. He, Yo comes in, he snipes another Bombard Cannon. The Arbalists are going down. There's only 24 of those Arbalists. There's a few pikemen in front, but Tato is out of stone. He's out of stone. He's out of stone, Dash. This might be it. The castle's going to fall. Can Yo win here? Five to two over Tato, the first place player in the group stage. The population is dropping like mad. The castle crumbles. Tato, he's still playing on. Yeah, 10 Arbalists, though. Dave, that's the big thing for me, is for so much of this game, he was sitting up above that 25, 30 mark, and for the first time in a long time, he falls below 10. Yes, Wing Tussar are gonna dive in, look to eliminate the siege, buy himself some more time to get those numbers back up. Treb rolls forward, Yo thinks he's found it. It's his bid for the finals appearance. Five to two is his goal. He doesn't want to go to another one. These have been long games. These players have been pushed to their limits. And while Tato doesn't want to give it up, he'll look for every possible avenue back into the but game. But he's housed. He's housed now, and he's falling in population. Still keeping that production up, though. 27 wings are in the queue. Gold count, really concerning. And the fact that he hasn't been chopping that gold in the south. He's been way too... I can't blame him. I mean, he's been way too busy here. You can't look away from this fight. We can't look away from this fight. He surely can't. And uh, his gold access is really, really limited at the moment. Yeah, falling back to one final castle position here. Yo, re-centralizing his units, grouping back up. He's going to threaten more of that food eco. It is a healthy 128 villagers for Tato, though, through all of this. But he's fallen below 50 military. More Arbalists in the queue, up to 23, looking to get to that 30 once again, having to micro back against the Gabetto, and does so effectively, but there are still Trebs on the field. Capped Ram again. Just capped Ram again, pushing, and Tato doesn't have the units to come in and snipe these. It takes so long, right? Yo is fine with throwing those units away as long as he's getting a little bit of damage every time he comes forward. That's not a lot of gold left no. for Tato. That is not a lot of gold, and the smaller it gets, the less villagers you can have on it. He has at least broken his way through to that next gold mine if he decides to relocate. You see Desperation, Eco Expansion, TC in the south, along with a ton of farms, but Eco's one thing, military's another, and you win games with military in the end, and Yo has plenty of it at his disposal. Now up to 85, still pop-capped, but while I say that, Tato has seemingly found his way back up to 200 as well. 
He's trying to do everything he can to get this siege off the field. The Wing Tussar trying to loop around, but they get eliminated just like paper. They're getting they're getting chewed up. They're getting chewed up by the Gabetto. The Arbalists have been doing so well for Tato in reserve, but he needs something in front, something that's not gonna just die right away. Also, his production buildings are falling here, so he'll need to make sure he replaces that. Finally, chopping away and the gold in the south, but it's still a ways away from having access to that. Yo, let's take a look at his economy right now. 70 on food. That's kind of ridiculous, especially after all of those raids earlier. He, I mean, he's, he's chopping all of the wood on the map. Yeah, he himself is running out of gold in his first position, but has already extended to the secondary mm -hmm. position. Tato's now doing he's the same raids. raids in the south. Yeah, That's fantastic to see. Again, trying to put the stranglehold onto his opponent. He's, he's wrestled about 20% more of the map away, so in solid position and still very much in the driver's seat. Gabetto's still pushing. Trebs behind, Bombard Cannons behind. Tato has been constantly trying to snipe those with his Winged Hussar, but we can see only eight Winged Hussar on the field. 32 on food for Tato. He just doesn't have the supplies that he needs. He's got the Arbalists, but the Arbalists are only good for holding. Ooh. They're not good for pushing back, and you can't fight this mono unit, comp or sorry, uh, like varied unit composition from Mr. Yo with the Bomber Cannons, the Gabetto, the Light Cap, the Trebs, everything. And just like that, the Arbalists can't push forward because they don't have the Wing Tussar in front of them, right? You mentioned dropping now to 26 on food in total for Tato. The wood stores are depleted. The gold stores are depleted. He's buying more no stone, stone after selling 2K wood. And he loses the castle anyway. That's that is so brutal. brutal. When you buy stone, you look back and the castle's crumbling in your face. Absolutely brutal. Production buildings will go down. Castle will go down. Yo, it did end up grabbing those relics inside Tato's base. So, I mean, he's got four of them. And Tato calls the GG. What a performance for Mr. Yo. Mr. Yo, five to two in the end. It was a marathon of a series, but he shows us what he's made of. Scaling throughout this tournament, Tato, what a valiant fight. What a display from each of these players. Mr. Yo, though, books a trip to the finals. Mr. Imperial Age. For real. Old Mr. Late For Game. For real. Mr. Start off slow and end with a bang. Holy 